If you're a new player to Rainbow Six Siege, trying to figure out what to do during the prep phase can be a very overwhelming task. And in today's video, I'm gonna be helping with just that. I'll be going through every map and showing you how me and my five stack set up every single bomb site in the game. So if you're looking for some new strats for your rank stack, or if you're just wanting to learn something new, you've come to the right place. Now, keep in mind, if you are a higher level player watching this video, this is how me and my stack set up each bomb site. So I may set up some bomb sites differently from you, and I may show different operators to what you run throughout the video, and that's okay. But if you have any additional tips for players, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. We're all trying to learn here. And well, let's go ahead and get into the video. Okay, and well, the first site setup brings us to CEO on bank, and the first operator you're gonna wanna pick is Castle, and this is the route you're gonna wanna take during the prep phase. You're gonna make your way over to the beeper's door, castle barricade it. You're then gonna wanna castle barricade this window right here. Then you're gonna wanna make your way to this door right here and castle barricade this off. Put head holes across this. And across this. Then barricade this off, reinforce it, sorry. And then your final castle barricade is going to go over here and stock on this door. You're going to make the footholds here. Then you're going to throw one beeper in the middle right there. And then one beeper on the top of spiral. And then you're going to reinforce the elevator walls. And that is everything you have to do for castle. Now we'll move on to the next operator. Okay, now for the next operator you're going to want to pick is Kaid for his shotgun and also for his electric claws to electrify the wall over there. So the first thing you're going to want to do is make your way over to the double walls here. Reinforce this left wall. Shotgun the head holes out. Then you're going to want to reinforce these two walls. And you're going to electric claw this off. Make the janitor rotate. Then after you make the janitors rotate, you're then going to make your way over to elevator hall and electrify the elevator walls. And that wraps up everything you have to do with Kaid, and we can now move on to the next operator. Okay, now the next operator you're going to want to pick is Frost, or pretty much any other operator with a shield and a shotgun. You're then going to want to make your way over to the double windows in stock. You're going to frost mat these off with your frost mats. If you have an operator with a different gadget, you can set them up wherever you want. Then you're going to want to make your way back into meeting. You're going to reinforce these two walls. You're going to place your shield up on this table. And you're going to make head holes across this wall. And across this wall over here. And what's this going to do is this is going to allow you to see through the, the head holes that Kaid makes in this wall from your shield. If you set them up correctly, you can see into square from your shield then your final frost mat you can place wherever you want i like to put it on marble stairs right here but the last one you can put wherever you want and that about wraps up frost we'll now move on to the next operator now the next operator for this setup probably won't surprise you and that's jaeger what you're going to want to do is make your way over to this couch put two ads's behind this couch this is to protect the castle barricade the castle puts right here and then you're going to want to move over here and put one ADS in front of this deployable shield. And you're gonna wanna reinforce this wall. Then you're gonna make your way over to the elevator hall and you're gonna place your deployable camera right here. And that's gonna wrap up your site setup. Then you can just go roam off the bomb site or do really whatever you want with the Eiger. After you've done that, you're pretty much done. Okay, now for the final operator in this site setup, you're gonna wanna bring a heavy roamer. For the purposes of this video, it's gonna be Solace just because I think she's by far the best roamer. And what you're gonna wanna do with Solace is immediately at the start of the prep phase, activate your gadget and start looking for drones. You're gonna go to all the staircases and constantly keep checking for drones and you're gonna wanna try to kill as many drones as possible. After you hunt down drones for the prep phase, you're then gonna go roam below and try to protect the site from people rushing up marble or people rushing into lobby. And if you get the call from your team that they're pushing lobby or marble, you'll go over there and you'll swing and try to get aggressive on the attackers. And that about wraps up this site setup. Now we're gonna move on to the next bomb site on bank. Okay, so now for the second most viable bomb site on bank, we have CCTV. And the first operator you're gonna wanna pick on this bomb site is Mira. And what you're gonna wanna do in the prep phase is come over here, shotgun this wall out, then make your way into red, reinforce this wall, put a mirror window down on it, make a vaultable rotate beside this. Then you're gonna wanna put one reinforcement right here. 
and one reinforcement right here on the garage wall. Then you're gonna put a mirror window right here. And that's going to be the entirety of what Mira has to do. We'll now move on to the second operator for the site setup. Now, the second operator for the site setup is going to be Kaid once again. And what you're going to want to do with him is at the start of the round, make a crouchable rotate right here. Just a small rotate. Then make your way over here. Put head holes across this wall just so you can see into the top of uh, main stairs right there. Then you're going to reinforce this left wall. Then you're going to reinforce this left wall here. And you're going to want to put foot holes across this wall. And then after that, you're going to want to kite electrical out this hatch from right here. This will get the wall and the hatch. And then you're going to want to electrical out the site hatch. Don't throw it right here because the attackers will be able to shoot it from in server. You're going to want to throw it on the actual hatch whenever someone reinforces it. And that about wraps up the entirety of Kaid's contribution to this site setup. We're now going to be moving on to the third operator. Now, the third operator you're going to want to bring on this site setup is Goyo. And the reason for that is because he can slow down the plant in the CCTV bomb site. You're going to want to make your way into CCTV at the start of the round. And you're going to want to reinforce this wall. Then you're going to want to go in here and blow the hatch. And you're going to want to put two Goyo canisters up here. And then one right here on this wall. So when it blows, it'll get fired off as well. These two canisters here, when you blow them, will propagate fire onto the default plant. And they also cannot be shot from the doorway. So the only way the attackers could get rid of them is if they got the hatch open and naded them or if they somehow got into the bomb site and shot them manually. So these are a really good uh, Goyo canister setup. They can still plant right here with an Osa or something, but as long as you bring explosives, you can counter that. Then your last Goyo canister you're going to want to put is right here on this garage double door right here in the middle. Just so that way, if they start pushing this heavily with like a shield or something, you can just shoot it to get them to get them to run away. And that's going to end the site setup for Goyo. That's all you have to do is Goyo. You can pretty much just set up wherever you want to play. I like to play my Goyo behind the shield in A, which we're going to show you where the shield goes in A in a second. But I like to play him right here behind the shield in A. Uh, so that way he can play off his Goyo canisters. Now for the fourth operator on the site, you're going to want to bring any operator with a shield. Realistically, for the sake of this video, I'm going to be picking Warden because he's in the meta right now. You're going to make your way over to the A bomb and you're going to want to place your shield right next to it on the corner like this. And then you're going to want to immediately make your way upstairs and start reinforcing the hatches. You're going to reinforce the two open hatches. Then after you reinforce those two, you're going to make your way over to elevator and reinforce that hatch. Then after you reinforce this hatch, you're then going to be free to roam around upstairs, which is what I would recommend doing with Warden because you're going to want at least two roamers on this bomb site. So Warden and then the next operator I'm going to be showing you in this video are going to roam off the site to slow down the push onto the hatches. Now for the final operator on the site, you're going to want to pick Jaeger. And what you're going to want to do with him is you're going to want to put two ADSs behind the CCTV counter right here. And this is to protect the mirror player from getting naded or for the mirror window to get smoked off. Then you're going to want to put your last ADS right here. This one will likely get shot early, but it at least gives you some protection for your shield that's going to be on the A bomb. Then after you get those two down, you're then going to place your deployable cam right here on this TV. And then you're going to make your way upstairs and you're going to reinforce the lobby hatch. After you do that, that's pretty much everything you have to do for this bomb site. You're then going to roam around upstairs with Warden and you and Warden are going to try to play off each other to get as many kills as possible and to burn as much time as possible. And that's going to be pretty much how this bomb site plays out. You rely heavily on roamers on this bomb site. So Jaeger and Warden are going to have to do a really good job of slowing down the attackers. OK, now for the third best bomb site on bank, in my opinion, open area, you're going to want to pick a zombie as the first operator. And when you spawn in, you're going to want to immediately reinforce this wall. And then you're going to want to run over here and reinforce this wall. Then use your deagle to make foot holes across this wall. And then make your way over into the staff room. You're going to throw Kiba here. One Kiba here. And then after you get your third Kiba, you're going to throw one on the top of this doorway right here. 
and this is a really strong power position to play on this may look very dumb but i've used this a lot in ranked to get a lot of really good kills because the attackers don't expect you to play somewhere like this and so if you just hold an angle into blue they're gonna have a very hard time seeing you and you also get protection from main stairs so if they start pushing over there they can't shoot at you until you swing out on your own and no one's going to be expecting you to swing out this high up in the air okay now for the second operator on this bomb site you're going to want to pick a bandit and all he's going to do during this prep phase is reinforce those four walls and bandit them off okay and after you've done all of that that is all you have to do is bandit then you're going to make your way upstairs and you can just go roam you realistically can go roam wherever you want but on this bomb site you're going to want to roam upstairs because the attackers are going to want to attack the bomb site from vert and also if you play upstairs it'll slow them down from getting the square wall open because you'll be able to swing them from the square balcony now for the third operator of the site setup you're going to want to bring a kaid and you're going to make way into admin and reinforce these three walls then you're going to want to electric claw this wall off and you're going to make a vaultable rotate from admin into the other bomb site then your second electric claw is going to go on this hatch when your teammates reinforce it the reason why you want to get the hatch and this wall is because yes they'll be able to get that hatch for free but they won't be able to drop that safely if you can play in the closet and swing off of this and having this closet later in the round is super super good because it allows you to have another power position to play safely without having to worry about dying because if you can keep this up since there's so many hard walls on this they can't really push you so though you'll either be forcing them to get this wall open or to get the hatch which will waste some time okay now for the fourth operator you're going to want to pick jaeger and the first thing you're going to want to do is put two ads's under the printer window then you're going to put your third ads near square door then immediately you're going to make your way over to the beepers door put a bp right here and then you're going to run upstairs to begin your roam jaeger and the next operator that i'm going to talk about are both going to roam upstairs and you're going to be doing that to protect the closet hatch and you're also going to be doing it to protect the stock hatch the stock hatch cannot be reinforced because that will make it 10 reinforcements so you can't reinforce this the only hatch you can reinforce is this one and janitor's closet then after jaeger gets this hatch jaeger and the next operator that i'm going to talk about are both going to be roaming up here to try to play aggressively on anyone pushing stock anyone pushing square and anyone trying to come up banana and flank them now for the fifth and final operator for this bomb site you're gonna want to pick someone with a secondary shotgun i chose oryx just because of how strong he is for roaming on this map but you can realistically pick anyone with a secondary shotgun you're then going to make your way over to marble stairs put some barbed wire on marble stairs then you're going to make your way over to the stock windows you're going to shotgun the bottom of this out to give yourself some footholds you're then going to use your shotgun to make a rotate here and then you're going to place some barbed wire in janitor hall right here then after that you're going to pop the elevator hatch that way you can jump down or up it with oryx's ability and after you get this hatch open that about wraps it up you're just gonna roam around upstairs use your ability to you know dash dash away from the attackers if they start pushing you or to you know if you get stuck in a bad position you can use his rambo dash to get away like this um it doesn't really matter how you get the job done just you and jaeger are gonna have to waste time up here somehow okay now for the worst bomb site on bank by far that you should definitely be avoiding is archives tellers and what you're gonna want to do for the first operator on this bomb site is pick kaid and you're gonna want to reinforce this triple wall into admin and you're then gonna want to electrify this off then you're gonna make your way over here and make a rotate into archives a crouchable one right here and you're going to reinforce this wall right next to the rotate then i like to make some high holes up here that way you can throw a nitro through these when they go for a plant in the other bomb site you can throw a nitro through this from behind the safety of this reinforcement and you can potentially you know hit one of the default plants like you can throw it over here if they're trying to plant behind this and you can kill them and you can also throw one like this over this wall to kill them if they try to plant on this door with like a monty or something then you're going to want to reinforce this wall and then you're going to electrify it with his electric cloth after you do that you're then going to go over here and make footholds across this entire wall 
Now you may be thinking to yourself, well, isn't this going to make this bomb site completely unplayable? Well, this actually makes this bomb site a lot more viable because this means that the attackers can't just freely push lobby and get into the bomb site. If they do that and those footholes are there, you're going to put a player on the basement stairs right here, literally just dedicated to holding these footholes. And this is going to force them to have to push this hallway to clear you out. And they're going to have to try to pinch you as best that they can from right here, because if they don't, you'll be able to kill anyone who goes for a plant in either doorways of the bomb site pretty easily. Now, for the second operator on this bomb site, I actually like to bring a Fenrir just so you can have some traps to play aggressively off of. What you're going to want to do with Fenrir is immediately make your way into lobby and you're going to reinforce these two walls right here in elevator hall. Then what you're going to want to do is put barbed wire here and a Fenrir gadget above it and activate it. This will provide support to your basement stairs player. So they'll hear your fin rear go off and they can either get aggressive on it or they can just, you know, not even push it. But then they'll have a warning of when the attackers are pushing over there. Then you're going to want to put another fin rear up here and you're going to want to activate it. Then you're going to make your way upstairs, throw one under the stock double windows and activate it. And then you're going to make footholes across the wall. And then your last two Fenrir gadgets can go wherever you want. I like to put one on the square doors into the bomb site over here. And then I like to put one over here on the square double door. So that way when they push in, your rumblers will get a warning and they can either swing them or they'll just know that they're coming. Now the third operator you're going to want to pick is Oryx. And this is for his high roaming capability on this bomb site. Immediately, as soon as the round starts, you're going to make your way into lobby and go up marble stairs. You're then going to reinforce E2 wall. And you're going to blow this hatch and elevator. Then you're going to make your way over to stock below this hatch. And you're going to blow the janitor hatch. You're going to place bar right here. So you get a warning on when the attackers are pushing right there. You're going to make a rotate into janitor like we did last time. And after you've done that, you're then just going to spend your time roaming upstairs. You can put your barbed wire wherever. Since you have someone playing on main already, you're not going to need the barbed wire on main. So you can put it somewhere else. I like to put it on banana because this will shut down like a nook or something from sneaking up lobby. And yeah, then you're just going to spend the rest of the round getting aggressive off your hatches to try to help your player hold down main stairs for as long as they can. Because as soon as you lose main stairs, it makes archives a lot harder to defend. Okay, now for the fourth operator, you're going to want to pick. You're going to want to pick smoke. And me personally, I like to bring the FMG-9 on smoke. You can pay, bring the shotgun if you want to help Kaid make the head holes or foot holes or whatever. But me personally, I don't like doing that just because I think the FMG-9 is a more consistent weapon overall. What you're going to want to do is immediately make your way over to square and put one piece of barbed wire on these square stairs right here. And then you're going to want to put one piece of barbed wire on the cafeteria double door. Then for the entire round, as smoke you're just gonna play here on the head holes that your kayid makes you're gonna use your smoke canisters to delay the push into the bomb site off those head holes and off the rotate and you're just gonna hold down the bomb site now for the final operator of this bomb site and for this entire map you're gonna want to bring jaeger and the first thing you're gonna do at the start of the round is walk over here put 180s on this doorway then you're gonna make your way into square you're gonna put a bulletproof cam down in square right here near the window then you're going to make your way over to marble and put 180s on your marble player. This is just to defend him from getting naded. Come up right here on the stairs. Then you're going to make your way up to stock and you're going to put 180s on the stock double windows. This will allow your roamers to play in stock for longer without getting killed. And it will also shut them down from getting the soft wall open with like an ash charge or a Zofia charge. So you're going to want that ADS there. Then after you set that up, Jaeger's just going to spend the rest of the round roaming upstairs, trying to help his teammate protect the main stairs, and also to try to shut down the square push, because if they push square, your smoke is going to be pretty much pinched between two different angles. So you're going to want to try to slow down the take into square as well. Anyways, that about wraps up bank, and we're now going to be moving on to our next map. Okay, now for the first bomb site on border, you're going to want to pick armory lockers, because in my opinion, it's the best bomb site on this map. And you're going to want to bring Kaid. And what you're going to want to do with Kaid is you're going to want to make your way over to the main armory wall and reinforce the both of them. And then you're going to want to electric claw the wall, which you can either do that from right here like I just did, which this is more obvious. 
or you can make your way downstairs and put it in a pretty hidden spot that I like to put it in. You're gonna run into customs, run into detention, and then you're gonna make your way into supply. And you're gonna throw it in the top right, right here. And as you can see, it electrified both walls. That is a pretty obvious hidden spot, so the attackers may shoot it. If they do, then it is what it is. But I find that to be a more consistent electric claw than just throwing it on the wall up here because they can easily EMP it and get rid of it. Now, after you get those two walls electroclawed, you're then going to make your way over to offices and you're going to electrify the triple wall and reinforce the two right walls here. So you're going to reinforce this wall and you're going to use your TCSG to put head holes across this. The reason why you put head holes here instead of reinforcing this is because if you reinforce this, they can easily make their way into top east through this doorway. And if you leave head holes here, you can play aggressively off this single wall and kill people trying to push in. But if you make these head holes, you need to be wary when coming out of the bomb site into fountain or when playing in fountain because they can shoot you from these head holes. If you don't like these head holes here, you can just reinforce this wall instead of this one. But me personally, I prefer the head holes. Okay, now the second operator you're gonna wanna pick for the armory lockers bomb site is Warden. And what you're gonna wanna do with him is make your way over here near the B bomb. Place your deployable shield right here. Then you're gonna reinforce this single wall. And then you're gonna make your way over to 90 and you're going to reinforce these two walls. After you reinforce these two walls, you're then free to go roam wherever you want. I like to play with my warden in security in this cubby. And what you're gonna to wanna to do is have a teammate, which I'll show you in a second, make a rotate here and make head holes here and across this wall. And this will make it really easy for wardens to hold on to security for a little bit and waste the uh, attacker's time. Now, the third operator you're going to want to bring on the armory lockers bomb site is a Jaeger. And what you're going to want to do is put one ADS on the armory door right here. Then after you place this ADS, you're then going to make your way over to the A bomb site and put an ADS on the doorway here. You're going to put a BP in this bomb site right here. And then your last ADS is going to go in security in the cubby where Warden is playing. I like to put the ADS right here, but this does leave it vulnerable to getting destroyed from the wall right there. It, otherwise, you can put it right here behind this shelf and this will work as well. Then after you place the ADS for Warden, you're then gonna go roam over into offices and you're gonna play in there. The, you need to have someone playing in offices and me personally, I like to put Jaeger in here just because he doesn't really have anything else better to do. And putting Jaeger in here can slow down the attackers from taking offices and trying to go for an A-bomb site hold. Okay, now for the fourth operator on this bomb site, you're gonna wanna pick mute and you're gonna wanna make your way over to the beeper's door. Place one jam right here on this doorway. Then you're gonna begin shotgunning out the holes for Warden to play in security. And then you're gonna make your way into archives and you're gonna reinforce these two walls. And after you reinforce these two walls, you're gonna to wanna to jam this one near the window because this is a common breach for the attackers to make to try to push the bomb site, and this mute jammer will slow them down. Then your last two jams can go wherever you want to slow down the attacker's drone work. Me personally, I like to put one on the break door right here to force them to peek the hallway to shoot it. And then I like to put one on the top east stairs door. Both of these can be shot, but it forces the attackers to swing them to shoot them, which can leave them vulnerable if they try to peek them. Now for the final operator in the site setup, you're pretty much free to pick whoever you want. I like to pick a trap operator like Capcan, and so I'll be showing you where I put his Capcan traps in the site setup. Uh, the first one I like to place is I like to go down to the bottom metal stairs, and I like to put two Capcan traps here. I then like to make my way upstairs to rafters, and I like to put two Capcan traps on the right side of this door right here then my last cap can trap i like to put on this double door here sometimes attackers won't check this but if they know you have a cap can this is a pretty obvious spot so a lot of the time they'll shock it so i don't like to put two here but one can catch an attacker off guard occasionally then after you set your cap can traps up you're pretty much free to do whatever i like to roam below with cap can since he has a nitro cell and i like to play in customs just to delay them from you know rushing up metal if they want to rush up metal or something a lot of times you know an ash will go through the tension or something to try to rush up metal this will shut them down by you being in this position now for the second best bomb site on this map i find that to be bathroom tellers and the way you're going to set up this bomb site is a little bit different what you're going to want to do is make a rotate in between the two bomb sites by the way your first operator is mute by the way as you can see then after you make this rotate, you're going to want to make your way over to the vents wall and you're actually going to want to make a rotate into vents. Then you're going to want to reinforce these walls here. 
And I would recommend jamming this wall with Mute. Now, after Mute does this, he's pretty much free to do whatever he wants. After he does this, your Mute Jammers can go wherever. I like to put mine on Vint's side just to stop the attackers from droning your defenders out that are playing in here. Um, so I'd put one jam here, one on the Harry Potter door here, and then put the last one somewhere in customs, maybe like on the tension door here. And I'm sure you can see where I'm going with this site setup. This is a very uh, extended hold on bathroom. You're going to want to play in workshop server and in customs and just try to hold as much of the first floor as you can at the start of the round because the attackers are going to get vert play pretty easily. So you're going to want to hold as much of the first floor as possible. So that way, when they start playing vert play, you have safe positions to play in. Now, the second operator you're going to want to pick on bathroom is a bandit and you're going to want to make your way upstairs and begin setting up the offices area. You're going to reinforce these two walls and then you can choose to put head holes here and reinforce this wall or to just reinforce all three. I like to reinforce all three when holding up here because you don't have as much people to play uh, near you. So you can't really play off the head holes effectively. Then you're going to bandit them off, obviously. Then after you bandit these three walls off, you're immediately going to go back downstairs and you're going to reinforce this single wall and bandit this off. Then after you set all of that up, you're then free to go roam wherever. I like to roam with Bandit in Customs and have Bandit be the Customs player. Bandit can to cut off the, uh, you know, attackers from pushing main stairs or Customs. And then you're going to put another player in server to help him out. Okay, now the third operator you're going to want to pick for this bomb site is Jaeger. And Jaeger has a lot to set up for here. So what you're going to want to do is put one ADS on the main window in the bathroom, just so you can't get naded in the bomb site. Then put a BP right here in this hallway on the doorway. Then you're gonna make your way into vents. Give one ADS to your vents player. I'm gonna put it here. Then after you put that ADS down, you're then gonna make your way upstairs into offices and give one ADS to your offices players. I like to put the ADS behind this half wall right here. And I'll stop the player that's playing close on the wall from getting naded from through these uh, holes up here or through the doorway. Then after you set these up, Jaeger is going to be one of the players that roams upstairs. He's going to play in archives and in uh, fountain and just kind of delay the attackers from pushing offices. Offices is going to get taken, by the way. There is nothing you can do about it. It will get taken. So you need to be ready for that. And while he's up here, you're also going to have him get this hatch. But yeah, you're going to want to hold this. It, you, Jaeger most likely will die because the attackers are going to have a pretty easy time if they bring like a Thatcher or a Thermite to get this wall open. They'll be able to easily pinch you through archives and armory, but you're mainly just here to act as like a wall to kind of like slow them down. You're going to have another teammate come up here and help you, but this is still going to be a pretty hard thing to hold. Now for the fourth operator on this bomb site, I like to pick Legion because he's going to give you a lot of utility if you play him upstairs. So at the start of the round, you're going to immediately make your way upstairs into offices. You're then going to start throwing your goos around. I like to put one on this doorway here. And you're also going to reinforce this archives hatch. Then after you get this hatch, the entirety of the prep phase is going to be spent with you searching for drones and also throwing down your goo mines on commie entry points for the attackers. These goo mines you're going to need because the attackers are going to be trying to pinch the guy's top floor extremely hard so if you have these goo mines they can at least give you info on where the attackers are pushing from and they can also potentially slow the attackers down and give you a free kill now the final operator for this site setup is once again kind of up to your own interpretation you can pick whatever operator you want on this bomb site that you think would benefit this setup the most i like to bring a malusi to help your players playing in vents and customs and the way i'm going to be doing this is first things first you're going to want to have malusi reinforce the single wall and then this single wall and waiting. I then like to put one Banshee on this Harry Potter door right here, one on the doorway into server. And then I like to put one on the detention doorway right here. This is so when they go to drone, your mute jammers that you set up earlier will cut off their ability to see the Banshee. And then when they walk in, they'll be caught off guard by you playing in vents or your bandit playing in custom swinging off these banshees and you and bandit need to be playing off each other so if bandit starts getting pushed in customs and you're you know not getting pushed that heavily from this side you need to be rotating over to customs and trying to help him out because both of you need to stay alive and hold this as long as possible uh additionally you're gonna have one more reinforcements after this so i recommend putting it on this server wall here just to stop you from getting wall banged as much from the window this will stop them from you know getting deep lines of sight into here through the window 
Anyways, that about wraps up this bomb site, and we'll now move on to the next bomb site of the video. Now, for the third bomb site on this map, you're gonna want to go server, and you're gonna want to bring a Kaid or a Bandit. For the purposes of this video, I'll be using Kaid. What you're gonna want to do at the start of the round is immediately make your way over here and make the rotate. And then you're gonna run into supply room and throw the default electric cloth or armory. Then after you do that, you're gonna reinforce the bottom metal wall and the wall in vents right here that I showed you to reinforce last time. After you reinforce that, you're pretty much free to do whatever you want with Kaid. The last electric claw I prefer to use on this triple wall right here. And you can also use it on the detention wall if you'd prefer that but I like to get this triple wall because if they go bathroom side and get this wall open, it makes it really hard to hold workshop. Now, next up for the second operator on the server bomb site, you're gonna wanna pick a Jaeger and immediately you're gonna make your way into vents, put one ADS on the window, and then your last two ADSs are gonna go upstairs in armory. You're gonna make your way up here and you're going to get the double wall in armory right here. And then after you reinforce these two walls, you're gonna put two ADSs on these walls right here. And finally, you'll put a bulletproof cam on the 90 wall right here. Then you can have your teammates hop on the, this during the round and give you call outs on whether anyone's pushing 90 or not. But throughout the entire round as Jaeger, you're gonna to wanna to spend your time in armory lockers and in archives, just slowing down the attackers from pushing vertically. You're gonna have a teammate come up, which I'll show you in a minute, and get these hatches and make some vertical holes but that'll come later on in the prep phase. Now, the third operator on the server's bomb site you're gonna wanna bring is a castle. And the first castle barricade you're gonna place down is over here on the waiting double door, but one here. Then you're gonna make your way to the top floor and place your other three castles up there. First, you're gonna get the 90 walls. Then I would throw a beeper on the archives door, castle off the window. I'd also castle off the office's double door and I'd move over and castle off the sandwich window here. Then with castle, you're going to make all the vert holes that you need into the bomb site and open up all the hatches that you need and just start making vert holes above the window right here. And this doesn't have to be in the prep phase, but I would just set these up throughout the round. Even after the prep phase, just start setting up the vert holes for you and your teammates to play off of up here. And after you make all the vert holes, that's pretty much all you have to do. You're just gonna play up here with a teammate um, and you're just gonna set up up here and try to hold it down for as long as you can. Now for the fourth operator, you're gonna wanna pick thin rear and pretty much the entire prep phase is gonna be setting up your gadgets. I like to put one on the main double door here, one on the site window right here in the shelf. Then I like to put one over detention door here and then i like to put the other two upstairs one right here on the archives door and i like to put one right here on the armory door and your barbed wire can go pretty much wherever i like to put one on the beepers door here and one on the doorway into the bomb site right here now with the way these fin rears are set up if the attackers start pushing your uh, teammates upstairs heavily you can start moving these upstairs to help them out or if they start pushing downstairs heavily, you can start moving your activations downstairs to help you defend the downstairs easily. And after you set up those traps, I recommend roaming over here in customs and just trying to slow the attackers from pushing into detention. This is a really good place to play, especially for Finrear with his MP7. So because of that, I like to put Finrear over here in customs to play off his trap with his good gun. Now for the final operator on this bomb site, you're gonna wanna pick Valk and you're gonna wanna first reinforce these walls over here. Then after you reinforce those four walls, you're then gonna wanna set up your Valk cams. I like to throw one right here. I then like to put two upstairs. This is so you can play with your nitro cell from below and try to nitro attackers when they go for the ver play. So I'm gonna put one up here where this fan is at. Attackers will rarely check this corner and you'll be able to ping pretty much wherever they are and kill them from below for free with a nitro cell. And then I put one over here in archives to watch this hatch and also the vert holes in here. So I like to throw it in this light right here. Now you'd think that the attackers would check that, but honestly, I throw a Valcam up here all the time and the attackers rarely check it because there's lights here. If the attackers are playing vertically, they're not gonna be looking up at a light right there. And because it's not in an obvious spot, like in the corners, they won't really think to, think to check this light picture right here. 
Anyways, after you set these up, you're then going to make your way back down into the bomb site and you're just going to play in lobby or in workshop. And you're just going to play here with your nitro cell, alternating onto the cameras to give your teammates as much call outs as you can. And then if your teammates die upstairs, you're then going to get yourself ready to nitro off the intel that your teammates gather. Okay, now for the final and worst bomb site on border, we have customs. And what you're going to want to do for this bomb site is bring a Kaid and have him reinforce the two passport walls here. You're going to electrify this off. Then you're going to make your way over to detention and reinforce those two walls. And you're going to want to throw an electric claw on this, probably somewhere in the middle. If you throw it on the top, it can get shot pretty easily on repel. And if you put it too low, it'll easily get naded. So if you put it in the middle, it's probably the most optimal spot. Then you're going to want to put head holes across this wall and reinforce this one. After you set that up, then as Kaid, you're just going to play inside the bomb site, getting aggro on anyone who pushes in through the window and on anyone coming in through the breach. But to be honest, you shouldn't really be picking this bomb site in the first place, I'll be honest. Now for the second operator on the customs bomb site, you're going to want to pick Castle. And at the start of the round, you're going to make way over to the waiting double door here. Castle this off. You're then going to go back to detention and you're going to castle this window here. Then you're going to come over to metal castle this door and then the last castle barricade you can kind of put wherever you feel is necessary i like to put mine on the top metal door just so you get an audio cue if someone pushes up here and then i'd throw one prox alarm over here in the bathroom hall and i'd throw one prox alarm on the main lobby door then for the rest of the round i would play in server as castle this castle barricade will kind of force them to funnel in your direction so you can pretty much swing some pretty free uh, kills if the attackers start pushing this. And uh, since you castle barricaded this off, you'll also get a warning if they start pushing behind you. They can sneak up through bathroom, but as long as you have teammates paying attention to that prox alarm, you should be good. Now for the third operator on customs, you're going to want to pick smoke. And at the start of the round, you're going to make your way over to the teller's walls over here. And you're going to reinforce both of these walls. You're then going to go over to metal. You're going to put barbed wire on these stairs here and you're going to reinforce these two walls. After you reinforce these two walls for the rest of the round of smoke, you're going to want to play in here in supply and use your smoke grenades to smoke off anyone who tries to go on a plant in the B-bomb site and also smoke off any players that try to push into the tension. You're probably going to end up dying here just because of how dangerous this area is. But that's why you want to put smoke here just so we can delay as much time as possible. Okay, now for the fourth operator, you're going to want to pick frost. And the first thing you're going to want to do is make your way over into the B-bomb site and put one frost mat under this window. So that way, if they vault in, they'll run into it. Then you're going to shotgun this wall out here. This will give you a long angle onto the window from the site door. And it'll also allow you to swing aggressively onto this if they don't put any uh if they don't have anyone on detention then after that you're gonna want to put your other two frost mats wherever you like i like to put one over here on the teller's window and then after i put this frost mat down i like to put my last frost mat over near detention a lot of times the attackers won't even notice that frost mat is there and they'll just walk in swinging and down in that especially since this castle barricades here on this window they won't really be expecting this and then for the deployable shield i like to put that on the server's door right here to support your castle playing in server this will allow him to have an even better angle to swing out onto the attackers on and it'll force them to get rid of this shield and this castle barricade if they want to push this side safely now the final operator for customs you can pretty much pick whatever you want i like it to be a roamer so that way i can roam upstairs and you're going to want that operator to have some sort of explosives or shotgun and you're going to want to make your way over to the b wall right here this middle one make a rotate this will allow you to rotate between two bomb sites relatively safely without having to worry about the detention side and windows. Then you're going to run upstairs and get the main customs hatch. Now, I understand by getting this hatch, you won't be able to get this hatch, but this hatch really isn't that important. As you can see, it can't really see that much into the bomb site. So reinforcing it isn't that important. And if the attackers get it, then you just won't play in the closet. But anyways, after you get that hatch, you're then just going to roam around the map hunting for drones. Look for any drones entering the building, coming near the building, and try to shoot as many as you can. Because obviously, if you can shoot drones, it'll take away intel from the attackers and you'll have a much easier time. Now, when playing on this bomb site, keep in mind with this site setup, you do not have a Jaeger 
or a Wamai. So you will have to worry about someone nading you from this window. So just be careful and mindful of that. You're also going to have to worry about potentially a Ying rush that you won't have a Warden. So that is why this bomb site kind of sucks is because no matter how you set this up, really, it's just going to be a sucky bomb site. But if they try to do a Ying rush or something like that and you're ready for it, it should be pretty easy to shut it down. And anyways, that about wraps up border and I'm not going to be moving on to our next map. Now, the first and best bomb site on Chalet is Master Bedroom. And for this bomb site, you're going to want to be picking Mute as your first operator. And to start off the round, you're basically just going to be setting up all of the rotates and head holes, which I'll be showing you quickly. After you set all those up, you're then just going to be focused on setting up your mute jammers around the map. I like to put one on the bottom library stairs here, one on the library door right here, one on this fireplace door, and then one on K9 door. After you set all that up, you're then going to want to play in here in piano behind the shield that I'm going to show you guys to set up here in a second. Now for the second operator on the master bedroom bomb site, you're going to want to pick either Jaeger or Wamai. For the sake of this tutorial though, I'm going to be showing you Jaeger. And what you're going to want to do is put two ADSs over here in piano to protect the shield that you're going to be placing there. And then you're going to want to put one ADS on K9 door right here. After you place this ADS, you're then going to make your way into library and begin setting that area of the map up. You're going to reinforce this single wall here this single wall this wall here and then you're going to place a bulletproof cam on this wall then what you're going to want to do throughout the round is have a teammate sit on your library cam here while you play in the library cubby and swing out on anyone who tries to vault in or just kind of waste time for the attackers if your teammate gives you intel you swing off that intel and try to pick up a frag now if Fenrir somehow doesn't get banned on chalet you should definitely be running him because this is arguably his best map and for the first bomb site you're going to be running him on obviously master bedroom i'm going to be showing you where to put the Fenrir gadgets i'd put one on solar right about here i'd make my way over to piano and throw one on the canine door right here in office then throw two in the piano hall right here like this and then i throw the last one in library under the double window right here this will make it pretty much impossible for them to push this especially while your jaeger player is here because if they vault the single window you can the jaeger player can shoot him if they vault the double window they're going to get blinded and the jaeger player can swing them or someone in fireplace can swing them which i would recommend having your finrear player play top fireplace to assist your jaeger on holding down library so that way if they vault the double window you can swing or if he starts getting pressured heavily from this hallway window you can also get aggressive to help you play this put barbed wire right here and also put barbed wire on your piano stairs to cover jaeger's flank also make for sure that throughout the round you're moving activations around based on where the attackers are pushing so if they stop pushing library side, don't have this uh, Finrear gadget still up. Move it to like maybe Solarium or K9. But you want to be moving these around as much as possible so that way you're getting as much value out of them as you can. Now the fourth operator you're going to want to pick on Master Bedroom is Bandit. And you're going to be spending most of the round reinforcing important parts of the objective. With Bandit, at the start of the round, you're going to want to make your way over to the K9 wall over here. And you're going to want to get these three walls. After you reinforce them, you're then going to bandit them off and you're going to make your way over to the closet. This is obviously a rotate that Mute makes throughout the prep phase, but you're going to reinforce these two closet walls here. Then after you've set that up, you're then going to make your way over to the library single wall and you're going to bandit this single wall off so that way your Jaeger player can last a little longer. After you've done that, you can then go back into the bomb site and kind of play wherever you want. I like to position my bandit on top solar just so he can defend from any potential rushes from over here and swing out on any attackers. Now for the final operator, you're going to bring anyone with a deployable shield. At the time of recording, Warden is in the meta because he has a deployable shield with a 1.5 and a pretty good gadget. So I'd recommend bringing him, but you can pretty much bring anyone. Frost is okay. Anyone like that. Just if you bring those operators, the setup's going to be slightly different because obviously you're going to have a different gadget. But with Warden, I'd recommend doing this at the start of the prep phase. Run over, get this solar single wall, and then reinforce this bathroom single wall. 
Then after that, you're going to make your way over to piano and you're going to throw your deployable shield down on the piano in this default spot. After you've set that up, you're pretty much free to roam wherever, do whatever you want. Since you have one player, top fireplace, one player in the actual library cubby, you have one player on solar and one player on the piano shield. I recommend positioning yourself either by the wall so that way you can swing off at the piano head holes or I'd recommend playing in the B bomb site somewhere to watch the double window. Now for the second best bomb site on Chalet, you're gonna wanna go garage and you're gonna wanna pick Kaid as your first operator. For Kaid, you're gonna wanna make your way over to the main double wall on garage, reinforce both of these walls. You're then gonna shotgun out this single wall and make the rotate. And you're gonna put head holes across the top of this wall like this. Then you're going to reinforce this double wall here and Kai to electric light this off. And you're going to have a teammate get this wall and you'll just electric light off when they get it. After you do that, then as Kai, I would recommend playing in blue behind the deployable shield that you'll place here uh, earlier on in the prep phase. And when the attackers push down blue, you'll just swing out from behind the deployable shield and take advantage of the TTSG's two time site to take that long range engagement. Now for the second operator of the garage bomb site, you're gonna to wanna to bring Bandit and immediately reinforce this trench double wall. Now, since Kaid's gonna electric claw this wall, you're gonna put two Bandit charges on the outside garage wall right here. And then you're gonna make your way upstairs and get both the hatches. Now, after you get the two hatches, you're then immediately going to run back downstairs and get ready to bandit trick on the wall. Now, you can choose not to bandit trick, and that's totally fine. But I think bandit tricking is by far the most effective way to prevent them from getting this wall. They can't play vertically on you, but if you have some roamers that are competent and waste a little bit of time, this can end up wasting a lot of the attacker's time before they can actually get this wall open. And honestly, if you bandit trick right, you can even just completely shut it down and get rid of all their hard breach utility. I recommend bandit tricking if you're good at it. If you're bad at it, you don't have to. Just put two bandits on this wall and you could just leave your last two bandit charges in, in, uh, in hand or you can just throw them down on these back trench walls uh, alongside the electric law. Okay, now for the third operator on the garage bomb site, you're going to want to pick Warden. And at the start of the round, you're going to want to make your way over to blue and set up this deployable shield. This is going to be so Kaid can play aggressively off your shield and use it to kill anyone trying to push down blue. Then immediately you're going to want to make your way upstairs and I would recommend reinforcing these two walls upstairs. I know these two walls seems like very weird walls to reinforce, but you're going to have two extra reinforcements at the end of the day anyway. And these two walls will allow you to easily play upstairs without getting flanked and allow you to rotate down blue stairs a lot without getting wall bang from this wall because the attackers are gonna push canine window and they're gonna push fireplace to try to play vertically so if you as warden can play upstairs without having to worry about getting shot through this wall or buck opening this up and killing you this will make your life a lot easier trust me because you're gonna be wasting a lot of time just by sitting here with these reinforcements here because the attackers are gonna have to either send their hard breacher up here to get this wall to clear you or they're gonna have to waste a ton of time trying to pinch you through library, through piano, and through canine. So these reinforcements do work a lot of the time. Now for the fourth operator on the garage bomb site, you're gonna wanna pick Jaeger or Wamai. I'm gonna pick Jaeger just because he gets all his ADSs at the start of the round. So it makes it easier to demonstrate for this video. And I would recommend putting one ADS above the drone hole here to protect Bandit from being naded through the drone hole. Then I'd recommend putting one on blue to protect the shield. And then I'd put one on trench door right here. Then if you have a bulletproof cam left over, you can jump up on this table and place it here. So that way your teammates can give comms if someone pushes in to trench or if someone comes in, you know, starts pushing blue door or whatever, they can have the comms on if the team starts pushing trench side, especially if they get this wall open, this bulletproof cam will come in clutch. Now, after you put that bulletproof camera down, you're then gonna make your way upstairs and you're going to go roam with Warden. You and Warden are going to want to hold down the top floor for as long as possible. Obviously near these two reinforced walls. But you and Warden are going to want to roam up here for as long as possible together. Try to take gunfights with each other. And try to get kills and just waste as much time as you can. 
from the attackers getting this vertical play because as soon as they get this vertical play your bandit player is going to get forced off the wall and the attackers are going to have a much easier time getting a plant down so if you can delay them getting this open at all at any cost it's worth it now for the final operator on this bomb site you're going to want to pick asami because she is incredibly strong on this bomb site and you're going to want to basically spend the entire prep phase setting up your kibas i like to put one on the snowball bill right about here then i'd also recommend putting a kiba on this little shelving unit right here and you're also going to want to throw a kiba right here at the front of the table another good kiba is right here on blue you can throw a kiba here and this will force any attackers to reveal their feet to you before they can even see you and especially if you have that shield there it'll give you a massive advantage on anyone coming down the stairs if you find other spots you can use them as well i just recommend picking azami on this bomb site because she adds a lot of pressure to the attacking side okay now for the third best bomb site on chalet we have bar gaming and the first opera you're going to want to pick is castle at the start of the round you're going to want to immediately break open the library hatch and then you're going to castle the coat door you're gonna throw a beeper on the bottom blue stairs you're gonna castle off the library hall window the library hall door you're gonna reinforce these two walls you're gonna throw your prox alarm on the double window into canine and then your last castle barricade is going to go on this double window right here now after that with castle you're just gonna play the entire round upstairs i like to play on blue stairs with a shield which i'm going to show you guys later on the round where to place it and pretty much you're just going to want to play at the top of blue stairs for the uh, entirety of the round and try to hold off the attackers from taking vertically because if they take vertically they can easily get a plant down in a bomb site so you kind of want to shut that down now for the second operator on bar gaming you're going to want to bring bandit and the first thing you're going to want to do is make your way upstairs and you're going to reinforce this single wall Banded it off. And then you're going to go over here and reinforce the two walls near K9 window. You're going to reinforce this wall and this wall. After you reinforce all of this, your castle should have reinforced these two walls and you're going to run over and put your bandits down on this wall. This will slow down them being able to open this wall in offices and your bandit charge here will basically completely shut down them getting this single wall because they're going to have a hard time getting EMPs in here, let alone actually breaching this wall with, you know, Xkyros or Ace charges. So this will make the guy playing in the cubby and library a lot safer. Now for the third operator on the game's bar bomb site, you're going to want to bring Finrear. And the first thing you're going to want to do with him is throw one Finrear gadget under the double window into gaming reinforce the stock wall make head holes across this wall and across this wall over there you're gonna reinforce this wall and then you're gonna make a rotate to here and then the rest of prep phase you're just gonna be placing your fin rig guys down i recommend putting one above the kitchen door here one above the fireplace door here I recommend putting one set of barbed wire on the fireplace stairs, one fin rear gadget on the top fireplace double window, and then the last one on the double door from piano. And I'd also recommend putting some barbed wire on this doorway as well. And after you've set all of that up, you're then going to go back down to the bottom of blue stairs and you're going to hold this. This will stop the attackers from sneaking up blue stairs and killing your players in the bomb site. And it'll also I'll stop attackers from pushing through kitchen hall over there. And you can also support your teammates in the bomb site if they ever end up needing help. Now for the fourth opera, you're going to want to pick Frost and make your way upstairs. You're going to place your shield on the top of blue. You're then going to make your way into the library double window and put a frost mat on it. Then you're going to go to the fireplace double window and put a frost mat on that. And then finally, you're going to go to the site double window and put a frost mat on that. After you place those, you're going to place the last reinforcement that your team has left on this single gaming wall right here. After you reinforce that, you're then just going to play in the bomb site as Frost. With your Frost player, you're mainly just going to want to be holding down the bar bomb site and shutting down any attackers from rushing in to the gaming bomb site as well. Just hold down the two bomb sites 
while your teammates are holding from above and holding all the other angles outside the bomb site. Now, I'm sure you're noticing a pattern, but for the fifth and final operator, you're going to pick Jaeger or Wamai. For the sake of the video, I'm going to be picking Jaeger for simplicity, but you can pick either or and they'll both work just fine for this strategy. As soon as you spawn in, you're going to want to make your way to the double window on the game's bomb site and put one ADS down. You're then going to run up blue and put another ADS on top blue to protect the shield. Then you're going to go into library and place a one ADS on the single window to protect your cubby player from getting naded. And then you're going to put your bulletproof camera in library so that way you can watch the jump in and call out to your teammates whenever the attackers are pushing into library heavily. After that, with Jaeger, you're then going to want to play top fireplace and try to assist your other teammates that are playing upstairs. You're probably going to have one teammate playing top blue, one teammate playing cubby. So you're going to want to have yourself play fireplace and kind of assist on the double window jump in and also watch the fireplace double door and the fireplace basement stairs so that way they can't just sneak into the bomb site because if you allow them to sneak into the bar bomb site you're more than likely going to end up losing this round and it's going to make it a lot harder for yourself anyways it is now time to move on to the fourth and final bomb site on chalet now for the worst and final bomb site on chalet we have kitchen and you're going to want to pick kaid as your first operator or bandit bandit will also work uh your first thing you're gonna want to do is run over here to the fireplace wall right here and reinforce it you're gonna electrical the wall and reinforce these two walls here immediately afterwards you're gonna make your way over to trophy and you're going to make head holes across this trophy wall and reinforce this left wall here you're also gonna do the same thing over here on this trophy wall and you're gonna reinforce the left wall if you've done that, that's pretty much everything you have to do with Kaid. Your last electric claw can literally go wherever you want. I like to just throw it right here, but realistically, you can put it wherever you feel is uh, necessary. Now for the second operator, you're gonna wanna pick Jaeger and immediately what you're gonna wanna do is make your way upstairs. You're gonna run over to trophy, put one ADS under the trophy window. You're gonna put one ADS under the solar windows. Then you're gonna make your way into master, reinforce this hatch. And then you're gonna put one ADS in piano right here. Then your bulletproof camera can honestly go in library hall right here. Just to give you some intel on when the attackers start pushing piano. Then throughout the round, you're gonna wanna have Jaeger roam upstairs and delay the push on the vertical play because kitchen has a lot of vert play. And so you're gonna wanna slow them down so they can't get access to that hatch over there or walk into K9 or come through piano and you're going to have another teammate up here to assist you in that now the operator that's going to be helping jaeger play upstairs is mute what you're going to want to do is make your way upstairs immediately as soon as you spawn in at the start of the round and you're going to start setting up the upstairs you're going to make one rotate right here head holes across then you're going to reinforce these three walls then i'd recommend using two of your jams to get this wall and then putting one jam on the piano double door right here. And then one jam over here on the solar door. Now, after you've set all this up, Mute is gonna be playing in piano to support Jaeger. And he's gonna be playing behind the deployable shield that I'm gonna have set up up here. Basically, you're gonna wanna play this bomb site similar to what you would uh, master bedroom, except you're just literally playing up here to delay time. And as soon as they take access to it by either breaching the wall or they start pinching your teammates downstairs, you're gonna make your way over to solar and get into the bomb site as fast as possible. Now for the fourth operator on the kitchen bomb site, you're gonna to wanna to bring Warden simply for his deployable shield. This is a pattern that's been throughout this video, but Warden is just that operator right now with the deployable shield. But realistically, any other operator will work for the same sort of task. As long as they have a shield, you're gonna to be totally good. And you're just gonna run upstairs, immediately place your shield in piano. And then you're gonna immediately run back downstairs and you're gonna play in solar with warden the reason why you want warden in solar is because a lot of the time the attackers will try to smoke this off or they'll try to ying kens out of the people in trophy so you want to have warden playing down here so he can get aggressive on anyone trying to rush up west main he can also shut down or rush through the breach all that kind of stuff whereas warden's gonna be less useful if you run with him on the top floor specifically his gadget will be less useful if you run with him upstairs you can put him upstairs instead of mute but me personally, I like to put him downstairs just so when they try to go for an execute on the bomb site, you have his gadget ready to go. 
Now for the final operator on this bomb site, I'm gonna be picking Capcan for the sake of this video, but you can realistically pick whoever you want. I'm just gonna be picking Capcan because I enjoy picking Capcan on this bomb site. Uh, the first two Capcan traps that I like to place is running down into basement onto the trench door. A lot of attackers do not expect these to be here. So these can catch someone off guard if they're trying to ride up West Main. I like to put two over here on the games door. And then I like to put my last one right here on the site door. After that, you're going to want to make the site rotate. And then you're going to want to make your way upstairs and you're going to play up here with the rest of your team. And you're going to use your last impact grenade to open up this wall. You don't have to follow this step by step because realistically it's cap can. You're going to have different cap can placements every round. I was just showing you the three that I like normally place. Now for my favorite and arguably best bomb site on Clubhouse, we have Gym Bedroom. And the first operator you're gonna wanna pick is Castle. And when you spawn in, you're immediately gonna go to making the rotate and footholds across the gym wall. After you do that, you're then gonna Castle Barricade Gym Window. You're gonna Barricade Gym Door. Throw a Pox Alarm on Gym Window. Then you're gonna make the bathroom rotate. You're going to castle barricade master window and you're going to get con window then after that make the gold vault rotate and you're good then after that the only thing you have left to do is to throw a prox alarm on main stairs and then you can play out the round with castle i like to set myself up in logi and play off the head holes that another operator is going to make uh, later in the prep phase and i like to sit in here just to kind of stop the logi hatch drop in and also help my teammate that's going to be playing in cctv hold down that side of the map now for the second operator you're going to want to bring on this bomb site i'm going to be bringing thorn strictly for her deployable shield and her strong 1.5 you could also get away with picking warden or really any other operator that has a shield and a decent gun but for the purposes of this video i'm going to be bringing thorn because the traps are actually pretty decent for this bomb site when you start off the round you're going to run all the way over into cash and you're going to set up that side of the map first thing you're going to do is you're going to place your shield down next to this green box here and then you're going to reinforce these two cc walls and then you're gonna reinforce these three walls top red. After you reinforce all of this, then you're just gonna set up your traps over here to help support you. I like to throw one like right up against this table because they won't necessarily see it until they go to swing out on you. And then another thorn gadget I like to throw down is one right here on the con door, just in case if you die, this will force anyone that tries to come through this door to run out into the open past your head holes and logi, or it'll force them back in here, which will waste some time. Then your last thorn gadget, I like to place on the A bomb right here on default, because this is the default plant. A lot of people plant here. So if you put a thorn gadget there, when they go to plant behind this bomb, they'll get hit with the thorn gadget and be forced out of the bomb site. After that, you're basically just gonna spend the entire round with your good gun in 1.5 behind the deployable shield, swinging people who try to push you in CC, and you're just gonna try to hold this down for as long as possible. Now with the third operator mute at the start of the round, you're gonna be basically focusing on placing your mute jammers and helping your team make the head holes. So the, at the start of the round, you're gonna run over here to Logi, put one mute jam right here at the Logi door and top main stairs. Then after you place that mute chamber, you're gonna run over here, reinforce this wall right here, make a vaultable rotate here. You're then gonna reinforce this outside con wall, put a mute jam on it. Then you're gonna get this uh, con head holes here. You're gonna put a mute jam on this door as well. So they can't like Flores drone your shield. And then your last mute jam, We'll go over here on the site door. So if they take control of Khan, they can't drone into the bomb site. Then after you set all this up, Mute is just gonna play either in bathroom near the, where the uh, where everything is set up. So, you, so Castle's already made this. Mute is gonna play in bathroom and kind of hold down the breach, make for sure no one rushes in through the breach. No one rushes in the gym. He'll shoot them with, through the footholes. And it'll just kind of hold down the bomb site, make for sure that, you know, everything's going okay. Now for the fourth operator, we have Jaeger, and he is an extremely important operator for this bomb site. At the start of the round, you're gonna wanna make your way over into gym, and you're gonna put one ADS on the window, so that way if they get the window castle barricade, they can't just 
clear the doorway castle barricade easily then you're gonna run into Lodgy. put one ads on gold vault to protect your player playing in gold vault from getting naded and then you're gonna put one final ads on your shield player in cc then after you do that i like to run up on this little uh cabinet and cache if i can get up there and place a bulletproof cam this will give you a line of sight into the entirety of cash and if they start pushing over here after your teammate dies you can get comms on where they're at and if you shoot this the only way they can get rid of it is if they shoot like walk up and shoot it or if they use util to get rid of it so they won't be able to walk up and melee it anyways after you've done that setup with jaeger you're then going to move over to top main stairs and i like to put my jaeger on top main stairs to just kind of hold down this area making sure they don't rush up main stairs and he can also provide support in the bomb site if they start pushing now for the final operator on this bomb site you're going to want to pick either kaid or bandit for the purposes of this bomb site i'm going to be picking bandit just because i think his gun is a lot more uh fun to use and I, you don't really need the shotgun since you already have two other people with a shotgun so at the start of the round with bandit you're going to immediately run over to the main wall you're going to reinforce it you reinforce both of them you're then going to bandit the wall off then you're going to reinforce this left bathroom wall and then with your last two bandit charges you're going to run over to cc and you're going to bandit off these two walls that your teammate has reinforced after that bandit's free to go wherever he wants you can either have him roam below with his nitro cell to get ready for a plant or you can just have him play somewhere near the bomb site like in con or wherever you really want him to play and anyways that's going to wrap up this bomb site and we're now going to be moving on to the next bomb site on clubhouse now for the second best bomb site on clubhouse we have the church bomb site and the first operator you're going to want to pick on this is a zombie and immediately at the start of the round you're going to make your way into the arsenal bomb site and you're going to set up the impact trick with your deagle and after that you're going to throw one kiba on the shelving unit right here then you're going to make your way into dirt and reinforce both dirt walls after that go back into arsenal you should have more kibas available and you're going to throw one right here and one right here and this basically cuts off most of the line of sight that the kitchen hatch gets it'll have a small angle into the bomb site but it'll shut them down from being able to see anyone coming in and out of dirt and it'll shut them down from being able to see anyone coming near the box one also i like to vault up on this and make head holes into the top of the wall here so that way you can get an angle into oil pit so if they start pushing your teammates hard over there you can vault up on this box and peek them from the the head holes you made after that that's about it for a zombie's part of the bomb site setup your other kiba can go wherever you want like when the attackers start pushing really heavily but these three kibas are mainly just to allow someone to stay alive when the hatch gets open without getting you know absolutely demolished now for the second operator we have kaid mainly for his ability to deal with the hatches and so at the start of the round i like to walk over to blue make a rotate with the tcsg and then after you make the blue rotate you're going to reinforce this wall in the middle then you're going to make your way under the kitchen hatch and while your teammates are getting the hatches you're gonna deal with making the main rotate this needs to be a vaultable rotate not a walkable rotate then after they get this hatch you're gonna throw a kaid electric claw there and then after a zombie gets dirt you're gonna run in here and throw an electric claw in the top left corner i prefer to electric claw dirt just for the fact that you won't have to worry with this if you electric claw because a lot of times the attackers won't want to waste the utility to get rid of this and it'll waste and if they try to get it it'll either waste a nade or just waste their time because they'll have to impact the mp it so i overall think it's worth it to electric claw this over like moto hatch because moto hatch in, at least in my opinion is less important because dirt allows them to sneak up on you and flank you whereas if you just electric claw this off most of the time the attackers won't even push this because it's electric clawed so it's worth it to me to have an electric claw on that wall but you can also use it on moto hatch if you prefer that uh after you get done with that you're then going to come over here to the bottom main stairs wall here and you're going to make footholds across this and then you're going to make your way into the church bomb site and you're going to put head holes across this left wall after that you're pretty much free 
to do whatever. Uh, as Kaid, I like to play in blue just for the fact that you get some extra range to deal with anyone pushing down secret stairs. Your two times will help you to have a little bit of an advantage in that gunfight. And then on top of that, if someone starts pushing oil, this is another long range gunfight. So having a two times on the TCSG can give you an advantage in these gunfights. Now for the third operator, you're gonna be picking Capcan and Capcan's job is literally just gonna be to run upstairs, get the hatches and then immediately start placing his traps, which the first hatch is going to be kitchen hatch. The second is going to be moto hatch. Then you're gonna run over and get blue hatch as well. After you get these hatches, you can then place your Capcan traps wherever you'd like, wherever you prefer your Capcans to be. I like to put one on the garage door here. Well, not one, but two. And then I like to run over to the kitchen side of the map. And I like to put one on the freezer door on the left side here. You'd be surprised how many times attackers miss drone these Capcan traps. So these are actually like really good. And then the last one I like to put on the bottom of main stairs on my way back to the bomb site because with Capcan, you're not going to want to roam. What you're going to want to do is stay inside the bomb site and use your impacts along with a zombie's impacts to impact trick the hatch when the attackers go for kitchen hatch. Now for the fourth operator, I'm picking Wamai, but you can also get away with picking Jaeger. I just prefer Wamai on this bomb site because of where I'm going to be playing him. At the start of the round, you're immediately going to run over to church wall and reinforce these two walls here. After you reinforce these two walls, you're then going to go through the rotate that Kaid makes into blue, and you're going to start getting ready for the attackers that push blue or oil pit. You're going to do that by setting up some magnets nearby to protect yourself from getting naded from both directions. And throughout the round, you're just going to be throwing your magnets in blue as needed, or if they start pushing another area of the bomb site, you're going to start throwing magnets in that direction as well but you're mainly going to be focusing your magnets on blue because this will shut down any sort of like ying candelas coming in and screwing you over or any nades coming over and killing you if you just throw magnets in this area this can protect you and allow you to hold this area for a lot longer now for the fifth and final operator you're going to want to pick someone that can roam and it also has a deployable shield and for the sake of this video i'm going to be picking thorn just because i want to set up her traps upstairs where i'm going to be roaming so i can take advantage of them fully so at the start of the round, you're going to run over here, place your deployable shield down in the hallway, and you're then immediately going to throw a throwing gadget at the top of the main stairs double door. I know I've said a lot not to place them on the top of doorways, but this one is actually extremely effective because if they walk in here, they're going to be forced into the hallway where Moto's at, and you can have a teammate swing them, or they're going to be forced down the hallway towards your shield, or they're going to be forced back into the doorway which either of those audio warnings is gonna allow you to swing them from the head holes, swing them from moto or the shield. After you do that, you're then gonna run upstairs, leave your last two thorn gadgets in pocket, and you're just gonna come and get ready to roam on the top floor. Uh, I like to throw one thorn gadget right in the floorboards under this desk. This is cause they won't be able to see it from the hatch until they drop down. And then once they drop down, it's gonna be going off and they're gonna be forced to sprint in a direction and when they go to run or they go to leave the thorn gadgets radius you can swing them and get a free kill um that is a really good thorn gadget spot especially if you're roaming upstairs and then the last one i like to throw is actually right here on the main stairs this will give you an audio warning of when they're pushing your main stairs and they'll allow you to be ready for it and then if you just play up here on your thorns you can pretty much pick up free frags as long as you're playing this properly. If they open the jacuzzi wall, just run away or try to fall back to the bomb site in some way. But otherwise, you can play up here and just delay as much time as possible until inevitably you either get killed or you uh, kill the entire enemy team and roam back to the bomb site. Now, the third best bomb site on Clubhouse is arguably CCTV Cash. And for this bomb site, I'm going to be picking Azami as the first operator just because of how strong she is on this bomb site. First thing you're going to want to do at the start of the round is make your way into garage. You're going to reinforce this wall here. Make the head holes with your deagle. Then you're going to make your way to the bottom of the garage. And you're going to reinforce this wall here. After that, you're going to throw one Kiba on the staircase here. And the reason why this keep is important is because it'll shut down a Monty from being able to walk up CCTV easily. Then you're gonna throw one Kiba right here and one Kiba right here. And throughout the round, you're just gonna be throwing Kibas on the rafters and make it harder for the attackers to push you. 
because there won't be any holes in the rafters half wall and you'll just be able to swing out kill attackers as they push in and it's going to make this a lot easier to hold especially since monty can't just walk up the staircase now for the second operator you're going to want to pick jaeger just for the fact that you're going to have someone playing on catwalk and you're going to need to defend them as much as possible at the start of the round you're going to run over here reinforce this middle wall in the cache you're going to reinforce this con wall right here we're going to reinforce this outside con wall then you're going to run over to catwalk and immediately start placing your ads's down I would recommend putting one ADS at R2, one at R1. And then after you place that, place your bulletproof camera at the top of catwalk. So that way you can give calls on anyone pushing into swamp or pushing into garage door. And also if your defender dies up here, you can give calls on, you know, when the attackers are peeking the head holes and all that. Then after that, you're gonna place your last ADS on the top of red above the drone hole to prevent your bandit batteries or your Kaid electric claws from getting uh, naded. Then after that, the rest of the round, you can do whatever you want. I like to position my Jaeger top red and just kind of hold down this area because this gun isn't particularly strong. And if you're going to want roamers, there's other operators can, that can do that job better. So I'd rather just have Jaeger anchor down in the bomb site and try to help his team uh, prevent the attackers from pushing in and executing. Now for the next operator, you're going to want to pick Kaid and immediately at the start of the round, you're going to go to making the red rotate. Then after you make the red rotate, you're then going to make head holes across this wall and across this wall. And you're going to make the head holes across the catwalk wall. After that, you're going to throw one collector claw up here. We're going to reinforce these two walls. And then you're going to come downstairs into garage. You're going to shotgun this little part of the floor here. And you're going to throw one electric claw in that corner. Now, if you run back upstairs, you're going to see that both walls are uh, electrified. And having uh, electric claws in those two spots is going to make it to where the attackers will only be able to get one side of the wall if they only use one impact EMP. If they want to get both sides, they're going to have to use either a Thatcher EMP or two impact EMPs to get both walls. Anyways, after you set this up, then Kaid is pretty much free to do whatever he wants. You can set him up in CCTV, which is what I would recommend. And that'll allow him to play off these head holes and see on the garage stairs with his long range uh, rifle. Or you can have him set up in con near the bomb site and kind of shut down the attacker's push. Now, I think a good fourth operator for this bomb site is Fenrir for a couple of reasons. One, his traps are super strong for this bomb site. And two, he brings barbed wire to the table. At the start of the round, you're going to want to run into construction and reinforce the Laju wall here. I then recommend putting one dread mine on the top of this con door here. Then you're going to run into garage, place barbed wire on rafter stairs. Then put one dread mine on the top of the garage door here. Then I'd recommend putting one dread mine at the top of the lounge stairs here into swamp. Then you're going to put one dread mine on red with barbed wire on it. And then your last dread mine can go wherever you please. I like to put mine on the default plant here. So that way, if they start planting default, you can just activate it during the round when they go for the plant and you can swing them while they're blinded most of the time if they're planting here and then you activate the trap and it goes off they'll either immediately go to shoot it or they'll try to run out of the radius either one will be a benefit to you so overall having a fin rear gadget here is a pretty good idea but you can put it wherever you want it doesn't really matter then after you set up those dread mines you're then gonna roam on the other side of the map with a uh, fin rear and kind of delay their push into con if they go for a con take you want to have at least one person playing over here in bedroom to kind of slow that down and i think finn is the perfect operator for that he has a good gun in the mp7 and he's a two speed so overall this is a really good idea now the final operator can quite literally be whatever you want but for the purposes of this video i'm going to be showing warden since he has a shield and a good gun and i'm going to run over to the top of red stairs here and i'm going to place down my shield right here and then immediately after that i'm going to run downstairs and start drone hunting looking for any drones that are driving into the bomb site because all of them are going to be coming from this first floor for the most part there might be one drone that comes in from con but a lot of the drones spawn somewhere around here so you need to be watching for for drones coming through uh, the garage door drones coming in from stock all of that kind of stuff and you're just going to be shooting drones and setting up for your uh your hold downstairs because warden is going to roam below the bomb site and protect from like a buck or iana getting below and like you know killing your teammates inside of cash so just play down here, delay as much time as possible. And then later on in the round, you can come back to the bomb site to start executing. Now for the worst bomb site on Clubhouse, we have bar stage. And the first thing you're gonna wanna do is pick a Kaid and make your way over to the pool room. You're gonna reinforce 
these walls here. You're then going to electric claw this wall and you're going to electric claw the hatch here, which your teammate, which your teammate will go reinforce. Then after that, you're going to make your way over here to the stock wall, put footholds across it. And then you're going to reinforce this garage wall here. Then after that, that's pretty much it for Kaid. I, I recommend having him play in here near stage and have him play aggressively on people trying to push in the stock because his two times on the TCSG will allow him to win those longer range gunfights pretty easily. And as long as you are holding down stock, it's going to make holding this bomb site a lot easier. If you just reinforce these walls and you just Kaid them off, it's going to basically give them part of the map for free. And it's going to be a lot harder to hold this because as soon as they get this wall open, this entire bomb site is pretty much free. So you want to just stop them from getting in stock altogether by having these footholds. Then for the second operator on bar, I recommend picking a bandit. So that way you can get even more of the walls banded off. And what you want to do is get these two walls here and then get the bar walls. Then after that, you're going to want to run over here, bandit these two walls off. And then you're also going to run over here and bandit these two walls off. Then after you do that, you're then going to make your way upstairs. And as bandit, you're just going to roam upstairs and delay them from getting the pool hatch and also the con hatch open. Because if they get one of these hatches open, it's going to make your life a lot more difficult. This hatch is a little less important because they get very little angles from it. And it's a lot easier to swing someone on this hatch and kill them. Whereas the other hatch in pool basically gives you a, an entire line of sight into pool and allows you to clear the Kaid electric claws on the wall. So that wall, that hatch is definitely more important than this one. But you want to delay the attackers from getting either one of these open and also playing vertically on the, the bar bomb site. So having Bandit and another teammate roam up here uh, throughout the round is going to be a good idea. Now for your third operator on bar, I recommend bringing a castle. And the first thing you're going to want to do is run over here and castle this outside double door. I also recommend putting a prox alarm on that doorway. Then I recommend making your way over into pool, castling this window. And I'd also castle this bathroom door and this pool door. This will allow you to actually play inside the bomb site and not have to worry about getting flanked from these sides of the map because as soon as these castles get opened, you'll know that they're pushing that side of the map and you can focus on it. But if they don't breach those castles, then you're pretty much free to play anywhere in the bomb site and not have to worry about getting flanked from uh, the pool side, like strip club side. Then after you place those castle barricades, you're pretty much free to do whatever you want. For me, I like to have my castle play upstairs with Bandit. And while he's playing upstairs with Bandit, he can reinforce this hatch. And then, like I said, you and Bandit are just going to play up here for as long as possible. You're probably going to get cleared out because the con wall is soft. They can go through Lodgy Hatch. They can go through, through Jacuzzi. There's so many ways they can deal with you. So you most likely will get cleared out, but you just need to delay as much time as possible. As long as you can delay like a minute or two off the round from the attackers, you've pretty much won as the roamers upstairs. Okay, now for the fourth operator on this bomb site, I recommend picking Warden just for the fact that a lot of the time on this bomb site, they like to bring Ying, Capital, a lot of smokes, and they like to be very rushy on the stock side. And so that's where Warden comes in. What you can do at the start of the round is run over here, place a shield on the stage in front of these head holes and then you can swing off the shield into the footholds that your castle makes and your kaid makes and you can just swing out on the people pushing into stock and if they start smoking you off you activate your warden goggles and you continue to swing them and if they try to you know candela rush poolside you have warden inside the bomb site ready to deal with that situation when it transpires uh, after you set up your shield, Warded is pretty much free to do whatever he wants. Like during the prep phase, he can just help with reinforcements, like reinforcing the, the back bar wall or reinforcing the stage wall. But realistically, he doesn't have to do anything. He can just get ready for them to push stock. And when they do, just swing out on them with the 1.5 behind his shield with his goggles. Now for the final operator on bar stage, you're going to want to bring Jaeger. And this is really important to protect your shield player. Okay, now what you're going to want to do is run over here and put two ADSs on the footholds here. This will protect the shield over here if you place it properly from any ash charges, nades, anything like that. So that way your shield player is pretty safe. Then your last ADS should go over here under the pool window. Then after that, you're going to run into stock and you're going to place a bulletproof cam in stock. I recommend putting it right here on the side of the door. This will allow you to give comms on anyone trying to 
push into stock and you can call out to your warden player telling him you know hey there's a guy on the doorway right side get ready for him to swing and you can also give call outs on anyone pushing into a swamp or lounge then after you do that i recommend with jaeger playing somewhere in lounge and kind of delaying their take into stock from here because they can only peek you from that doorway especially when you reinforce this wall like i showed they can only really push you from that doorway red stairs and these two doors here so as long as you cut off your angles and you play it properly you can actually hold this for a decent amount of time without any uh, assistance and anyways that wraps up clubhouse and we're now going to be moving on to our next map now for the first and arguably best bomb site on coastline we have hookah billiards and this entire map doesn't really require you to pick any operators you can literally run pretty much any operator lineup and you'll be just fine on this map but for the sake of this video i am going to be showing you the operators that i like to choose on these bomb sites and the first one for billiards is going to be jaeger and what you're going to want to do at the start of the round is run over here to vip wall reinforce this you're then going to barricade this window then you're going to put one ads on cool vibes and then put your bulletproof cam there as well then you're going to put one ads on hookah door and one ads behind the bomb then after that Hager is going to roam to the other side of the map and play in penthouse and vip side and try to hold off the attackers from pushing into the bomb site you want to have at least one or two people roaming over here just so you can kind of slow this takedown if they go for here if they don't go here you can leave penthouse and vip and go somewhere else but if you allow the attackers to get this side of the map for free, it's going to make your life defending Hookah a lot harder. Now for the second operator on this bomb site, I like to pick Kaid so that way you can deal with the quad wall, which speaking of which at the start of the round, you're going to want to run over here and reinforce these four walls. Then after reinforcing these four walls, you're going to want to electric claw off both of them. Then after that, Kaid's going to come over here and make the site rotate. And he's also going to make head holes across this wall and reinforce the middle wall and after you do that that pretty much wraps up everything Kaid has to do in the bomb site he can then just anchor down in the bomb site hold off the attackers from pushing any of the common entryways and yeah that's about it now on top of jaeger and Kaid, i like to bring a thorn because of her deployable shield and her traps are actually pretty strong on this map so what you're going to want to do is make your way into hookah set up your deployable shield outside the doorway you're going to reinforce both walls here. So you're going to run over here and reinforce this third wall. Then after that, you're going to run into Hookah and set up your traps. I like to put one under the desk on this side. And then one under the desk on this side. Because of the way the floorboards are, it can be a little tough to line this up. So you might have to put it in front of the desk like this. But either way, it, that works. And what this will do is when they walk into the bomb site, the thorn gadget will go off. They'll run over here towards the cool vibes rotate. This will go off. And then now they'll be forced out into the open or they'll be forced to run back into your other thorn gadget. And then your last thorn gadget can go on cool vibes to slow them down or force them to run up the staircase when they come up cool vibes. After you've done that, thorn is pretty much just gonna play behind her deployable shield with her 1.5 and get aggressive on attackers that try to push hookah balcony. Outside of that, that's pretty much everything she's going to be doing this round. Now for the fourth operator, I like to bring a mute for his shotgun and the fact that he has jammers that can shut down the attackers from using like Flores drones to clear your utility. So at the start of the round, you're going to make your way over to the Luka side of the map. You're going to make head holes across this wall in between the two reinforcements to the thorn places. Then you're going to set up the cool vibes rotate. Then you're going to place one mute jammer right here to protect the shield one mute jammer on the doorway and then one mute jammer on cool vibes then your last mute jammer can kind of go wherever you want i like to put mine on the luggage doorway to protect anyone playing behind the uh aqua counter from getting droned then after that you is just going to be playing an aqua behind the counter swinging out with his smg 11 and taking advantage of his close range gunfight strength to swing out on anybody who tries to push him in aqua now for the final operator on the hookah bomb site i like to bring azami just because her kibas can allow you to play in this bomb site a lot safer since there's so many outside angles azami can help cut off some of those angles now the first thing you're going to want to do with azami is make your way over to hookah and throw a kiba right here 
This is going to block Hookah Window from being able to see a lot of the bomb site, and it's basically just going to allow it to kind of see the cool vibes rotate and to see the right side of Hookah, but you're not going to be able to see deep into the bomb site like you normally would from the window. The next cube I like to throw is one on the cool vibes drone hole right there. And then I like to throw one right here on the pool table, which I'll show you in a second, which that Kiba looks like this. Now your last Kiba can kind of go wherever. If this barricade gets opened, I like to throw it right here on this window where the barricade normally is, because this will force them to use utility if they want to see into VIP. It cuts off a lot of their angles and it basically makes this window useless from the courtyard. They get very little, um, little very little lines of sight through this window when you put this Kiba here. Then after you place all your Kibas, you're pretty much just going to be playing near the bomb site, trying to use your Kibas to your advantage, you know, playing in pink, playing wherever near the bomb site. Or you can also roam off site with a zombie over here with a uh, Jaeger as well. But the problem with that is you won't be able to throw your Kibas around throughout the round. But either way, just try to set yourself up somewhere on the map and to uh, to take full advantage of your uh, Kiba placements. Now for the second best bomb site on this map, we have Kitchen Service. And the first operator you're gonna to wanna to pick is Mira. And what you're gonna to wanna to do with Mira is you're gonna first reinforce the wall next to the kitchen rotate, and you're gonna plop down your first window. Then you're gonna make a rotate next to the window. Then you're gonna make your way over to the service wall, reinforce these two walls. Then you're gonna place a mirror window right, right here. This will allow you to see anyone who pushes in through main lobby or server or courtyard. And it's actually a pretty strong angle. The only thing the attackers can really do to shut this down is if they open this soft wall with like a Zoe or an Ash, they can get an angle into the bomb site and onto like the rotate and stuff. But to be honest, it's really gonna be hard for them to clear you out of this mirror position if you have this set up right. And since there's a mirror right there, it doesn't really matter if they get an angle into the rotate, to be honest. Um, so as long as you play this properly, and you, uh, you know, use it to just burn the attacker's time and utility, you can honestly, you know, get a lot out of this mirror setup. Now, the second opera you're going to want to bring besides mirror is going to be either a Kaid or a Bandit. And at the start of the round, what you're going to want to do is make your way over to Sunrise, reinforce these two walls. Then after that, you're going to have Kaid run over here and throw an Electric Claw right next to the window here. And what this Electric Claw is going to do is it's going to get both the walls upstairs in VIP and your roamers are going to reinforce that wall for you. Then your other electric claw is going to go right here on these service walls to help your mirror window. Then you're going to reinforce these two walls here. And then you're going to put footholds across like so. Then after you set that up, you're pretty much free to play in the bomb site however you want with Kaid. Mira and Kaid are going to be the only two uh, defenders that are actually going to play inside the bomb site because on this bomb site specifically, it's more important to protect from above and also from uh, the attackers taking the map control around the bomb site than to actually sit in the bomb site. Now, realistically, I only recommend one more defender playing on the first floor, and that operator just so happens to be Legion. And the way I like to set up with Legion is I like to make my way into Sunrise. I like to throw a goo on the poolside entrance here. I then like to make an impact rotate here. And I like to put one goo on the office double door. Now, throughout the round with Legion, I like to just roam in between blue bar and sunrise. And I like to just switch back and forth based on, you know, where the goos are going off, if they're put what they're pushing and whatnot. And also, if you really need some assistance, you can have one of your roamers come downstairs and play in sunrise with Legion. And if you both play in here together, it's going to make it a lot harder for the attackers to take this side of the map, especially with your goo mines constantly harassing them when they try to enter the building. It's going to make this area a lot more dangerous. Now, the defender I recommend picking to defend the upstairs part of the map is Solace. At the start of the round, I'd recommend having her run up cool vibes and then make her way into VIP to reinforce the wall. After she does that, I recommend making a rotate into penthouse from VIP and then opening the lobby hatch then with solace just start hunting down drones and looking for them entering the building you know coming into the bomb site and try to shoot as many as you can after you've done that because that's pretty much all you have to do to set up the upstairs for the roam that you and uh jaeger are going to be on because that's pretty much all you're going to have to do to set up for the roam that jaeger and solace are going to be on so after that solace can just run around look for drones and then shoot as many as you can and then come back set up in this position and be prepared for the attackers to push 
in to either the hall of fame door bathroom hatch or potentially even luggage main lobby side now if you find yourself winning two rounds on defense on coastline the next bomb site you're going to want to go is theater penthouse and the first operator you're going to want to pick for this is castle at the start of the round you're going to run over to the double window near bathroom castle barricade it you're then going to get the bathroom door then you're going to whip out that shotgun and shotgun the bottom of the wall out then you're going to throw a prox alarm under the hatch then with your other two castle barricades you're going to want to put one in the hallway near vip here throw beeper above this double door and then you're going to put your last castle barricade all the way on top white window then after you place those castles down you're going to reinforce this back white wall and after you set all that up throughout the round castle is just going to play top white and luggage and kind of try to hold off the attackers from pushing the back side of the map while the rest of his team is working on holding the actual bomb site itself now for the second operator on this bomb site you're going to want to pick someone with a shotgun and a deployable shield at the time of recording the best operator for that by far is frost and we're going to want to do at the start of the round is run over to 90 place your shield right here you want to place that at an angle kind of it's it's it can be sometimes difficult to set up but you'll figure it out then put head holes across this wall then you're gonna make a rotate into penthouse then you're gonna reinforce the middle wall here then you're gonna reinforce this far right wall then after that you're just gonna set up your frost mats i like to put one on top cool vibes then I like to put one on top white. And then I like to put my last one right here on this window into luggage. After you set up your frost mats, then you're going to set up frost behind her deployable shield and to watch the VIP breach to see if anyone walks into VIP and also to kill anyone who tries to push in from 90. Now for the third operator on this bomb site, you're going to want to pick a Jaeger. And immediately at the start of the round, you're going to run over to the double window, place one ADS here in the corner. You're then going to place one ADS in front of the deployable shield in 90, along with your bulletproof camera. And then after you place this ADS, you're then going to make your way over to top white and put one last ADS up here to prevent your top white player from getting naded. After you do that, then Jaeger is going to run to the end of the hallway and reinforce these two walls. Now, after you set this up, then Jaeger is going to be free to play wherever he wants. I like to set up my Jaeger somewhere in your cool vibes, like, you know, literally on cool vibes. Or you can set him up somewhere on pink to shut down any aqua take or anything like that. But you want Jaeger to be playing somewhere on this side of the map to slow this take a little bit. Now, for the fourth operator on this bomb site, you're going to want to pick an anti-breach of some sort. I'm going to be picking Bandit just because you don't really need the shotgun on Kaid and Bandit's gun is a lot more consistent um what you're gonna want to do is make your way into vip and you're gonna reinforce the outside wall now after you've done that you're gonna place your bandit batteries down on the wall then you're gonna make your way into theater put your last two bandit batteries on this wall that your teammates reinforced and then you're gonna reinforce these two walls here after you've done that i recommend setting up bandit near the wall just so that way he can bandit trick if need be and also it'll just scare the attackers into wanting to get rid of him by either wasting nades or whatever just by having bandit play near the wall like this they're gonna suspect that he's bandit tricking and they're gonna want to like you know clear him in some way by you know playing vertically or whatever and so you want to have him here just so the attackers waste time thinking that he's bandit tricking now for the fifth operator on this bomb site i like to bring finrare just for his sheer capability to slow down the attackers push and to allow you to pick up some free kills now at the start of the round you should walk over to the hall of fame throw your first gadget down activate it then you're going to run into vip hall you're going to throw one f naught right here on the sign and activate it and then you're also going to place some barbed wire in front of this vase here then you're going to move over to top white you're going to put barbed wire on white you're also going to set up a fin rare gadget there as well and you're going to throw one in luggage right behind this box. Then your last F knot can go anywhere in the bomb site realistically, but I'd recommend putting it right here because anyone who walks into bathroom will get hit by it and anyone who repels in from double window will get hit by it. 
and then throughout the round as well you're also going to want to be playing in the bomb site as finrear just hanging out in the bomb site trying to hold off the attackers from actually getting an execute off now for the worst bomb site on coastline by far we have blue bar and sunrise and for this bomb site i'm actually going to be recommending you play smoke with a shotgun as your first operator and at the start of the round you're going to run over here make footholds on the bottom of blue bar and the reason you want to do this is because if the attackers try to go for a blue bar take you can just have one of your roamers go into lobby and shoot any of them when they try to go for a plant then additionally after you do that you're going to make a rotate into blue bar like so and then you're going to make holes across the top of this wall so that way you can throw smoke canisters in and then you're going to reinforce these two walls then for your barbed wire you're going to put one set of barbed wire on the top of cool vibe stairs here then you're going to put one set of barbed wire on the mud room door then what you're going to want to do is smoke for the entirety of the round is you're going to walk up to this shield that your teammates are going to place down uh which i'll show in a second you're going to play behind this shield and just kind of stop them from pushing in the mud room you're going to need to watch out for vertical play because if the attackers take hookah they can get a line of sight on you so you need to be wary of that they can throw nades down here they will be able to try to clear you out but you want to hold this position for as long as possible because once the attackers take vertical play and they try to actually execute onto the bomb site most of the time they're either going to push from mud room right here or they're going to go for an office's take and they're going to plant an a bomb site which if you position yourself here you can shut down them from coming into mud room and if they go for the office's take you can run over to the head holes here and smoke them off now obviously since smoke requires a shield to play in his power position you're going to want to bring an operator with a shield as your second operator and for that it's going to be warden for me and the reason why wardens that operator for me is because there's going to be a lot of people that like to bring ying against you on this bomb site and there's going to be a lot of people that like to bring smoke grenades against you on this bomb site to try to get a plant down and what you're going to want to do is bring warden and have him roman made lobby and use those blue bar footholds to his advantage and his 1.5 to allow him to just shut down anyone trying to plant in here because if they try to smoke off your footholds you can just see through it with your uh glasses and you'll be able to shut down anyone trying to go for a plant now at the start of the round you're going to want to run over here into sunrise and set up that shield i just talked about it's going to be in the corner like this and then you're going to want to put two reinforcements on this wall here then two reinforcements on this wall then after you set that up i'd recommend having warden go ahead and run upstairs and get the hookah hatch after you reinforce this hatch you're then going to have warden run into main lobby and just hold this side of the map for as long as he can because if he can hold this he can use those full holes to his advantage like i said to shut down any plant that he attack to try to go for it now for the third operator since you're going to be you know dedicating a lot to the shield right here you're going to want to bring ads's to protect it and at the start of the round you're going to run over here place two ads's on this reinforced wall here then you're going to run over to the kitchen hall you're going to place your bp right here on this wall and then you're going to give yourself one ads bottom cool vibes right here this will stop any player that gets control of uh, cool vibes from nading anyone on sunrise on the couches or for really like doing anything because they're not gonna be able to smoke the blue bar door to push down the stairs they're basically not going to be able to walk down cool vibes safely without getting shot from multiple different angles especially if you put this ads here then after that jaeger is going to make his way into blue bar he's going to reinforce these two walls now after that Jaeger is going to be dedicated to holding down the office's side of the map for a little bit. He's just going to roam over here, slow down the attackers just a tad bit. And then if they start, if you start feeling the pressure, he'll then rotate off into security or he'll just fall back into the blue bar bomb site. Now to better help yourself be protected in this bomb site, you're going to want to bring an Azami. So that way you can set up Kibas around the bomb site to help, you know, allow you to rotate and stuff without getting shot. Uh, at the start of the round, you're going to want to put one Kiba right here on the couch. And this is going to help protect you from offices and give you some additional cover to swing out on any attackers that push there and then you're going to want to put one kiba right here on cool vibes this is going to make the attackers have a much worse angle when coming on to cool vibes and you're going to be able to swing onto them pretty easily then after you set up these kibas the rest of your kibas are going to be based on where the attackers are pushing but you can put your kibas pretty much wherever you want just as long as they're providing your team with some sort of cover from the attackers because you're going to feel very pinched on this bomb site and so the kibas are going to help you out a ton now for the final operator on this bomb site you're going to want to bring a kaid to kind of help shut down the attackers from getting some of your walls open the first wall you're going to want to electrify is this wall right here and then the other wall you're going to want to electrify is this wall right here this office's wall 
And the way you're going to want to do that is you're going to want to make your way upstairs and you're going to want to electrify that wall from above. As you can see, this is the wall right here. So what you're going to want to do to make it harder for the attackers to shoot this from the blue bar window is you're going to want to throw the electric claw right here. This will give them the electric claw for free if they push upstairs, obviously, because they're going to see the hole in the floor. They're going to hear the electric claw and just shoot it. But it, the attackers will have a much easier time shooting it if you just throw it into the bomb site and they can peek it from blue bar window. And after you set up that Kaid charge, you're then going to run back downstairs. And as Kaid, you're just going to kind of set yourself up in the bomb site behind the sunrise bar to kind of assist your team and stop them from pushing sunrise you know to to, to kind of help relieve some pressure off of smoke when he's taking some of the engagements and anyways that about wraps up coastline and we're now going to move on to the next map okay and for the first bomb site on console you're going to want to go the ceo office bomb site and you're going to want to pick an operator with a shield as your first operator and for me that's going to be thorn the first thing you want to do at the start of the round is run over here to blue and place your shield next to this uh hatch right here then you're going to want to throw one thorn gadget right here then you're going to reinforce this wall then make your way into long desk and i like to throw one of my thorn gadgets on visa stairs and then one right here on the default plant a lot of the times the attackers will go for a plant right on this wall and so you want to have a thorn gadget here to force them out of it when they walk into the bomb site or to force them back into the hallway which both will give you an audio cue of the attackers coming into the bomb site and you'll also be able to swing them and get a kill then the last thing thorn's going to do is reinforce this wall and break after you do that thorn is then going to go back to her shield and play behind it throughout the round the reason that is is because this will give her an advantage in most gunfights because she'll have a 1.5 so she can swing people on yellow and with her good gun she'll have a lot easier of a time taking these gunfights and you also just want her to be playing here to play off the thorn gadget that she placed up here now for your second operator you're going to want to pick a nade denial operator like i just said and for that i recommend picking jaeger on this bomb site you're going to run over to blue at the start of the round and you're going to place two ads's in front of the deployable shield right here then you're going to make your way over here reinforce this wall next to the head holes then you're going to reinforce these two walls here in meeting then i'd recommend putting one ads on this wall right here the reason why this ads is important is because if you don't put that there the attackers can repel on meeting and just nade the bandits off of the wall off the single wall so you want to have at least one ads here to stop the attackers from being able to just do that for free then your bulletproof camera i recommend having on vending hall right here this will allow you to call out if people start rushing visa side of the map or break room It'll also let you ha uh, have audio on anyone coming up spiral. After you place that stuff down, you're pretty much done in the prep phase and you can do whatever you want. I recommend having Jaeger roam over an admin and kind of just slow down the attacker's push. And if you want to help yourself over here in admin, reinforcing this middle wall right here is not a bad idea. It'll make it harder for the attackers to wall bang you when you go for a rotation. And it'll just allow you to have a safe position to play behind without the attackers being able to, you know, wall bang you. Now, for the third operator on this bomb site, you're gonna want some sort of breach denial operator. And for that, I'm gonna be picking Bandit on this bomb site just because I think his gun's better and you don't necessarily need the shotgun. At the start of the round, you're gonna run over to yellow and you're going to reinforce this single wall and you're gonna electrify it. You're then gonna make your way over to the single wall on the a balcony. And you're going to reinforce the wall and you're going to electrify the wall after that you're then going to reinforce these two walls here and then after that bandit's free to go wherever he wants and his last two bandit batteries aren't really that important you can put kind of just place them down wherever um but after he sets up these reinforcements and puts down his uh bandit batteries he's free to go which i recommend having bandit roaming somewhere below to kind of like slow an attack into like maybe visa office or spiral stairs now for the fourth operator on this bomb site you're going to want to pick a mute for his shotgun and his mute jams and at the start of the round you're going to make your way over to the b bomb site you're going to shotgun these walls out then after that you're going to place one of your mute jammers on the blue door here then i'd also recommend placing one mute jam near this pillar here after that you're then going to place a mute jammer over here on the doorway into the a bomb site 
then I'd put one right here on the copy door just to make the attacker second guess themselves when they go to drone this. Because obviously, if there's a meat jammer here, they won't be able to fully drone break and they'll have to either open the wall to ensure that there's no one playing in here or they'll have to throw a drone over the half wall and stuff. So it's just a little bit of a delay de a deterrent from the attacker just rushing in here. Um, after that, I like to play with my mute on near the uh, meeting door right here. So that way I can swing out on anyone coming up meeting that goes through that thorn. And also I can use my SMG 11 to swing out on anyone coming through managers or coming into vending hall. Now for the final operator on this bomb site, I recommend picking a heavy roamer. For this video, I'm gonna be picking Solace just because I think she's by far the strongest roamer, but you can get away with going like vigil or something if you want. Then at the start of the round, what you're gonna to wanna to do is just make your way downstairs with Solace, activate your gadget, and just start looking for drones. Just start actively hunting down as many drones as you possibly can. You want to be killing as many drones as possible to shut down the attacker intel throughout the round. If you can kill a couple of drones and take them away from the attackers, they're going to have an even harder time when they run into the mute jammers. So picking a solace alongside a mute can be a very strong combo. And that's why I think it's a, a good idea on this bomb site. Now for the first operator on the garage bomb site, you're going to want to pick Maestro. And that's because I think his uh, cameras are actually extremely strong on this bomb site. And also he brings a shotgun and impacts to the table that can help you make the rotates. So at the start of the round, you're going to walk over here to the yellow pillar. You're going to shotgun this out. Reinforce the left wall. You're then going to put another set of head holes here across this wall. Reinforce the right wall here. Then you're going to use one impact on the security rotate. And one impact on the cardboard rotate. After that... Jump up on box right here. Put one Meister cam here. This can shut down majority of the plant spots on this bomb site if they make it in. And then put another one up here on red car. That one rarely goes by noticed and the attackers will try to go for a plant late in the round after clearing your first Meister cam and they won't even notice that you have a Meister cam here. And this literally sees all of the default plant spots on this bomb site. The attackers will never plant over there because of your head holes. So the only places they typically plant will be behind this box here, behind the bomb, or they'll try to move up and plant behind this pillar. Uh, after that, Maestro is free to just play in the bomb site. Uh, I'd recommend having Maestro play in here in security and just have him sit on his cameras uh, throughout the round, like just sit on cams. And if your teammates start needing help on the bomb site because they start executing or they start pushing very heavily and applying a lot of pressure vertically you can get off your cams and kind of just you know help your teammates out and then as soon as they try to go for a plant just hop on the maestro cams real quick switch to this one find where they are and just taser them now for the second operator on this bomb site you're obviously going to need some sort of breach denial since there's an outside wall directly in the bomb site so at the start of the round you're going to want to make your way over to that wall reinforce it then with Kaid, you're going to want to electric claw this wall here and then I like to make holes above the uh, wall here and use them so that way you can line up a nitro cell at the start of the round and try to kill someone. Obviously, I messed up the lineup, but the, if you make these holes here, you can throw a nitro over the top of the wall and kill the hard breacher early in the round, which can be absolutely huge. After you've set this up, you're then going to want to throw an electric claw on the hatch, which one of your roamers will get uh, later in the round. And then you're going to run over here, reinforce this single wall. I think you're gonna wanna make head holes across the wall. This will allow you to swing out on attackers pushing yellow, and it's gonna force them to have to worry about three different sets of head holes, because you're gonna have one head hole set here, one head hole set here from your uh, from your other uh, shotgun player, Maestro. And when they walk into yellow, look at what they're, they're gonna have to worry about. I mean, they have that, then they have that and that. Like, they have so much to worry about. It's going to be very hard to walk through this doorway without getting shot from one of those three angles or someone in garage. Now, for the third operator on this bomb site, you're going to want to pick some sort of nade denial operator. And since it's just easier for me to show in videos, I'm going to be picking Jaeger just for the purpose of it. You can get away with picking Wamai. It doesn't matter which one you're more comfortable with. It really doesn't matter. Just pick one of them. And at the start of the round, what you're going to want to do with Jaeger specifically is you're going to want to walk over here, set up 180S under the wall. So that way they can't just lob an aid over to get your Kai charged. Then put 180S near the pillar here just to stop your pillar player from getting naded. And then put one final ADS over here 
near the cardboard rotate right about here. This will shut down the attackers from lobbing nades towards your rotate between the two bomb sites, and it'll stop them from smoking it off and stuff like that. It'll, you know, waste a little bit of time from them. Then your bulletproof camera, I'd recommend putting on this reinforcement right here and have it look into Locker's Hall so that way you can give call outs on when they're flanking. And then as for Jaeger's reinforcements that he has to place, he has to place two reinforcements right here. And then he has to place one reinforcement right here. Then after he set that up, I'd recommend roaming on the back side of the map in server and shutting down a potential dirt take because if they rush dirt, you're going to be completely screwed because they're going to have backside control. Getting backside control on this map is probably the easier take of the two. So you want to have at least one defender, if not two, playing on the uh, teller's server side of the map. Now, for the next operator you're going to want to pick on Garage, I recommend picking Legion and having him roam on the backside with Jaeger because his goo mines will allow them to get any warning of attackers trying to rush the backside and they can deal with it accordingly. So you're gonna make your way to the back side of the map at the start of the round. I recommend throwing one goo at the bottom of spiral, then making your way into server, throwing one goo at the top of tellers. Then you're gonna run into dirt and you're gonna reinforce the outside dirt wall. Then put one goo on the stairs here. And then now, as you can see, by the way, I have the goo set up, Jaeger and Legion will be able to know exactly where the attackers are pushing if they come backside, no matter what. And they can give the, that call out out to their team. And they can also get ready for the impending push from either one of those directions. Now for the final operator, I recommend picking some sort of hardcore roamer. And I think Oryx is the perfect one for that. But you can also pick Solace if you want, if you're more comfortable with her. But for the purposes of this video, I'm going to be picking Oryx. At the start of the round, you're going to want to place your barbed wire on this yellow gin here. You're then going to make your way up yellow stairs and you're going to go reinforce the hatch in expo after you reinforce this you're immediately going to go and break the piano hatch and then you're going to want to jump up here and the another hatch that you can get rid of is the one over here in admin like in break and break this one open this will allow you to see in the visa and the jump up through visa and the main reason why i like to pick a works on this map is because there's two hatches on the third floor that you can to use to your advantage and then on top of that, there's also multiple in Visa that you could pop if you wanted to, to, you know, get a quick getaway back into the bomb site. Like, let's say the attackers are pushing the other side of the map and you're roaming up here. You just immediately drop down into server with Legion and Jaeger and just make your way back into the bomb site. Now for the third best bomb site on uh, Consulate, I recommend Piano. And the first operator you're going to want to pick is Bandit. At the start of the round, you're going to want to reinforce this yellow wall here. You're then going to make your way into the B bomb site. You're going to reinforce these two walls that go into lobby and then you're going to want to electrify them then after that you're going to want to reinforce these two walls that go into benches hall and you're going to want to electrify those as well after you've done that you're then going to roam upstairs and play above the bomb site with uh, along with another roamer because this bomb site is heavy in vertical play so the attackers are going to take up here and they are going to try to get vertical on the bomb site and they are going to try to open the blue hatch right here so you're going to want to stop that as much as you can by having at least two people play up here to slow the attackers down now after bandit i recommend frost on this bomb site and the first thing you're going to want to do is make your way into the closet put one for us mat on the window right here you're going to whip out your shotgun and put footholds across this wall after that you're then going to run over here Reinforce this wall. Then so you're gonna make the rotate between the two bomb sites. After that, you're gonna make your way upstairs and you're gonna set up a shield for your teammates to play on above the bomb site. I recommend putting it on blue once again, right here. After that, you're gonna basically set up your frost mats upstairs to kind of help your teammates that are roaming up here. Um, because having these upstairs, a lot of the attackers won't even predict that you have frost mats upstairs. So putting them up here can actually catch a lot of attackers off guard. I'm going to put one on bathroom window for the purposes of this video and one on the console window. After Frost has done that, she can then just rotate back down to the bomb site and play downstairs, or you can have her play on her shield in blue. I prefer to have my Frost in the bomb site because you're going to have plenty of operators that can roam upstairs that are three speeds that are better than her. So having Frost anchored down in the bomb site is more than likely going to be a better idea. Now to protect the other operators gadgets on this bomb site, you're going to want to pick a Jaeger and you're going to make your way into the closet. 
put one ADS on the window. Then you're going to put one ADS over here on the expo door. Then you're going to place a bulletproof camera in here in lounge. You're then going to immediately run upstairs and you're going to go and reinforce the blue hatch and put one ADS on the shield. After that, I recommend having Jaeger play on the shield in blue and then having another teammate, which I'll show you in a second, roam up here and meeting with him. And they're both going to kind of like try to shut down as much as they can of the attackers pushing up here. Now for the fourth operator on this bomb site, you're going to want to pick Finrear. And at the start of the round, you're going to make your way into lounge. You're going to reinforce the lounge walls here. For that you're going to throw one F knot on this door. Barbed wire right here. And then you're going to want to make your way up the spiral stairs, placing barbed wire on it. And then you're going to want to throw a bunch of your F knot devices upstairs. One on the yellow pillar, one on the vending door here, one up here in the meeting hall, and then one on the visa door. If you throw these down and you activate them, you and Jaeger can hold down the vert play a lot easier because you're going to know where the attackers are coming from. You're going to be able to use those dread mines to get some kills on the attackers that they're not expecting and then just not going to expect you having this much util trap wise upstairs wow. now for the final operator i'm going to recommend valk just for the added intel for the start of the round you're going to want to run upstairs and set up a valk cam uh near the hatch and near the vert play so that way you can uh potentially nitro them through the floor if they take upstairs i recommend throwing the valk cam under this bench here another good spot that you can use is throwing it into the shelving unit up here you can throw it in there and it'll give a good angle into the console office uh, vert play either one works after you throw that cam you're then going to want to run to spiral and you're going to want to throw a cam somewhere in spiral i like to throw the cam inside the vines right here this will give you an audio cam for when they're pushing into spiral and also give you a visual of the actual staircase uh, and it's going to be very hard for any attackers on the actual staircase to see it unless they're looking directly at this wall right here. If they move a little bit out before they look at the wall or look at bottom spiral, they're not going to see that Valcam. And this is a really good spot, especially to uh, give you intel on the staircase. But it can also give you audio on the teller's hallway right there. And it can also give you audio on the benches hall as well. After throwing that Valcam, I then recommend going into lounge and throwing a Valcam in here somewhere. My favorite spot is probably just up here in this corner near that plant. This will be very hard for the attackers to see because if they move under the Valcam, they have to look directly up to see it and this plant kind of blocks it otherwise. So the only way they're going to be able to see it is if they move either extremely far out or if they move extremely close. And after you throw those three cams, you're then just going to play in the bomb site. So that way you can take advantage of that intel to potentially nitro people from below. Now, for arguably the worst bomb site on this map, we have tellers and server. But this bomb site still isn't that awful. It can still be played and it's not terrible, but I wouldn't recommend it if you're just, you know, playing ranked normally without any, you know, without a five stack or anything. But at the start of the round, you're going to want to pick mute and you're going to make your way downstairs so that way you can start setting up the downstairs with your shotgun. First thing you're going to want to do is make a rotate right here into storage. And you're then going to reinforce this single wall here. I'd also recommend jamming it. After that, you're then going to want to throw one mute jammer down on the locker's door here. And you're then going to make head holes across the storage wall here. You're going to reinforce the middle wall. After that, I'd recommend making your way over into dirt and getting this single wall. After that, you're going to jam the wall and the drone hole. And then after you do that, you're going to make your way down the stairs and just shotgun out the electrical, uh, the electrical wall there. This will give you an angle on the attackers if they try to push that. And it's just overall better, in my opinion, than wasting a reinforcement on this wall. After that, Mute is pretty much free to do whatever he wants. I recommend having Mute play downstairs in server so that way if they walk down the stairs, you can pop them with the shotgun through the head holes. And also because the downstairs is in more close quarters than the upstairs, arguably. So you can play in here in con and kind of wait for them to push into con and swing with your SMG 11 or move up close with your shotgun and swing. There's just so many angles downstairs that are going to be in your favor if you play down here with mute. So that's why I recommend playing him down here. Now for the next operator on tellers, I recommend picking a anti-breach like Haid. And at the start of the round, you're going to want to reinforce the lounge wall here. Then you're going to want to electric plot. You're going to reinforce the two service stairs walls. 
after that you can then use your last electric claw on kind of whatever you want i recommend either putting it on the, the storage wall with the mew jammer or going and throwing it on the dirt wall with the mew jammer because that'll mean they'll have to use two emps to get the wall open if they want and also with this mute chamber being here it'll shut down any drones that try to come in here and shoot your electric law after you've done that kaid is pretty much free to go wherever i like to have my kaid play downstairs along with the mute and have both of them anchored down in the bomb site because kaid can actually take advantage of this super long hallway here and take gunfights on anyone coming down spiral anyone coming from garage whereas mute can take advantage of the closer range gunfights over by dirt and over by con now, as you're noticing, I'm sure there's a pattern, but for the next operator, you're gonna wanna pick a uh, nade denial operator of some sort. For that, I'm gonna be picking Jaeger. At the start of the round, you're gonna wanna run over and get your two reinforcements in, which is gonna be on the lockers hall walls here. Then you're gonna run over to coffee and put your uh, the bulletproof cam right here at the end of the hallway near the coffee door. Then you're gonna put 180S over here on the coffee doorway here. And then you're gonna put two ADSs on dirt. Now, the reason for this is because a lot of the times the attackers will go for dirt and then they're going to try to nade the guy playing on the head holes like Mute. So if Mute's playing close or if he's playing far back, they're going to try to nade him or throw Ying Candelas or smoke off the head holes so that way they can push in. And if you put some ADSs there, this is going to make it hard for them to deal with you because they're going to have to either swing the, the uh, ADSs and then risk you getting shotgunned in the face by the Mute or they're going to have to swing the Mute and uh, try to take that gunfight on him which either one is kind of at a disadvantage because Mute is going to have a shotgun in a close range gunfight. But after that, you're then going to want to make your way upstairs with Jaeger and you're going to want to roam upstairs with your teammates. Uh, I recommend using your last reinforcement on one of these two hatches. I prefer reinforcing this one because it matters the most, in my opinion. Then after that, you're going to roam on the top floor with Jaeger. I recommend having him upstairs in break room along with a uh, another teammate that's going to roam up here and you want to impact the uh, visa hatch in break over here. It's uh, right here. You have a teammate impact that and you're just going to have this open because the attackers are going to be in fear of going into visa if this hatch is open. So you're going to want to have one person impact this hatch and play in here and then one person kind of play nearby to assist that teammate so that way if they start getting flanked or pushed from you know backside or from spiral or whatever you can at least help them out now for the fourth operator i recommend picking smoke because he has a shotgun and he can help set up the upstairs bomb site as well as he has the canisters in hand that'll help him hold the uh upstairs bomb site so what you're going to want to do at the start of the round is make your way upstairs and immediately start making vert holes and tellers Make them above a lot of the default plant spots and default places to hold. Now, the reason why you're going to want to do this is because you're going to have the two teammates roaming upstairs. And so they're going to be able to shut down most of the plant spots here. And then after that, you're going to run into Visa and you're going to pop this hatch. Then you're going to want to place your barbed wire, place one on the service stairs here and then one on the hallway going into lobby here. And then Smoke is literally just going to play in this bomb site for as long as possible. If they start pushing him heavily in the hallway, he can smoke it off. And if they start pushing him heavy visa, he can also smoke that off as well. Now for the final operator, I wholeheartedly recommend picking Solace. And this is because of the fact that she can see the plant getting placed on her gadget. And the reason why this is important is because why, while Solace is playing upstairs, if she sees they're going for a plant in the bomb site on her gadget, she can go up to the vert holes that smoke made for her and kill the planter through the, the floor. Additionally, she can also use her gadget to see if the attackers are droning her and Jaeger out, and she can go ahead and deal with those drones accordingly and be able to call out to Jaeger like, hey, they're pushing console side because she sees a drone. And so her and Jaeger can adapt and get ready for the attackers to start pushing over there. But that is going to be wrapping up consulate. I'm not going to be moving on to the next map. Now for the first bomb site on Emerald Plains, I recommend going CEO admin. And for the first operator, I recommend picking Frost. At the start of the round, you're going to want to place your deployable shield down next to the bomb. You're then going to want to place a Frost mat under the site window. One under the orange hole. And then I recommend ratting one of your Frost mats somewhere in the bomb site, like maybe behind one of these half walls or something like that, like maybe right here. Attackers will fall for this frost mat a lot more often than you'd think, but if you want to have an easier job hiding it, I'd recommend hiding it like right up against the wall here. That way when they walk in, 
you know, their ADS, they're walking and swinging into the bomb site, and boom, right into a frost map. After that, you're then going to want to go ahead and set up the rotates between the two bomb sites, which are going to reinforce this right wall here. They're going to make head holes across the wall, or I mean, a, a, a vaultable rotate on the wall right here. And then you're going to make your way into the meeting room, and you're going to put head holes across this wall and reinforce the left wall. And then you're going to barricade this window. After that, there isn't really much else for Frost to set up. Jesus, we're just going to play in the bomb site behind her shield. Take advantage of this power position to swing out to people on the uh, art door over there. Swing out to people on the site window and to, you know, deal with anyone pushing orange hall. Now for the second operator on this bomb site, I recommend picking Kaid. And at the start of the round, you're going to reinforce this green hall triple wall. Then you're going to want to throw an electric claw on the wall. And then you're going to reinforce this outside single wall. And this is where your defense is going to vary slightly. It depends on like you can either throw your last electric claw on this wall to deal with the outside wall, or you can throw your other electric claw on this art wall here. I personally am more of a fan of throwing it on the art wall just because I feel like this outside wall is extremely useless for the attackers because all they get control of when they open this wall is this small little room. And you can easily deal with anyone playing on this breach by running out on them from the two uh, windows on the, the balcony. They're, they're, this is a very dangerous position to play for the attackers. And you can easily win gunfights on anyone who tries to push this. So overall, I don't think it's that important. I'd rather uh, use my electrical on this art wall, which speaking of which, the final thing Kaid has to do is reinforce these two walls here and electrify them. After that, Kaid's pretty much just going to play inside of meeting and hold off the attackers from pushing in through art and to kind of help Frost hold down the bomb site. You know, he can swing the uh, rotate if he wants if they start pushing this bomb site here. And he can also get ready with his nitro cell to nitro anyone that goes for a plan on the default. Now for your next operator, I recommend picking Jaeger. And at the start of the round, you're going to want to put one ADS on this doorway into admin. You're going to put two ADSs under the site window to protect your shield player. After that, I recommend putting your bulletproof cam somewhere in the bomb site. That way you can get a warning of where the attackers are going for a plant. This bulletproof cam right here is good. It'll give you audio on any of the attackers that push in, go for a plant. It'll also let you know if anyone pushes in through the uh, hunting door here. After that, I then recommend have Jaeger just roam somewhere off site. Uh, library is a good spot to roam off site, but pretty much anywhere off site is fine. Just have, have Jaeger play off site to kind of uh, slow the attackers and have him move to where the attackers are pushing. If your teammate calls that they're not pushing uh, the library at all and they're pushing green hall, then you can move up and get aggressive on that. Or if you get a, the call out that they're pushing orange, you can rotate over the orange. Now, a really good operator for this bomb site is a zombie, which is why I think she should be your fourth pick. And what you're going to want to do at the start of the round is run over and place your first Kiba right here on this window. This Kiba is going to be extremely strong if you decide to use it because mainly it blocks off the attackers from looking into the bomb site and it allows you to jump up on it and look into library and get aggressive. So this is a really good Kiba. It also gives you a slight pixel peek into it as well. But this is, uh, this is not a very good pixel peek to be honest because you're not going to be seeing very much. But jumping up on this is a really strong position because they're going to think that they're clear. And if you get the call out that there's someone over there, just vault up and shoot them. Your other Kibas can kind of just go wherever you feel like they should go throughout the round. One good spot is right here on this uh, doorway because now you have a head glitch on this doorway into hunting that the attackers can't really do anything about because they're not going to be able to see you no matter how hard they try. If I run all the way to the back of hunting and I crouch, I can still barely see the top of that half wall. And if you move up closer, you're going to have a harder time seeing it. So an Azami playing behind this is going to have a really easy time killing any attackers that push into hunting. Then some other Kibas that you can place around is like one on this doorway. This is a good Kiba because it's going to slow the attackers and force them to melee this. And then the other Kibas that you can place are just kind of however you're feeling or uh, wherever you want to place them. I don't really have any other um, significant spots for Azama, Azami, but trust me, this is going to be a good bomb site to pick her on. You're going to want to pick her when you can. Now for the fifth and final operator, I recommend picking Mozzie. And what you're going to want to do at the start of the round is make your way over into art. I recommend putting one pest on the top of the orange stairs, one pest on the storage door here. And then I recommend getting both of the vault walls. 
Now your last pest can kind of, you know, go wherever. I recommend putting it on this library door here. And what Mozzie's gonna do for the entire round is just set up inside of uh, Art and kind of slow the push into Art. If the attackers start pushing over here, he can call it out to his team. But these pests are gonna protect him from getting droned too heavily. And his 1.5 on the P10 Roni is gonna give him a pretty decent chance of winning the gunfights that he gets involved in. Now, a strat I really like it running with my stack is the meeting art strat that we came up with, and I'm gonna be showing you that right now. The first opera you're gonna to wanna to pick is Castle. You're gonna to wanna to make your way over to the meeting wall, make a rotate here. And you're gonna to wanna to put footholds across this wall here and reinforce the left wall here. After that, you're gonna just gonna focus on placing your castle barricades. I'd recommend putting one right here on the statue window, one on the top orange window here, one over here on the meeting window looking into the library. Now your final castle can kind of just go wherever you want. A good spot that I like to place it on is just right here on the admin door because it's going to force some, them to use some in, uh, util to get into this hallway. Then for your two beepers, put one on the CEO uh, window there and then one on the orange stairs. After that, Castle's just going to set up in the bomb site and uh, play with his team. Now for the other operator on this bomb site, you're going to want to pick someone with a deployable shield and a decent gadget. So for that, I'm going to be picking Warden. And you're going to want to walk over here into meeting and place the shield right here near where the footholds are at. This is an extremely important shield. You need to have this here for this site setup to even work. Because if you don't put it here, you're not going to be able to hold meeting very effectively. After you put that shield down, you're then going to run over here and reinforce these two admin walls. And then you're going to make your way over to library and you reinforce this library single wall. After Warden reinforces that, you're then going to have him go over here and reinforce the vault double wall. And that should about wrap up everything uh, Warden has to do. After that, I'd recommend having him just go back into meeting and play behind his deployable shield. You're going to want to play here for as long as possible because the attackers will most likely try to get that wall open. And when they get that wall open and your shield's here, you're going to have a much easier time holding down the bomb site. You can swing them and just basically completely shut down any plant from getting down here. Now for the next operator, you're going to want to pick Kaid. At the start of the round, you're going to walk your way over to the orange hall wall, ignore these footholds, and you're going to want to reinforce this wall. The reason why those footholds were there is because I was experimenting to see what kind of angles it would open up, but it's better to just reinforce this wall outright. And after you reinforce this wall, you're then going to make your way over to the uh, main vault wall here, and you're going to electric claw it off. And then you're also going to electric claw the admin wall over here. Now, after you electric claw that, I recommend reinforcing this wall and then walking over here and reinforcing this left wall. After that, you need to make a vaultable rotate into vault. And then for Kaid, throughout the round, you're just going to have him play on the bomb site somewhere. You can have him play either in art or you can have him play near the bomb site, like over here in Orange Hall, to try to, you know, delay the attackers from pushing up Orange. This is a really good position for the TCSG with the two times. But realistically, anywhere near or on the bomb site will work. Now, because this bomb site is very similar to admin, Azami is another really strong operator on this bomb site. What you want to do at the start of the round is just focus on placing your couple keepers down and setting up the bomb site with your team. You can use your impacts to make the rotate for your teammates so they don't have to shotgun them. Uh, and just try to help your team get some of those reinforcements down that I showed off earlier in the video. But throughout the round, you're also going to be placing these Kivas to help the uh, painting bomb site be a little bit easier to defend. You're going to want to place Kivas on these soft walls here to make them actually bulletproof so you can hide behind them without worrying about getting uh, pre-fired. And specifically this one and this one right here is extremely important. Because if you don't Kiba these two off, this one will allow them to just kill you from the window if they get on the window. And if you don't have this one, it'll allow them to just pre-fire you from storage and just kill you as soon as you try to come through the uh, rotate or through the doorway. So having these two keep it off is extremely important. You can also throw additional Kibas in here on the actual bomb site for you to play behind. And you can also throw Kibas in here to give you additional cover if the attackers get the wall up. And like you can break this chair here and throw a Kiba here. And this will allow you to play behind the bomb and behind the table here. We're having to worry about dying as quickly to someone on the breach. But you can experiment the Kibas yourself. I just recommend picking a zombie strictly for these two Kibas because of how strong they are. Now, another extremely important operator for this bomb site is Jaeger. And that's strictly for the fact that you have a deployable shield right there. So at the start of the round, you're going to want to make your way over to this pillar right here. And you're going to place two ADSs down. 
Now, there are footholds here, but this will but the attackers will be forced to actually swing out onto the footholds to shoot your ADSs. And if they do that, your player on the orange hall will be able to kill them pretty easily. Now, your last ADS is going to go over here on the storage door. This will stop the attackers from using an ash round or something to clear your keep off that wall or to use another, you know, zo charge or something to get that open. It'll also just shut down any sort of smokes they want to go for. Then for your bulletproof camera, I recommend running into the bomb site and placing it right here on like this wall. This will give you a clear uh, indication of where the attackers are of when the attackers are actually going for an execute through storage into painting. And it'll also let you know if the attackers make it into the breach. This is overall pretty decent bulletproof camera, but you can realistically put it in anywhere. After that, Jaeger's free to do pretty much anything. He can help his teammates uh, reinforce some of the walls. He can go uh, roam off site. It doesn't really matter. But I recommend positioning Jaeger somewhere on the library side of the map or having him roam somewhere. Uh, it's up to you where where you want him to roam, but I would recommend having Jaeger just roam somewhere. Now for the third bomb site, I recommend going kitchen. And the first operator you're gonna want to pick is Kaid, hands down, because he is by far the most important operator for this bomb site. For the southern round, you're gonna want to make your way over to the dining wall right here and make a rotate in it. You can make this vaultable or walkable depending on your preference. I'm just gonna make it walkable because I plan on putting a shield there. And then you're gonna put two reinforcements right here on this wall and you're gonna electrify the wall. After you get both of the pantry walls, you're then gonna make your way over to the fountain walls here, and you're gonna reinforce these two. Then you're gonna throw an electric claw on that wall as well. After that, you're gonna make the site rotate, and then that's about it. Common takes for this bomb site are going to be from uh, fireplace getting this wall, getting the main wall here, or going to orange and getting that wall, which all three of those takes are gonna be prevented by this site setup that I'm gonna be showing you. Now after Kaid, you're going to want Jaeger on this bomb site, and at the start of the round, you're going to make your way over to the pantry window, and you're going to place one ADS down right here. This will protect the shield and stop anyone from throwing anything through the window. Then after that, you're going to make your way over to the orange wall here, and you're going to reinforce both of those walls. Then you're going to place one ADS here, and one ADS on the fountain door. After that, I recommend putting your bulletproof camera somewhere in the bomb site, like maybe up here. This will give you a line of sight into fountain and let you know uh, if the attackers actually walk in and allow your teammates to call that out. It also allows you to call out if they walk into the pantry door as well, which most of the time, if they're walking through the pantry door, you've already lost the round, but at least give you some comms on the people walking the fountain. After you set all that up, I'd recommend having Jaeger go roam upstairs. And the reason why I say that is because there's a lot of vert play on kitchen. And so you're going to want to shut that down by having a, an operator roam up here so that they can't play vertical inside of ceramic and so they also can't you know take the fireplace wall because if you play up here as well you can also shut down them opening the fireplace wall now for the third operator i recommend picking i recommend picking any operator with a shield and a shotgun which the only operator right now that i can think of off the top of my head that is a good operator for that task is going to be frost so at the start of the round you're going to want to run over here on dining reinforce this wall and if Kaid has already made this rotate, you can just let him make the rotate and reinforce this wall here. But if he hasn't made the rotate yet, you can go ahead and chalk him out the rotate. Then you're gonna wanna place your shield next to the pantry cabinet here. As for her frost mats, I recommend putting one on the pantry window. One over here in fountain on the actual fountain itself. And then the last frost mat can kind of go wherever you want. Just anywhere on the map is fine. I'm going to be putting it on the bottom orange uh, window right here. After you set up your frost mats, you're then free to play pretty much anywhere in the bomb site and along with Kaid. And you guys are just going to hold down the bomb site uh, like demons. I recommend putting uh, frost behind the deployable shield and having her take advantage of her automatic primary, the 1.5. And then as soon as the shield gets cleared, you're just going to fall back onto this reinforced wall and you can just kind of like delay anyone from pushing in through the breach. Now for the fourth operator, I recommend picking Solace. And at the start of the round, you're just going to immediately go upstairs. And while you're going upstairs, you're going to be hunting for as many drones as possible, you know, shooting them as they come into the map. And then as you make it upstairs, you're going to reinforce the art hatch. After you get this hatch, you're then just going to play upstairs with Jaeger and you're going to try to delay the attackers from getting the vertical play control. You're just going to do this by using your gadget to find drones, shooting them as soon as they come into the building. And then just 
just holding this as long as possible if you start feeling the pressure don't feel scared to fall back just fall back and conserve your life and just waste as much time as possible now for the final operator on the kitchen bomb site i recommend picking valk and at the start of the round you're going to run your way over into fountain and i recommend throwing a cam somewhere in fountain a good spot for a cam in fountain is up in this corner this will allow you to see the jump up on fountain the door in the fountain and the bar door and a lot of times the attackers won't even notice this cam is there because of how dark of an area it's in until you obviously get on it and it reveals this blue light but overall this is a really good valve cam spot another good cam you can throw is upstairs which i'll show you in a second if you run over here and throw a cam right here on this pillar this will allow you to see into the vert holes and you can ping any attackers that go onto the vert holes and you can see the library stairs you can see bottom fireplace you can pretty much call out anything you could possibly want from this camera you can also see the uh hunting door over there the hunting window there's just so much that this allows you to see that it's definitely a really strong valve cam and then the last one i recommend throwing is that it is one somewhere on the orange side of the map so like maybe on the orange stairs somewhere and a good cam that you can throw is right here on this light the light kind of hides the valve cam and if you throw it properly it'll kind of blend in with the light fixture here and you can use it to your advantage to see anyone moving up on the orange breach anyone on the window and anyone who comes down the stairs but outside of that valk's just gonna play in the bomb site with her nitro cell and decent gun and she's gonna use the camera intel that she gets to just nitro anyone that tries to play vertically on the bomb site now for the final bomb site bar lounge which is arguably the worst bomb site on this map i'm going to be showing you a strategy that me and my five stack use that is honestly really fun it can be viable and it actually has won me a decent amount of rounds, but I wouldn't recommend going this site over the other three sites I've already talked about. For the first operator, you're gonna wanna pick castle and at the start of the round, you're gonna make your way over to lounge. You're gonna shotgun the head holes across this wall and this wall. Then you're gonna reinforce both walls here. Throw a beeper right above the wall. And then you're gonna place a castle barricade here. A castle barricade on this door, along with a beeper in this room. Then you're gonna put one castle barricade on the stock door here and then your last castle barricade is gonna go in fountain it's gonna go right here on this door now after you set that up i recommend have castle play behind the bar in the bar bomb site and just kind of swing out through the head holes on anyone that walks into bottom green or to anyone that walks in through the breach now since there's an outside wall on this bomb site the second operator you're gonna want to pick is obviously going to be an anti-breach of some sort and for that i'm going to be picking kai at the start of the round you're going to make your way over to the gaming uh wall right here and you're going to reinforce it then you're going to electric claw this wall off and you're going to make your way over to bar and you're going to reinforce these two walls here and then you're going to want to throw an electric claw right there that way you can get the hatch and this wall then after Kaid sets this up, you're then gonna have Kaid just play in the bomb site near bar and just have him set up in here and hold off any uh push from the attackers on any part of the bomb site. If they go for this wall, you're gonna be in a little bit of a tough spot, but that's why I'm gonna be having you pick mute to kind of mute jam these walls off to at least slow them down. And speaking of mute, the next hopper you're gonna want to pick is mute. And what you're gonna want to do is reinforce this lounge wall here. And you're gonna jam the wall off, like I said. After you jam the wall off, you're then gonna wanna walk over here and place a jam on this half wall to protect the deployable shield that's gonna be placed over here. Then you're gonna place your last mute jam over here on the stock door. After that, I then recommend having mute play behind the deployable shield that is placed over here on green because it's SMB 11. Well, I'm gonna take the gunfights over here. And if they start pushing him heavily, he can also switch out to the shotgun and take any gunfights. Now for the final operator on this bomb site, I recommend picking one my. What you're gonna wanna do at the start of the round is throw one magnet right on the back of the pool table. So that way they can't get the castle barricade. Then you're gonna walk all the way upstairs and you're gonna go get the hatch above the bomb site. After you get this hatch, you're then gonna run all the way back down to green. And this is gonna be where you play for the rest of the round. You're gonna set up right here, throw uh, magnets right here on the bottom green to protect your guy playing on the corner right there and you're just going to get aggressive and active on anyone who tries to push top green or anyone who tries to push your shield player 
and you can use your magnets to protect yourself if you notice that people are pushing up pretty heavily you can just start throwing magnets on like the chandelier for example and try to hold them off as best as you can now for the final operator you're going to want to pick someone with a deployable shield like i've been mentioning a hundred times about the side setup and the first thing you're going to do is run out to bottom green and you're going to place your shield right here then you're going to want to set up one thorn gadget right about here then you're going to want to throw one your last two thorn gadgets inside of uh fountain over here you're gonna want to throw one right here on the kitchen door and you're gonna throw one right here in between the two back entrance uh doors right here this will let you know if anyone starts pushing over here and because of the fact that you cast a barricade that door you're not gonna have to worry about that and what you're gonna want to do is just vault up on this with thorin and just watch for any of the attackers pushing in and you're just gonna listen for the audio cue and as soon as you hear the audio cue of your thorn gadget going off you're gonna peek up and swing if they start pushing the uh staircase here that'll be something to worry about but most of the time the attackers don't actually push the uh fountain side they're most of the time worried about green and lounge but if they do end up pushing your fountain stairs then you're gonna have to rotate or try to get back to the bomb site safely now for the next map we have cafe and for the first bomb site you're gonna want to go bar cocktail and for the first operator on this bomb site, you're going to want to pick Valkyrie. And at the start of the round, you're going to want to make your way into Freezer. Reinforce these two walls. Then you're going to walk over to New Valk over here. Throw a cam under this table. Then you're going to make your way into Stage. Throw a cam behind the Christmas tree here. And then your last camera can go on White Stairs. After you set these cams up, you're then going to want to run downstairs and place a pre-placed nitro under New Balk right here. Then you're going to use your camera on New Balk to give you intel on when they push into New Balk. You're going to ping them and then immediately you're going to blow that nitro. This nitro right here will kill any attacker that drops into New Balk and tries to hide behind the pillar and you'll be able to get a free kill off of that. This is a pretty expected pre-placed nitro though. So a lot of people will repel up onto the pillar window and just shoot it off, but it's still worth a try nonetheless. Uh, after you set up that pre-placed nitro, then throughout the round, you're just gonna be playing below the bomb site, roaming in kind of like the fireplace mining train area, potentially going over to reading if they start pushing hell or something. Or you're basically just gonna be holding down the first floor with Val. Now for the second operator on this bomb site, you're gonna wanna pick Frost because of her shotgun and her shield available. At the start of the round, you're gonna immediately shotgun out the bar right here you're then gonna go over here to cocktail and you're gonna make the cocktail rotate then you're gonna make the head holes across the top of the cocktail wall and you're gonna make the freezer rotate after you make that then make the bathroom rotate the bathroom head holes and you're gonna make the foot holes in lounge after you set all that up you're then gonna put your shield down and you're free to put your frost mats wherever you'd like. I like to put one over here on the red wall because a lot of the times they bring Ace to get this wall open and they won't notice that there's a frost mat there. Then I want to put one on the default plant right here and one on the heaven window to prevent an Amaru rush. After you've done all that, Frost is basically just going to play in the bomb site in the back of Cocktail and use her 1.5 to uh, swing on anyone pushing Cigar Shop. And she can just hold these uh, these holes in the rotates. And she can also swing out on anyone pushing into New Bow. Now, on top of Frost, you're also going to want to bring a Wamai on this bomb site. And at the start of the round, you're going to want to impact the default plant spot right here. And then you're going to make your way over to Bathroom and you're going to reinforce this wall right here, the right wall. Then you're going to reinforce the two freezer walls here. After you do that, you're then going to set up behind the shield with your magnets. And throughout the round, you're just going to be playing behind this, peeking up occasionally to swing anyone who tries to repel in. And you're just going to use your magnets that you get throughout the round to protect your own shield from getting naded or destroyed by ash charges. Now, the next operator you're going to want to bring is smoke. And at the start of the round, you're going to make your way over to the cocktail walls here and reinforce these two walls or this wall not not these two walls just this wall sitting the singular wall here and then you're gonna want to put one set of barbed wire on white stairs right here and then you're gonna want to put one set of barb in cs right here on the red door after you set all of that up smoke is pretty much free to do whatever he wants to be honest i like to have my smoke 
play over here in bathroom so that way he can you know swing the head holes and throw smokes out to help protect wamai and so that way he can also you know take some extra gunfights and try to assist wamai as much as he can and also if they push new Balk, he can also throw his smoke grenades through the bathroom rotate to smoke off new Balk. also if you want to help your teammates get rotates or head holes with smoke during the prep phase you can do that as well but the only wall he really needs to reinforce is that one because the uh, last operator that i'll be showing you will deal with the red wall. Now for the final operator on this bomb site, I recommend picking a bandit or a Kaid. And at the start of the round, you're gonna run over into lounge. You're gonna get the red wall and you're gonna electrify it. After you do that, you're then gonna make your way over into freezer and you're gonna electrify these two walls. After you do that, then bandit's just gonna go roam downstairs with Valve to uh, protect, you know, from a white stairs rush and also take advantage of the intel that the Valk cams are gonna give you to nitro people through the floor. Now for the second best bomb site, or arguably this could even be the best bomb site, depending on who you ask, we have kitchen. And for the first operator you're gonna wanna pick on this bomb site, I recommend castle. At the start of the round, you're gonna make your way over to the whiskey double door here, castle it off. You're then gonna make a rotate, a crouchable rotate. And you're gonna put a beeper right on that shelf. Then you're going to castle off small bake window. You're going to make a rotate here. You're going to castle this door off and you're going to reinforce this wall. Now your last castle barricade can go one of two places. You can either put it on the coat check window, which is a pretty good idea, or you can put it on the top red window to protect your player on red stairs. I recommend putting it on coat check window just because it'll force them into that uh, rotate hole that you made. And then you can just throw a beeper on that door right there to let you know well i just missed it but you get the idea you throw a beeper right here on this door i don't even know where it went where did that oh it landed all the way out here sheesh yeah you're gonna want to throw it like right here to give you like some intel on if they push into this room then castle this off and then throughout the round castle just gonna be playing on red and getting aggressive on the head holes that you're gonna make in the in the bomb site and to just kind of like hold off anyone from vaulting into small bake now after castle the next operator you're gonna to want to bring is kaid and you're gonna make your way over to prep make the footholds across the wall you're then gonna reinforce the bake wall here you're gonna throw an electric claw on it you're gonna reinforce the prep single wall here and then you're gonna throw a kaid electric claw right here to get the small bake wall that castle will reinforce after that Kai is then going to go back into the bomb site, and I recommend having him play right here near the A bomb. So that way he can swing and get aggressive off the uh, prep footholes with his two times TCSG. Now, the next operator you're going to want to bring to the table after Kaid is Bandit. And once you pick him, you're going to make your way over to Freezer. You're going to reinforce these two walls here, and you're going to electrify it. You're then going to make your way over to Prep Wall, and you're going to place one Bandit battery on this wall. Then after that, you're gonna run over to red wall and reinforce this left wall here. And you're gonna reinforce this middle kitchen wall here. After that, that's about it. Bandit's then gonna be free to do whatever he wants, which for me, I like to have my bandit roam somewhere near white side. You can either have him play on the actual white stairs or you can have him just roam somewhere in the general area, like maybe in uh, Christmas or over on the uh, dining right here. Doesn't really matter. Just have Bandit roam somewhere on this side of the map to kind of slow a take from coming over here. Now, the fourth operator on this bomb site that I recommend is Frost. And at the start of the round, you're just going to immediately come over to the prep window here and you're going to place your deployable shield down. Yeah, I kind of placed it a little wrong. You want to get it kind of closer to the window and a little bit more to the right like this. But the reason why the shield is so strong is because it allows you to play safely on the prep window and it's going to make it a lot harder for the attackers to push prep without clearing the shield. Then after placing that shield down, you're going to make your way over to small bake. You're going to place your frost mat right here. You're going to shotgun the head holes under this wall. Put a frost mat down on the coat check window just in case that they breach it with a castle. And okay, just in case they breach the castle barricade is what I meant. And then your last frost mat can kind of go in a multitude of different places, but I'm going to be placing mine right here next to the dining door. And after you do that, then I recommend having Frost play over here in the back of the kitchen bomb site. Just so if it just in case if they push the uh, freezer wall, you have someone playing here and ready for that kind of a push. 
Now the next operator I recommend picking is Wamai. And at the start of the round, you're gonna make your way all the way up stairs and you're gonna get the freezer hatch. After you get this hatch, you're then gonna make your way back downstairs. And hopefully by this point, your team has set up most of the bomb site. And as you make it back down here, you're gonna go through the rotate and you're gonna set up behind the bakery counter and use your Omai magnets to protect yourself from getting naded from all these different angles. I also recommend throwing one out here to pr protect the castle barricade that castle puts here. You can put one on the small bake window. And then at, throughout the round, you're just gonna keep throwing magnets in this room to protect yourself. If you notice that they're not pushing over here and your team needs help on a different part of the map, you can either impact this castle barricade and you know have an angle to swing out onto whiskey or you can just go back into the bomb site through prep. Now for the third best bomb site, we have reading. And for the first operator you're gonna to wanna to pick on this bomb site, you're gonna to wanna to pick Mira. And then you're gonna make your way upstairs to cocktail. On your way there, you're going to make head holes across this wall. You're gonna place a reinforcement right here. And you're gonna place a mirror window right here. After that, you're gonna place one reinforcement here. And one reinforcement here. You're gonna place a second mirror window down. Then you're gonna shotgun this out this out and this bathroom wall out here i'd also recommend shotgunning out this bar to the best of your ability and shotgunning out the default bar here after you set that up then throughout the round mirror is just going to play behind these mirror windows that she has set up in the uh upstairs part of the map and Throughout the round, you're just going to sit up here and hold them off from playing vertically above reading. You're also going to make, vert, if you notice that they're not pushing you, you're going to want to start making vert holes into the bomb site and opening like laundry hats so that way you can rotate back if things get uh, messy. But for the most part, you're just going to be playing on your mirror windows, swinging people to try to push cigar or into bar. To help support Mira on the upstairs hold, you're going to want to bring a castle. Then at the start of the round, you're going to want to throw peepers on the hell door along with a castle barricade right there you're then going to make the laundry rotate and then you're going to make your way upstairs shotgunning the top of this wall into cafeteria or into uh dining i mean on your way up you're then going to place one castle barricade here one on the middle of the door here and then the last one on white stairs after you do all this i'd recommend throwing a beeper on the bottom white stairs here into the basement and then you're just going to play upstairs with mira throughout the round you're going to play on the other window that she's not playing on so if she chooses to play on the the freezer one you'll play right here on the other one and throughout the round since you also have a shotgun you're going to be making vert holes into the bomb site to uh get ready for the attackers to push below now to go along with the castle on the mirror you're going to want to bring a kaid and at the start of the round you're going to make your way over to the reading wall here then you're going to electric claw this wall. Then you're going to put full holes across the reading hall wall here. And you're going to reinforce the right wall. Then after that, you're also going to put full holes across this wall. And you're going to reinforce this wall here. And after you reinforce this wall here, you're then going to throw your last electric claw upstairs on the freezer wall here to protect the mirror window. After you do that, Kai is then going to play actually inside the bomb site. He's going to be one of the few operators that's actually going to be set up inside the bomb site and uh, just, just to prepare for the attackers pushing into the bomb site. Now to help support your Kaid and your castle and your Mira, you're going to want to bring a Jaeger. At the start of the round, you're going to walk over here to uh, reading near Hell Door. You're going to put one ADS here. You're also going to walk into Pillar and you're going to put a bulletproof cam near Hell Door. Then you're going to run upstairs and put your last two ADSs upstairs to protect your mirror on the mirror windows. You can put one ADS behind this bar here. Then your other ADS is going to go right here on the bar on this side. Then after you set up those uh, ADSs, you're then going to run back downstairs and you're going to reinforce these two walls in mining. And then Jaeger's just going to set up inside of train and hold off any push into train. Him and Kaid are going to be the two operators that play downstairs while Mira and Castle are holding down the upstairs. Now for the final operator on this bomb site, I recommend bringing a frost just to shut down any potential rushes. At the start of the round, you're gonna to wanna to run over here and reinforce this laundry wall. You're then going to run over to the dining room and you're gonna place one right here. Then you're gonna make your way upstairs. You're gonna place one frost mat on the heaven window. 
Then you're gonna jump back downstairs and you're gonna place a frost mat on the mining window here. After you place that frost mat, you're then gonna make your way back into the reading bomb site and you're gonna place a deployable shield right here for your Kaid player to play on. Then after you set that up, you're then just gonna play on white stairs right here to kind of support everyone because you're gonna prevent a rush up white. You're gonna be helping the people on the bomb site because you could just rotate here if you need to. And if your uh, teammates upstairs are getting pushed heavily, you can run up white stairs and help support them. Now, if you unfortunately find yourself on the mining bomb site, well, you made a pretty big mistake because this is one of the worst bomb sites in the game. But if you have to defend it, the best way to do that is to bring a mirror, reinforce this wall, place a mirror window, then put holes above so you can throw nitros, then shotgun the top of this wall here. So you can see into red and then shotgun this here so you can see bottom red and then what this mirror window is going to allow you to do is if you see anyone coming up red or down red you just swing them and pick up a free frag on them on top of that you're also going to reinforce this wall here with mirror then after you place this mirror window your last mirror window can kind of go wherever you feel like it because i'll be honest you only really want this mirror window here this is the most important part of the site setup you don't really need the second one you can either do the, the mirror window setup that I showed you on reading. You can just do that same thing again, but it's going to be a little less valuable because of the fact that uh, they don't really need to attack you over there. If they just ignore you and they just push first floor or second floor, they can kind of just avoid that mirror setup entirely. So I don't really like running it on this bomb site, but you can get away with it. Outside of that, I just leave the mirror window in pocket, to be honest. I, I don't even think it's that important to have a, a second one down because this one's the only one that matters now after mira you're going to want to bring a kaid and at the start of the round you're going to run over to bottom red you're going to reinforce these three walls here and after you get these three walls reinforced you're then going to make your way over to the mining hatch and hopefully your teammate has gotten it you're going to throw your kaid electric law right here and train to get that hatch then you're going to run over to fireplace or dining and reinforce these walls here and you're going to electroclaw them. After that, I then recommend having your Kaid player play over here in reading and just set up ready for a hell push. And you can just play here, wait for them to come hell or to cut off the rush onto white. Now to help support your mirror, you're gonna wanna bring Jaeger so that way she doesn't get naded. At the start of the round, you're gonna run over here, place one ADS near the mirror window here. Then you're gonna place one under the site window. You're gonna vault up on this. Place your BP here. And then you're gonna place another ADS over here in reading to protect your Kaid. And you're also going to reinforce the reading walls here. Now, after you do that, I recommend having Jaeger roam upstairs to protect from vert play. Him and your next operator that you're gonna be picking are just gonna roam upstairs to kind of slow down the, the push up here. Because if they get this hatch, they're gonna be pretty much screwed and especially with the a lot the huge amount of vert play here they can play vertically above your mirror window and once they get control of this mirror window and the hatch this bomb site is pretty easy for them to take so you need to be holding this effectively as possible now the next operator you're going to want to bring on this bomb site is frost simply for the fact that Imara rushes are a thing so at the start of the round you're going to want to make your way over to the fireplace room right here and you're going to want to put a frost mat on this window and then you're going to put a frost mat on the mining window here and on the red window after you set that up you're then gonna move your way over into reading and you're gonna plop a deployable shield down in the corner right here for your kaid to play off of after you plop your shield down then frost is pretty much free to play wherever i like to have her play in here in train with uh mira to help her out but you can also have your frost player play on like white for example to help your roamers and to help your Kaid make for sure he doesn't get flanked and stuff. Now for the final operator on this bomb site, I'm gonna be picking Legion simply for the fact that he's going to be really strong for helping to hold the upstairs uh, part of the map. At the start of the round, you're gonna make your way upstairs. Recommend throwing one goo on red. And then you're gonna go ahead and reinforce the cigar hatch here. Then after that, you're pretty much just gonna be uh, setting up your goo mines in preparation for you and Jaeger holding the top floor. You're gonna wanna be throwing your goos around the upstairs just so you and Jaeger have some idea of where they're pushing from. 
most likely they're gonna come through red stairs they're gonna come through uh new balk they're basically gonna push this very similarly to where they would uh if it was top floor but the difference is you're not playing top floor so you're gonna you know have the ability to just fall back if the attackers are pushing you too heavily so you and jaeger just need to be wasting time up here take advantage of the goo mines that you have and the impact grenades to make rotates and then just play time now moving on to canal and starting off with the best bomb site server and uh radar you're gonna pick dock and the first thing you're gonna do is immediately you're gonna go over to kill box make full holes across it you gotta reinforce the right wall here you're then going to make head holes across the top of this wall and you're gonna make the main rotate and you're gonna put holes across this wall here after you do all that you're then gonna immediately go to red stairs place barbed wire down and barbed wire in kill box after you do all this then throughout the round you're basically just going to take advantage of the dock shotgun and you're going to play on red stairs shotgunning people that try to come up the stairs and people who try to push you kill box and you're going to use your stims to stim yourself if you ever get caught by uh maybe a grenade or some sort of impact you can deal with that by just stimming yourself now to help protect your dock you're going to want to bring a jaeger and at the start of the round you're going to run straight over to red stairs you're going to put 180s right here to protect a nade from killbox coming in and killing him and then you're going to put one ads on the actual stairs itself then after that your last ads is going to go on top green to protect the deployable shield that's going to get placed up here after you place that you're then going to help your team reinforce the 90 walls and then one last thing you're going to want to put your bulletproof cam somewhere and so i recommend jumping up here and putting it all the way up here this will actually give you a decent line of sight onto the breach and the default plan if you move it over a little bit it'll give you an even better angle right here and this will give you a line of sight into the bomb site you can call out when they're going for a plant and since the footholds are going to be here you can also see if they move up close and you can also call out printer but they can shoot the cam if they go printer so obviously this camera won't be safe from that angle but if they just push the breach you'll be able to call it out and after you do that then jaeger i recommend having him play on the deployable shield that's going to be placed on the top of green just have him sit right here swing out on anyone coming up green or anyone pushing the 90 windows now after the jaeger you're going to want to pick a bandit and you're going to run over here hit the outside wall and you're going to bandit it off after that you're then going to immediately run over to the 90 walls and you're going to place two bandit charges on the red wall here after that you're then just gonna go with bandit and roam in pretty much anywhere on the map it doesn't really matter you can roam bottom red you can go roam over on printer side i like to roam on printer side with bandit but once again it's entirely up to you just go find a spot on the map to go roam and roam now after bandit you're gonna want to pick a zombie because she's extremely strong on this bomb site and at the start of the round you're gonna run over here into control throw one kibo right about there and trust me this will cook in a second you just have to wait for more kibas to spawn and while you're doing that you're going to reinforce this hatch and then you're going to throw another kiba right here this gives you such a tight angle into printer that the attackers literally can't see you so if you're holding that uh half wall there because as you can see i cannot see that half wall at all even if i'm proning i can barely get an angle on it whereas if i'm playing behind it i can see directly in a printer just fine so this gives you a huge advantage in any gunfight you take on any one pushing printer and then the other keepers i recommend placing is one right here and then i recommend putting one on this window to protect you from like a cali or a glass shooting you from right here but outside of that azami has no really other prep to do all she has to do is set up her area of the map right here and they're gonna have her play right here and hold off the printer take and also hold off the breach now for the last operator on this bomb site, you're going to want to pick thorn just for the fact that she has some pretty good traps that can help you deny a plant and she has the deployable shield at the start of the round run over to top of green and you're going to place the green shield after you place the shield you're then going to reinforce the two green walls here and after you reinforce those two walls there you're then going to make your way into control and into radar and then you're going to throw one thorn trap right here one right here and then the last one is gonna go right here this will force the attackers if they try to go for a default plant anywhere in the bomb site if they try to move up here to plant they're gonna get hit by a thorn gadget if they try to plant near the table they're gonna get hit with a thorn gadget and basically this ensures 
that if they try to go for a plant, they're going to be forced to sprint deeper into the bomb site, right into a zombie or right past the rotate and you'll be able to pick up a free kill. Now for the second best bomb site on this map, we have supply and kayaks. And at the start of the round, you're going to want to pick Kaid as your first operator. And then you're going to make your way upstairs and you're going to get both the hatches. While you're up here, I also recommend reinforcing this wall to help your uh, roamers uh, rotate. And also reinforcing this hatch right here, which right now, this hatch is bugged at the time of recording. You can't reinforce this hatch, but Ubisoft, I'm, I'm assuming will fix this at some point, hopefully. And so when this video uh, comes out, this won't work. But later on, you're going to want to reinforce this uh, hatch so that way they can't just drop into uh, lockers. And you're also going to reinforce this wall here. After that, Kai is then going to immediately run downstairs, throw his electric claw on this wall, or on this uh, hatch here. And then his other electric claw can go on the other hatch in lockers. Then after that, Kai is just going to play in the bomb site wherever you want him realistically. But I like to put him in kayak so that way he can kind of keep an eye on scuba and on the uh, yellow stairs there. Now the next operator you're gonna wanna choose is someone with a deployable shield that can roam. And for me, that's Ella. For the start of the round, you're gonna run over here to trench door, place the deployable shield down, put one of your Grismont mines above the trench door, then one Grismont mine on the armory window and one on the scuba window. After that, you're then going to reinforce this right scuba wall. You're also gonna reinforce this wall here and this wall here. After that, you're then going to roam upstairs and you're going to play upstairs along with another teammate. You're going to take advantage of your three speed rating and your good gun. Just kind of swing onto the attackers and waste as much time as you can. After Ella, you're going to want to pick Jaeger just so you can protect the deployable shield that's placed on Trench. So you're going to run over there, place one ADS here. You're going to reinforce this wall. You're going to put another ADS down. Now your last ADS can kind of go wherever you want. I like to put it on the lockers window here just to protect anyone on this area of the map. And your bulletproof camera can go in the hallway right here. Just so you can call out if uh, any attackers actually go deep from trench into bathroom. And also so you can hold the uh, main stairs and you can call out to your team later on in the round once uh, things hit the fan. After you place this bulletproof cam, you're then gonna run upstairs and roam with Ella. You two are gonna roam together, play off each other's contact, and just try to waste as much time as possible from the attackers, like I said. And it doesn't matter if you die or not, as long as you can waste as, uh, a decent amount of time, you've already won as a roamer. Now, the next operator you're gonna wanna bring to the table is Pulse. And the reason for that is because Pulse brings his cardiac sensor, which is gonna allow you to call out anyone who walks into trench. And also it's gonna allow you to give call outs to your roamers on people pushing above. And on top of this, you're also gonna be able to place three places down and just ping exactly when an attacker walks under it and blow the nitro. But outside of that, during the prep phase, you're not gonna really have much to do as Pulse. You can just help your team reinforce some of the walls around the bomb site, but that's about it. You're not gonna have any uh, major stuff to do because your main value is going to be throughout the round with your cardiac sensor. Now, the final operator on this bomb site I like to bring is Mute, simply for the fact that Flores and Brava are picked a lot on this bomb site, and you want to be able to counter those operators because this is kind of one of their better bomb sites. At the start of the round, you're going to want to run over here, make headles across this wall here. Then you're going to make the site rotate. And you're going to put headles across this wall too. Or I guess, I don't know what the, these are called, but you know, you know what I mean. Then after you do that, you're going to run over here. Put your meat jammer down on this door to kind of shut off the attackers from uh, clearing the deployable shield with like a Flores drone. You're also going to put another one behind the shield just to be safe. Then after that, you're going to walk over here into scuba. And you're going to put one jam on this door. You're going to make the head holes here. And then your final jam is going to go right here on lockers to stop them from droning into bathroom. Then after that, mute is pretty much good to go. You can just play in the bomb site and get ready for the attackers to push. I recommend putting your mute behind the deployable shield just because he has the shotgun SMB 11 combo that's going to make him really good for this close range gunfight. But you can kind of put it wherever you want, honestly, but I, I prefer him behind the deployable shield. Now for the third best bomb site on this a map, we have map room and security. And the first operator you're going to want to bring is castle. And what you're going to want to do is castle off the projector window here. Then you're also going to castle off the kitchen window. After you do that, you're immediately going to make your way upstairs. You're going to throw a prox alarm on this green door here. 
and you're going to castle barricade this double door here. You're gonna make footholes across this wall. Throw a beeper on the black box. Then you're gonna put head holes across this wall. And you're going to then put head holes across this, like so. And then you're gonna start helping your team reinforce the 90 walls upstairs. After you and your team have reinforced the 90 walls upstairs, you're then gonna place your last castle barricade on the green window. And then that is quite literally everything you have to do this round. Then you're just gonna play upstairs alongside a mirror who's gonna put a mirror window on that mirror. And you're just gonna try to hold off the upstairs push as long as you can because vertical play on this bomb site is going to be damn near impossible to deal with if you don't actually hold upstairs. And so you're gonna to wanna to put your castle and your mirror upstairs and try to hold it off for as long as you can. Now, speaking of mirror, your next operator is going to be just that, mirror. At the start of the round, you're gonna run over here into projector, reinforce this wall here. You're gonna put a mirror window down with a vaultable rotate. Then you're gonna reinforce the single wall here. And after that, you're immediately going to make your way upstairs to place your mirror window that's going upstairs down. What you're gonna do is you're gonna place it on this single wall and server. This mirror not only is going to shut down anyone from pushing in through the main breach over there, but it's also, if you do the head holes like I showed you with castle, allows you to see into printer and give any calls on your frost player with the shield, which I'm gonna show you in a second, to swing up and kill them. And also along with the beeper, it's also gonna give her some further intel. But if you play up here with this mirror window set up, it's gonna be very hard for them to get access to the vert holes and to play vertically. Now, as I just mentioned, Frost is going to be the next operator that you're gonna to wanna to prick on this bomb site. And the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is make your way over to projector, place a frost mat on the window. You're then gonna run over into kitchen, place the frost mat on this window. Then after that, you're going to reinforce this bottom green wall here. And you're going to put footholes across this wall. And you're also going to make head holes across this wall. Then after that, you're going to walk up red. You're going to place a frost mat on the red window. And you're also going to place your deployable shield down in this doorway right here. And then lastly, you're going to get this hatch right here. Now, after all is said and done, you're just going to play on this shield in the uh, server doorway. Swing up, uh, kill anyone pushing printer and try to like just slow this area of the map from getting pushed while your Mira and your castle are worrying with the 90 side and uh, actual uh, control side or a uh, server side of the map. Now, since you have three operators playing upstairs, you're gonna want two operators playing downstairs. And one of those operators I think is a really good one for the job is Jaeger. What you're gonna wanna do is run into the security bomb site, place one ADS right here. You're then gonna place one bulletproof cam in model right here. This will let you know if anyone pushes bridge. Then you're gonna run upstairs and place two ADSs on frost shield. After you place these ADSs, you're then immediately gonna go back downstairs and you're just gonna set up your Jaeger player inside of the model bomb site. And you're just gonna have him hold the footholds made on the kitchen hatch here or on the uh, kitchen wall here. And also just kind of hold off the bomb site. He can also rotate over to the mirror if he wants to check security and kind of swing out on that as well. Now for the final operator on this bomb site, I recommend going Finrear. And what you're gonna to wanna to do at the start of the round is immediately make your way over to bridge. And you're gonna throw a wood trend mine up here, along with some barbed wire in the middle of bridge. Then you're gonna make your way upstairs. On your way, you're gonna throw one dread mine in museum and activate it. Then you're gonna go up green, put barbed wire on the green stairs here. Then you're gonna throw one dread mine in kill box. One dread mine over here in printer on the black boxes here. And then one last dread mine over here near the breach, like up on the roof here. And after you throw all those dread mines, you're then gonna run back downstairs and you're gonna play on the bomb site with Jaeger. What we're gonna wanna do is when you get call outs that the attackers are pushing on a certain part of the map, you're then just gonna activate all of your dread mines that are in that location. So if you get the calls that they're all pushing upstairs, you're gonna move all your dread mine activations to upstairs to help support your team. But if you get the call that they're not pushing upstairs, you're then gonna to wanna to move like your one dread mine activation to probably bridge, and then one over here to your museum door. But yeah, you're just gonna be moving activations back and forth throughout the round, and then holding down the bomb site with Jaeger. Now for the final and definitely worst bomb site on this map, we have Coast Card and Gym or Lounge. And the first operator you're gonna to wanna to pick is Mira. And you're gonna run into Lounge and immediately, 
you're going to place a mirror on the bottom of this wall crouch height and then you're going to reinforce the back two lounge walls here after you set that up you're then going to run over here to the meeting room and you're going to reinforce this wall here and you're going to put footholds across this wall and after that mirror is pretty much just going to set up in the bomb site on lounge i like to put one mirror window here just so you can uh see if anyone comes down printer but if it gets opened it will screw you over so if they get a repel right there and they pop this you are going to be kind of screwed but i like having a mirror on the back side just so i can give call outs to my team when they're pushing printer they will melee this most likely but it'll at least give you some intel whereas having no like your second mirror window just not placed at all won't give you any intel but you can also pop this hatch and go on a flank if you want or you can also just use it as a getaway if they start getting on repel in the windows and like destroying a lot of your a lot of your utility now the next opera i recommend picking on this bomb site is finnerer simply for the fact that his traps are just so incredibly strong to cut off the attacker's push start of the round you're gonna run over here to reception you're gonna throw one f not dread mine right up here you're then gonna throw one f not on the bridge here along with some barbed wire in front of it then i recommend throwing your barbed wire down on the top of white stairs here with another f knot. Then I want to put a one f knot right here in this hallway. There will work, but honestly, just genuinely, this is kind of a hard hallway to hide one in. But if you can find a place like maybe here, this also works. But you want to put a f knot somewhere in this hallway just so you get some intel on where they're pushing. And then the final f knot I recommend placing is going to be on the bottom trench door here. Then with uh, Fenrir, you're just gonna play on the basement white stairs here and just play off any intel you get off your traps. If you notice they're pushing trench, swing trench and go downstairs and deal with the trench guy. If you notice they're pushing uh, the printer hallway, then go deal with that. Now the X operator you're gonna wanna bring is someone with a decent deployable shield and a good gun. And for that, that's gonna be Thorn for me. And at the start of the round, you're gonna reinforce this wall in the hallway here. You're then going to reinforce this left wall here in radio and you're going to reinforce both of these walls if you reinforce this you're then going to make your way over into uh archives here you're going to put a deployable shield down and you're going to throw some mines in here to help assist you with that hold one right there is not a bad idea putting one out here in the actual hallway so if they make it through it goes off and they're forced to either run out into the hallway or they're forced to run back then your last thorn gadget can go somewhere on like a default plant spot like for example uh under this that way if they try to go for a plant on this table here it'll force them deeper into the bomb site and after you set this stuff up you're then just gonna play as thorn right here on your deployable shield and kind of swing up occasionally and deal with any attackers that try to push in through reception. Now the next operator you're gonna wanna bring on this bomb site is Kaid. And you're gonna wanna run over here to the radio wall, make full holes across it. Then you're gonna run over here into uh, lounge and you're gonna electric claw the lounge wall to help protect Mira. Then you're gonna run over here and reinforce this coast guard wall. And you're gonna electric claw this wall off as well. Then after you set those up, as Kaid, you're then just going to play inside of radio and try to hold off the attackers for pushing down printer. And you're going to take advantage of these footholds to try to swing on to anyone who's pushing into the hallway and kill them. Now for the final operator on this terrible bomb site, you're going to want to bring Jaeger and you're going to make your way over to the hallway and you're going to make your way over into archives and you're going to stack two ADSs on this doorway here. And you're also going to put a bulletproof cam right here on the doorway. After that, you're then gonna make your way over into lounge and you're gonna put one ADS on Mira to protect her from getting naded. And then after that, as Jaeger, you're just gonna play off the bomb site. And by off the bomb site, I mean downstairs with uh, near where Finrear is holding white stairs. You're just gonna play fully in the basement. So that way they can't sneak up yellow stairs. They can't sneak up the uh, white stairs on Finrear without, uh, you know, with him getting caught by surprise. And you're basically just gonna be shutting down that kind of a take. And you can also sneak up yellow stairs and kill anyone trying to come down printer if your mirror gives the call out. Now for the first and best bomb site on Nighthaven Labs, you have servers and command center. And at the start of the round, you're gonna wanna pick Kaid as your first operator and you're gonna wanna make your way over to the connector wall here. You're gonna reinforce it. Then you're gonna throw an electric claw right here on the wall. Then you're gonna make your way into IT over here. You're gonna reinforce the two outside walls here. You're gonna electric claw these as well. After you've done that, then you're just going to use your shotgun to make the head holes and the foot holes in the bomb site. 
and you're going to reinforce this middle wall. After all of that, that's pretty much everything Kaid has to do for the prep phase. He's then just going to play in the back of the bomb site off of these footholds and kind of kill anyone who tries to come onto rafters or anyone who tries to vault the shield that you put on rafters over here. Now, the second operator I recommend running on this bomb site is Warden. And at the start of the round, you're going to reinforce the blue walls here. And you're going to reinforce both of these because if you don't, the attackers will be able to uh, ash charge one of these walls and just hold a long angle into the bomb site. So you want to reinforce both of these walls. I know a lot of people like to put footholds on them, but every time you put footholds on this, you're risking an ash or a Zofia just rushing into blue, opening this, and then just seeing directly into the bomb site. After you've reinforced those two walls, you're then going to make your way over to the rafters and warehouse, and you're going to place your shield right here, a little bit farther forward, like there. This will help you hold off rafters for a little bit, which rafters is a really important uh, position to hold for as long as you can off of the attackers. And it'll also, once you die, force the attackers into vaulting over right into footholds or hugging up against the wall right into footholds. Either way, it's going to give your player on the playing on the footholds a huge advantage in any gunfight on anyone moving up from uh, lower rafters here. Now, to help support your warden, you're going to want to bring a Jaeger so that way he doesn't get naded as easily. And at the start of the round, you're going to make your way over to rafters and immediately begin setting up your ADSs. I recommend putting one right here on the doorway into rafters because this will cover both IT door and the rafters door. And then I recommend putting one ADS behind him, like here, to stop any uh, nades from coming from lower rafters or from the window and killing him. And then your last ADS can either go in IT right here on the doorway, or you can put it also right here. It depends on how much utility you want to stack up on Warden. I don't recommend stacking this much util on him because it probably won't go well. So I recommend putting one ADS at least inside the bomb site somewhere, which I'm going to put on the electrical door right here. Then after you've placed all that, you have to place down his bulletproof camera, which I'm going to be placing right here on the wall in warehouse. Then after that, you're going to make your way back into the bomb site. And I recommend having your Jaeger player just play somewhere in the B bomb site and have him hold down from the electrical push and also to help him hold and also to help your team hold down the connector wall. If they get this wall open, you're going to want someone playing in this bomb site at least to slow down the take onto the wall. Now for your fourth operator, you're going to want to pick Bandit. And at the start of the round, you're immediately going to run into Connector. And you're going to reinforce the two outside walls here. After you've done that, you're going to place Bandit batteries on the wall. And then your last two Bandit batteries can kind of just go wherever because Kaiyu's already gotten the rest of the walls. So you can either electrify this blue wall or you can just place bandits down on the connector wall as well just to make them have to waste more impact dmps after you've done that you're then just going to go roam on the main lobby side of the map and kind of try to slow the attackers from pushing this area because most attackers will go for a connector take and they'll get this outside wall and then they'll go for the inside wall and so you want someone roaming on this side of the map now for the final operator on this bomb site i recommend a solace and what you're going to want to do with her during the prep phase is just activate your gadget and immediately run downstairs and start looking for drones shoot any drones that come into the building and just try to stop as much uh info from the attackers as uh humanly possible because you want to be killing those drones during the prep phase and trying to stop them from being able to use those drones later in the round this is the same thing you do with solace pretty much every prep phase and it's no different here then after you uh after the prep phase is over you're then just gonna roam downstairs like in the storage like maybe bottom rafters side of the map just to kind of help your warden hold rafters for as long as possible now for the second best bomb site on night haven you're gonna want to go assembly and tank and for your first operator you're gonna want to pick a zombie and during the prep phase the first kiba you're gonna want to throw is one right here now what is the importance of this kiba i'm sure you're wondering well this Kiba completely shuts down any attackers from going into the default plant. The only way they can go into this default plant and actually get a plant down is if they destroy this first or they run up and melee it, which is going to leave them vulnerable to the head holes and other things that you set up in the bomb site later in the round. Then your other Kibas can kind of go wherever you want in the bomb site. I like to throw like some Kibas over here and tank just to kind of cut off the lines of sight the attackers can get from the wind from this doorway here because they make it into cargo. They can see onto the single door there. They can see onto the door into the bomb site. So having this Kiba here kind of shuts off some of the angles they can see. And if you throw another one here, it cuts off even more lines of sight. But now if they make it down cargo stairs and they try to look into stuff, they're not going to see as much. And they're at risk of getting swung from behind one of these Kibas as well. After that, you're then going to want to make your way over to the single wall here in Animus. And you're going to reinforce it. And they're going to make footholds across this wall. After that, 
The zombie's pretty much done in the prep phase. She doesn't really have anything else that she needs to do because she's mainly being picked for her kibas. So outside of placing your kibas and reinforcing that one wall, you're pretty much good. Now the next operator you're gonna wanna pick is Thorn or realistically anyone with a shield. And what you're gonna wanna do during the prep phase is run over into the B-bomb site, plop down your shield next to the B-bomb here. And the reason why you do that is so you can move up behind it from uh, XO here. And, and even if they get this wall open, you can still play safely behind this deployable shield until it gets cleared. After you set the shield up, you're then gonna wanna run over here to the default plant and throw a thorn gadget here before uh, a zombie throws their Kiba there. And the reason why that is, so if they breach this Kiba and they don't check for a thorn gadget, they'll vault up here try to go for a plant and then immediately get forced off the plant. Then another thorn gadget I recommend placing is right here behind these boxes. So if they push deep into the bomb site, they're also gonna be forced to sprint. And then your last your last thorn gadget can go on exo stairs right here. And after you've placed those thorns, you're then gonna make your way up to exo. You're gonna reinforce the exo hatch and you're also going to go and reinforce the warehouse hatch. After you've done that, you can then make your way back into the bomb site. And then I recommend having Thorn just play behind that deployable shield she placed. Here. Now, the next operator I recommend bringing on this bomb site is Kaid. And what you're going to want to do is run into storage for our cargo. And you're going to shotgun the bottom of this wall out. You're then going to make your way over to the single wall, throw an electric claw on it. And then you're going to walk over to the main wall and assembly. And you're going to reinforce both of them. After you reinforce them, you're going to plop an electric claw down and you're then going to put head holes across this wall and reinforce the left one. After you've done that, uh, I recommend putting some foot holes across this wall as well and reinforcing the left one. And then after that's all said and done, Kaid's free to kind of play wherever. I like to have my Kaid play in here on near the tank window just so he can swing out on anyone trying to go through the single breach. And he can kind of hold this down with his nitro cell and his two times on a CCSG. Now for your fourth operator, I recommend picking with my, and what you're gonna to wanna to do at the start of the round is just make your way over to XO and reinforce both the XO walls. Then the last reinforcement, you're just gonna plop down right here on this wall. Then you're gonna run into assembly here and you're going to throw one wamai disc right over the breach here and then you're going to throw more wamai discs throughout this room to kind of protect your your thorn playing on the shield like throwing one here wouldn't be a bad idea just throw a ton of wamai disc around this room throughout the round and you're also going to be playing in exo so if your thorn calls out like hey i need another magnet just walk over here behind her shield and throw it out. And then you can just go back to holding EXO. Now for the final operator I recommend on this bomb site, I basically recommend any roamer that has barbed wire that you're comfortable with running. And so for me, that's going to be Oryx. And at the start of the round, you're just gonna immediately run over onto cargo stairs here, pop down some barbed wire, and you're then going to run all the way over into EXO. And you're gonna place barbed wire on the EXO stairs here. Then you're gonna make your way upstairs and just start opening a ton of the top floor hatches to allow you to jump up and down between the floors. And you're just start prepping things for your top floor realm, like making vert holes right here into storage is a good idea. Since a lot of the time they're gonna come through here to try to uh, play vertically. And so having some vert holes above the window for you to hold like this is gonna catch a lot of the attackers off guard, as well as just having that hatch open so you can jump down and up between the two bomb sites is gonna be pretty strong overall. Outside of that, you're just gonna spend the entire round on the top floor up here, roaming back and forth and trying to slow the attackers down from taking vertically. Okay, now for the third best bomb site on this map, we have Kitchen Cafeteria. And what you're gonna wanna do on this bomb site is pick Kaid as your first operator. But at the start of the round, you're gonna have Kaid come over here, make footholds across the wall here. You're then going to reinforce the wall going into lobby. You're gonna electrify it. Then you're gonna reinforce this single wall here. And you're gonna run over into pantry here. And you're gonna reinforce this single wall. And you're gonna make a vaultable rotate in this wall. After you do that, you're then, at the end of the prep phase, you're gonna have one of your roamers jump outside and reinforce this hatch, and then you're gonna have Kaid electric claw it off. Now, speaking of that roamer to go get the hatch, that's going to be your solace. And at the start of the round, you're gonna to wanna to run over here to the lounge wall here, reinforce both of these. And then you're immediately going to run as fast as you can upstairs into the meeting uh, window. And you're going to prep it, look for any drones that are droning you out. And then as soon as the round starts and the prep phase is over, you're gonna jump out this window, run over here and reinforce this hatch. So you're gonna immediately run back to the window and vault back in. If you time this properly, you will not be able to get killed by the attackers. You'll have plenty of time to get that hatch open because all the spawns are way too far from this hatch. So you should be able to get back to this window just in time, as long as you actually vault out as soon as the round starts. Then you're gonna make your way back upstairs and you're just gonna sit up up here. You're just gonna get ready 
for the attackers to push you and you're just gonna play upstairs hold off the attackers from taking vertically because this bomb site has a lot of vert play so you're just gonna play upstairs near where you vaulted out and just wait for the attackers to start pushing you pretty hard now the third operator i recommend bringing on this bomb site is warden and what you're gonna want to do with warden is run over into lounge place down a shield on this pool table this can be a little tricky but you should be able to get the hang of it. You're gonna place it facing towards that doorway there. Then you're gonna reinforce this storage wall here. And you're immediately gonna run upstairs and get the lounge hatch. After that, you're then gonna run back to lounge and you're just gonna set up inside a lounge behind your deployable shield. And you're just gonna try to hold lounge for as long as possible. Now, speaking of traps, the perfect operator to get that job done is Legion. You're gonna run over to storage at the immediate start of the round and you're gonna throw one goo on the warehouse door. And then when you get another goo, you're gonna throw it on the window. Then after that, you're going to make your way over to Exo, and you're literally just going to play on the Exo stairs right here to protect your warden from getting flanked. And you're also going to throw a goo at the bottom of the stairs just to give you a warning. Now for the final operator, you're going to want to pick Jaeger. And what you're going to want to do is run over into lounge and give your warden two ADSs to protect the shield right here in the hallway door right here. After you place those ADSs down, after you place those ADSs down, you're then going to put one ADS on the site door right here next to the main breach right here. You're then going to put your bulletproof cam in the hallway right here. And after that, Jaeger's literally just going to play inside the bomb site near the B bomb here. And you're just going to watch the hallway and make sure no one runs in. And you're also going to hold the breach when they open the breach. And Jaeger's just going to sit inside this power position and try to stay here for as long as he can to prevent any sort of site execution. Now, if you unfortunately find yourself on storage, which is one of the worst bomb sites I've ever had to make a strat for, uh, I recommend picking Mira as your first operator and then running over here to this wall in between the two bomb sites, making a vaultable rotate here, reinforcing this right wall, putting a Mira window down. And this mirror will basically shut down the attackers from trying to go in through the warehouse window or the doorway into the bomb site. You're then going to want to reinforce these two walls here. And then the last thing mirror is going to have to do for the prep phase is reinforce this stored single wall here. And you're going to want to place a mirror window on this as well. This is strictly just to give Mira info on the hallway and for her to be able to call out to her teammate who's going to be playing on a shield right here in the hallway when they're swinging him. Now for the second operator I recommend picking on this bomb site, I recommend Kaid. And what you're gonna wanna do is run over and reinforce the warehouse outside wall here. And you're going to electrify it. After electrifying that, you're then gonna run into the bomb site and you're gonna electrify this wall here. Then after you electrify that, you're going to immediately run upstairs and start helping your team set up upstairs, which is going to include reinforcing the IT wall here. After you reinforce this bandit, we'll bandit these walls off. And then Kaid is just gonna play on the top of rafters with this two times and try to take advantage of the uh, long range gunfights that you're gonna find yourself in on rafters. And you're just gonna try to hold this for as long as possible. This is an important power position for this bomb site. And if you lose it, it's going to cause you to lose the round a lot quicker. Now, the next operator I recommend you bringing is Bandit. What you're gonna wanna do is bandit off this wall that Mira puts her mirror window on. Then you're gonna run upstairs. You're gonna bandit these two IT walls here. And you're also going to reinforce these two server walls. After you reinforce all of this, you're then going to start barricading stuff. You're going to barricade the electrical door here, and you're going to barricade the blue door over here. And then Bandit is just going to roam over here in server behind Kai or in command behind Kai to kind of make for sure Kai doesn't get flanked. Now, the next operator you're going to want to bring is someone with a deployable shield. For me, that's going to be Thorn. And what you're going to want to do is run over to the lounge door over here. You're going to place a deployable shield down. I prefer to have it on this side of the doorway just so you can swing up. And as long as you play back enough, you won't be able to get shot from the exo stairs area or in vending. And speaking of which, I recommend putting one thorn gadget on the top of the stairs here so you get audio when they come up the stairs and it'll also force them into the middle. Then I recommend putting one thorn gadget over here on the storage window and then putting your last one over here near the default plant spot in storage right here. Since, since the mirror window can't see this, they can easily plant over here. So you want to throw a, a thorn gadget somewhere over here. So if they try to go for a plant through the wall, they, they will hit this thorn gadget and be forced out. And a better place to throw it than just in that corner is right here in the floorboards. And after you've set up all your thorn gadgets and you've placed your shield down, I then recommend having thorn literally just play on her shield in a uh, lounge right here. Just have her play right here behind it, swing up to take gunfights on anyone who pushes into the hallway and also to hold off anyone pushing in through vending. Now to help protect the mirror windows and also help protect the shield, you're gonna wanna bring a Jaeger. Then at the start of the round, you're gonna run over here to warehouse, plop down a camera. 
You're then going to run over here into lounge. One ADS right here near the couch. Now this will be able to be shot from bending, but if they're trying to nade you from the hallway, it won't be shot. And then you're gonna wanna put one right here in the corner near the double door into venting. After you place those two ADSs down, you're then gonna run over to rafters and you're gonna give your Kaid player one ADS to kind of protect them from getting naded super easily. After that, you're then going to make your way back downstairs and I recommend having your Jaeger roam somewhere near cargo stairs right here or in cargo just so they can't push this hallway as easily and they can't push your lounge player. Now for the next map, we have a fan favorite, Oregon. And for the best bomb site on this map, I think it's going to be kids and bunks. And what you're gonna do on this bomb site is pick Kaid as your first operator. And you're gonna immediately run over to kids, make the attic rotate. I did this awfully with the TCSG, but I'm sure you'd be more efficient with it. Then you're gonna run over to the attic wall here, make head holes. And you're gonna reinforce the right wall here. You're then gonna run to the back attic wall here and you're gonna electrify it and reinforce it. After you electrify this, you're then gonna make your way over to the master wall and one of your teammates will reinforce this and you'll just electrify it. And then you're gonna make the head holes across the white wall and the foot holes near the window. After that, Kaid is pretty much just gonna play in the bomb site. I like to set up my Kaid kind of an attic so that way he can take advantage of these head holes and hold long angles into master with his two times and just kind of pick off anyone who tries to swing. Now the next operator I'm gonna be recommending on this bomb site is Thorn. What you're gonna wanna do is run over here to the kid's door here, pop down your shield. You're then gonna run over to the double window and this is where Thorn is gonna be really strong is you're gonna shoot into the floor like this and you're gonna throw one Thorn gadget right there in the floorboards and then you're gonna throw another one in the floorboards right here and what this is going to do is if anyone vaults double window and tries to run into the common default plant spot they're going to be forced to run all the way around the bomb or around the bunk here and into the middle of the open so these two throwing gadgets are incredibly strong then your last one can go on white and then i recommend reinforcing this right wall with thorn and then reinforcing the wall next to the rotate here after you set all that up, you're then just going to play behind a deployable shield in the bomb site. And if you hear any audio of anyone vaulting into the main window, you can wait for your Thorn gadgets to go off and just swing them while they have their pants down. Now, after Thorn, you're going to want to pick Jaeger. And at the start of the round, you're going to run over here to the uh, hunting door here. You're going to pop down two ADSs to protect your shield. Then your last ADS is going to go over here on the double window. And then finally, I'd throw your bulletproof camera right here on the white stairs. And after you've done that, you're then just gonna go roam with Jaeger pretty much anywhere you want. I recommend putting Jaeger on the bottom of white stairs, maybe in like the kitchen area. Cause a lot of times like a nook or an ash will try to brush up to white and try to sneak up white stairs and try to catch your team off guard. And if you just play down here, you can normally get like one free kill on a teammate or on an enemy, excuse me trying to rat over to white stairs. Now for the fourth operator, you're kind of open to pick whoever. I'm just gonna be picking Capcan because I really like Capcan on this bomb site. And what we're gonna wanna do is run over to the main master wall here. We're gonna reinforce both walls. Then you're gonna run into master and put two Capcan traps out of the closet because these catch them off guard a lot, especially if they have like a thermite trying to get this wall. This is going to catch them off guard a lot. And then you can put your other two Capcans kind of wherever you want. It's pretty much personal preference. I'm gonna be putting two on the garage door here. And then I'm gonna put my last one over here near tower. And then Capcan is also going to be a roamer downstairs and I recommend having him set up in meeting. So that way if they start pushing tower side, you can uh, help deal with that. Or if they start pushing the main lobby side, you can be ready to rotate over back to the bomb site if you need, if you need to. Now the final operator I recommend picking is going to be Warden. And what you're gonna wanna do with him throughout the round is you're literally just gonna set up your double window and wait for any attackers to try to swing you. And you're just gonna swing off the double window until if they vault in, they're obviously gonna hit that thorn gadget if they try to run at, rush at you. So you can swing them while that Thorn Gadget is going off and probably pick up a free kill. But you're just gonna want one player positioned here just to kind of make the attackers be scared of trying to vault the double window because you don't want them trying to vault into this. And if you just play right here, they'll be scared to jump in and you can you know, even nitro sell them with your nitro cell if they start pushing heavily. Now for the second best bomb site, I'm gonna be going the basement bomb site, which is supply and laundry. And what you're gonna to wanna to do at the start of the round, and what you're gonna to wanna to do is bring smoke as your first operator with shotgun, by the way, not FMG9. You're gonna want the shotgun for this. And you're gonna to wanna to run over here, make the rotate into blue. Then you're gonna make the rotate into laundry. You're then going to make the head holes across freezer here. And you're also gonna make the head holes across laundry wall here. You're going to reinforce this laundry wall. You're going to make your way over to this tower wall here, or this uh, pillar wall, sorry. Make head holes across it. 
and make head holes across the box. If you set all that up, you're then gonna put one set of barbed wire on the tower stairs here and one set of barbed wire right here in blue. And then as I'm sure you can guess, what you're gonna do with smoke is you're gonna have your shield player, which I'll show you in a second, place the shield down. And then you're just gonna play behind your shield, take advantage of your shotgun to take close range engagements and your SMG 11 to take a little bit longer range engagements. Now to help support your smoke, you're gonna wanna bring a Jaeger because they're gonna be trying to nade your shield 100% and you're gonna want some ADSs to help stop that. At the start of the round, you're gonna run over here, reinforce this freezer wall. You're then going to make your way over to the blue bunker wall here and you're gonna reinforce this wall. Then by then smoke would have a rotate here, but because I don't have a shotgun on Jaeger, I'm gonna have to run around. And after smoke's made the rotate, you're gonna put one ADS here and then two ADSs on this wall right here. Then after you stack the ADSs, you're then gonna put a reinforcement on the left blue wall here, and you're gonna plop a BP back, PP down. After you've placed your BP, you're then just gonna play on the uh, head holes here with Jaeger, and you're just gonna swing off the uh, attackers when you hear them pushing in. And you're just gonna help your, your smoke kind of try to stay alive. So you're gonna want to play right here and some more smoke as best as you can. Now to provide that shield that I mentioned earlier, you're gonna wanna pick Warden. And at the start of the round, you're just gonna run upstairs and immediately get the E-Box hatch. And after that, you're also gonna make your way over to Freezer and get the Freezer hatch. After you've gotten both these hatches, you're then gonna make your way over to blue and you're gonna place your shield in the corner uh, like I show you in a second. And you're gonna wanna place the shield. I just realized I didn't bring shield on Warden, but where you're, what you're gonna wanna do is just place the shield right here kind of back away from this wall because if you don't put it back away from the wall then the ADSs won't cover it so you're going to want to place it in the corner like here and you're going to have smoke just play behind it so that way you know the ADSs will actually catch the uh any nades coming this way because if you place it up against the pillar like like what a lot of people do only the ADS that you place on the floor there is going to protect it and these two aren't going to protect your shield at all after you place your shield down you're then just going to roam over here near tower with warden you're gonna play on the pillar kind of right here and you're gonna get aggro on tower stairs if you need to swing out on people if they start pushing you you're just gonna fall back to pillar and you're gonna take advantage of your glasses to kind of help you hold this position down for longer now for your fourth operator you're gonna want to bring kaid and what you're gonna want to do is run over here into e-box you're gonna throw an electric claw on the roof right here this will get the uh e-box wall and then you're gonna want to throw another kaid charge right here on the roof here and so this this electric claw is mainly there so that way when smoke has to leave blue blue and he has to give it up to the attackers and he goes to reinforce this uh rotate off it'll also get electrified and both these walls will uh you know stay electrified after you've placed those two electric claws then you're gonna reinforce this wall right here in ebox now if you've set that up you're pretty much just going to help out the uh the smoke make the rotates and head holes where needed and then you're just going to set up inside the bomb site i recommend having kaid play right here on the supply closet and kind of you take advantage of the head holes here on freezer and on uh supply here to kind of swing anyone pushing into freezer and you're just going to hold right here try to hold down the bomb site as best as you can now to help you waste even more time on blue i recommend bringing a goyo what we're going to want to do at the start of the round is run over here and place two goyo canisters right on the left side of this door now what this is going to do is this is going to allow your smoke player to just peek up over his shield and shoot them and this is 40 seconds of delay right here on top of his three smoke canisters he's gonna allow he's gonna be allowed to burn a ton of time for the attackers and then the attackers are actually gonna have to deal with him behind the shield so if you play this properly you can waste a ton of time with these two goyo canisters here after that you're gonna make your way into freezer and you're gonna set up a prox alarm on the freezer stairs over here on this uh doorway and you're also gonna set up a goyo canister right about here in the middle of the room then after you set up that goyo canister you're then going to run over to laundry and place one goyo canister right here on the laundry door you're then going to barricade this doorway off and then your last po prox alarm that you have in pocket you're going to make your way over to tower stairs and you're going to throw it right on the tower stairs over here right about here then after you set all that up goyo is going to play in freezer and try to stop the attackers from pushing this side of the map now for the third best bomb site i recommend kitchen dining S simply because of this castle strat this castle strat is actually pretty strong so what you're going to want to do at the start is you're just going to make a rotate into showers here you're then going to put footholds across this wall along with a reinforcement here you're then going to castle the showers hall door into small tower here you're going to castle this window here and you're then going to castle off this shower hall door here after that you're going to throw a prox alarm on the z hall here and you're going to barricade server security off here after that you're going to make head holes across this wall you're going to make a crouch rotate here 
And then going to reinforce the right wall here. Now, after you set all that up, castle is pretty much free to, you know, play somewhere in the bomb site. I recommend throwing your last prox alarm like there on the double door, but you're basically just gonna play somewhere in the bomb site, which I like to put my castle inside of showers behind the shield you're gonna place here and just have him use his 1.5, just swing onto people coming through small tower and just have him hold this down for as long as he can, because this, as soon as they take shower side, they're gonna have an easy time planting on the default plant over here. Now, speaking of wow. that shield I mentioned earlier, I recommend picking Warden to fill that role. What you're gonna wanna do at the start of the round is run over here to the showers hall and reinforce these two walls. You're then gonna run into showers and place a deployable shield down right next to this locker here. After you've done that, you're then going to run over to these two main walls and you're going to reinforce these off. Then after that with Warden, I recommend just having him play somewhere in dining to support the castle on small tower and just take advantage of his glasses because the attackers like to do Ying Candela rushes on this bomb site as well. So you're going to want to have your Warden playing in the bomb site to help your team support with that. You don't want him roaming because you're going to be missing out on some potential utility. Okay, now for your next operator on this bomb site, you're going to want to pick Bandit and at the start of the round, you're going to run to the meeting hall wall right here and you're going to reinforce it and then you're going to electrify it off. After that, you're then immediately going to run into dining hall and you're going to band it off these two walls here. Now, after you banded these two walls off, you're then going to run upstairs into kids and you're going to roam up there. And while you're roaming up here, you're also going to go ahead and reinforce this hatch. And then you're just going to play upstairs and kids and try to hold off any potential vertical play they're going to play on the bomb site. Now for the next operator on this bomb site, you're going to want to bring Jaeger to help protect that deployable shield and showers. So you're going to run over into showers at the start of the round and you're going to place one ADS on the wall up here and one ADS on this wall here. And then your last ADS is going to go over here on the small towers door along with your bulletproof cam, which is going to get placed right here on the small tower door. After you place that down, Jaeger is then going to go play over here in kitchen, and he's just going to hold off this side of the bomb site, make sure no one's pushing backside and tower. And if they start playing vertically on him, he's just going to rotate into security through the uh, rotate you made in the corner right there. Now for the final operator on this bomb site, I recommend bringing someone that can support the realm. And so that is going to be Legion for me. What you're going to want to do is run upstairs and immediately start setting up for your realm. So what you're going to want to do is throw like one goo in hunting and then you're going to want to make an attic rotate. You're going to want to throw one goo in attic. And then after you set that up, you're then just going to play upstairs, wait for more goos to come out and throw them out throughout the uh, upstairs to help you and uh, Bandit hold it off. If they don't push here, or you notice that they're not even bothering to clear you out, you can then just rotate down white stairs back towards security and go through the security door. You can just break this open um, because this will be castle barricaded. You'll just break this open and come into security if you want, or you can break this open and go into uh, showers hall. But either way, if they're not pushing you, you need to find a way to get back into the bomb site. But more than likely they will push you because vertical play is really strong on this bomb site. So just be prepared for that. And you and Bandit are just gonna play up here. Now for the final and worst bomb site on this map, we have kitchen meeting. What you're gonna wanna do is bring Kaid as your first operator and you're gonna make the rotate between the two bomb sites here. You're then gonna run over here and throw an electric claw right here. This will get the attic wall that you're gonna reinforce and the meeting wall. Then after that, you're gonna run over to this wall here in your garage and you're gonna electric claw this. After you electric claw this, you're then gonna rotate over to this wall here and reinforce this one as well. Then after all is said and done, you're then just gonna set up inside the bomb site in kitchen and you're just gonna play right here, waiting for any attackers to rush in from small tower. Now for this bomb site, you're gonna once again bring a castle and at the start of the round, you're gonna make a rotate into server here. You're going to reinforce this wall and then put head holes across this one. For that, you're gonna castle barricade this off. Once again, place a beeper in Z hall and also place a beeper on freezer stairs here. Then you're gonna run upstairs castle barricade the kids window here the games window and the last castle is going to go on the attic window then you're going to blow the attic hatch and you and your team are also going to make a rotate here basically castle along with one or two other defenders is going to play upstairs and prepare for the attackers to start pushing the bomb site. And since this bomb site is so heavily open to vertical play, you're just going to set up upstairs, get ready for them to push the bomb site because meeting is completely open to the hatch. So as long as you can hold this down, you're going to be able to basically see the entire bomb site from the meeting hatch. And you're also going to be able to hold down most of the B bomb site from up here as well. So you're just going to set up some traps upstairs with maybe a lesion or a fin rear, and you're just going to play upstairs, hold down this for as long as you can 
and with Castle. Oh, As right. I mentioned earlier, another operator that's going to be playing upstairs with Castle is Legion. And what you're going to want to do is immediately run upstairs at the start of the round. And you're going to start throwing goos upstairs to protect you and your team. So you're going to throw one goo right here. You're going to run over here in the attic, reinforce the attic walls here. And you're then going to reinforce the kids hatch right here. After you reinforce these things, you're then just going to set upstairs with Castle and you're gonna try to hold down this as best as you can. Castle can use his shotgun to make vert holes above the bomb site, And you guys are just gonna play upstairs for as long as possible. If you start getting pressured uh, too hard from upstairs and you need to rotate, you can either drop the attic hatch or you can just rotate down white depending on where you're push they're pushing you from. Okay, now the fourth operator you're gonna wanna pick on this bomb site is Jaeger. And at the start of the round, you're gonna run over here, but 180S on this side of split. You're then gonna put your bulletproof cam down right here in split. You're then going to run over here and put another ADS down on this side of split. And then your last ADS is going to go right here on the meeting hall door. After you set that up, you're then going to run over into the bomb site here. And you're going to reinforce this single wall and kitchen. And then you're going to plop your last reinforcement down next to the rotate here. Now after you've done this, Jaeger is just going to set up inside of the bomb site. He, him and Kaid are going to play down here. Now for the final operator on this bomb site, I'm going to recommend a Rooney. And what you're going to want to do with her is set up three potential Rooney gates that are really strong. You're going to want to put one on the tower door here, along with some barbed wire on the stairs and some barbed wire in the hallway here. You're then going to make your way over to split. And you're going to put one Rooney gate here. And your last Aruni gate can go over in the other bomb site. I'm just gonna make this rotate for the sake of uh, getting there faster. You're gonna put the last one right here on this door. After you set up the Aruni gates, I then recommend having Aruni also play in the bomb site alongside Kaid and Jaeger and just having her play on the first floor because you don't want to have all your defenders playing upstairs. You just want like two just to slow down that push as much as you can. But committing too much up there will allow them to easily push the first floor and just kill your two anchors. So I recommend having three people play downstairs. And I think a Rooney, Jaeger, and Caillou are perfect for that job. Anyways, that about wraps up this bomb site, and we're now gonna be moving on to the next map. Now it's time for my personal least favorite map in the game, Outback. And the best bomb site on this map by far is Party, in my opinion. And what you're gonna wanna do at the start of the round is you're gonna run over here, reinforce the office supplies wall. All right, after you get the supplies wall reinforced, you're then gonna open the rotate into garage here. And you're gonna set up a shield right here in the corner. After you set up the shield, I then recommend putting one frost mat here on this window, one frost mat over here in bull. And then your last frost mat is kind of just personal preference. I like to put it on the top of shark stairs right here on the landing because they rarely expect a frost mat to be here. And then after that, you're basically just gonna set up frost over here behind your deployable shield. And you're just gonna use her 1.5 to kind of take as many gunfights as you can in garage on people trying to push in. If they climb up the ladder, you can kill them. If they come up the stairs, you can shoot at them with your uh, 1.5 SMG. And this is just a really strong power position. It's by far one of the strongest power positions on this map. And you can easily hold this down, especially if you bring a Jaeger, which I'm gonna show you in a second to protect this shield. Now, speaking of Jaeger, he's going to be the next operator you pick on this bomb site. What you're gonna wanna do is run over into garage and place 180s near the window here then after this ads you're then going to want to place 180s near the vending machine here and this will protect the shield from getting naded from that window and you're also going to want to put your last ads right here on the garage door after you set up those ads's you're then going to want to run over here into bull reinforce these two walls here and you're then going to want to place your bulletproof camera on the other side of the wall right here now after you set this up i recommend having jaeger roam over here in piano maybe bathroom and just kind of holding off a potential games push because this is a common push on this bomb site, opening this bull wall and trying to push into bull. And so you're going to want to have one roamer or two play over here in piano to hold off the bathroom piano take. Now the next operator you're going to want to bring on this bomb site is a operator with a shotgun that can be either mute, smoke, or whoever you want, really. Um, I'm going to be picking smoke for the purpose of this uh, site setup. What you're going to want to do is immediately make your way to garage stairs, place barbed wire here. Then you're going to shotgun the bottom of this wall out. You're then going to make your way to the bomb site, make the bomb site rotate. And then you're going to reinforce this left wall right here on the top of shark stairs. And you're going to put head holes across here. After you put head holes there, you're then going to put barbed wire right here on the mez door. And then after you do that, you can come back, reinforce the re uh, the wall in between the rotate and the soft wire here. And you're going to shotgun the top of this wall so you can throw smokes over it. 
after you set all of this up you're then going to play with smoke inside the bomb site on the party reinforcement and you're just going to use this as kind of like a power position for you to throw smokes at also if you get the call that they're pushing shark stairs you can throw a smoke right through that those head holes there and land a smoke directly on the shark stairs to kill or slow down anyone from pushing that pretty much for the entire round you're just going to sit inside a party and kind of hold off the bomb site and just play in this room specifically now for the next stop right on this bomb site i recommend bringing kaid so you can get the uh walls the important walls on this bomb site so at the start of the round you're gonna run over here into supply tie it off that wall you're then gonna make your way into party and reinforce these walls here then after that you're gonna run over to bull and you're going to electrify this wall here after you electrify those two walls and you get everything set up, you're then going to move your Kaid and have him play inside of the bomb site as well, right here in office. And you just have him play here near the footholds and have him wait for anyone to push up garage stairs and just swing on them. He can also swing on people pushing into bullet if he needs to. And yeah, that's just basically going to be the setup here. Just going to play right here in office to kind of slow down the attackers from pushing garage and just let them push into bull. Now for the final operator on this bomb site, I recommend picking a Mozzie. And what you're going to do with Mozzie is you're going to immediately make your way over to bull you're going to run into games and you're going to start setting up your mozzie pests on this side of the map so that way throughout the round you and jaeger will have to deal with less uh drones so you're going to just start setting up all your mozzie pests on this side of the map and after you set up your pests you're then just going to get ready to roam on this side of the map with jaeger you and jaeger are just going to play over here and try to hold the bull take and try to shut down that as much as you can now for the second best bomb site on this map we have green and red bedroom and we're going to want to do at the start of the round is you're immediately going to run upstairs and you're going to reinforce this wall in dorms and you're going to electrify it after you do that you're then going to make your way back downstairs and your teammate is hopefully going to have already reinforced this wall so you're going to electric claw it as well and you're then going to start making the rotate between the two bomb sites after the rotate has been made, you're then pretty much free to play inside the bomb site however you like. Kai is just going to be one of the anchors that plays in the bomb site. I like to position him over here in red bedroom, but you can also just play in green. It doesn't really matter. Just have Kai play in the bomb site somewhere and help the team like hold down the site. Now, the other operator you're going to want to hold down the bomb site with is going to be Wamai. And at the start of the round, you're going to impact this cabinet at the top of the fridge and you're going to impact the top of this wall. You're then going to reinforce these two walls. You're going to throw one magnet on the site door and then you're going to throw your other magnet above this site door when you get it. But in the meantime, you're going to reinforce the red bedroom wall here. And after that, that's pretty much all that Wamai has to set up. Now, I'm sure you're wondering, why did you impact these two things here? Well, that's because you can vault up onto this, then vault up onto the fridge. That allows you to easily kill anyone who's trying to push this hallway. And a lot of the, the time, attackers don't expect this because a lot of people don't know a lot about Outback. And so you can easily get kills, especially on lower ranked players in this little head glitch spot. Now to help your teammates upstairs, you're gonna to wanna to bring a lesion. And at the start of the round, you're gonna immediately reinforce this red bedroom wall. And then you're gonna run upstairs and get the hatch into the bomb site. That hatch is right here in piano. After you get this hatch, you're then gonna start throwing your goos around the map to give you and your teammates a warning on where the attackers are pushing from and then you're just going to get ready for the impending push through bunk and the top floor now for even more utility upstairs i recommend bringing a warden with deployable shield and running your way upstairs immediately at the start of the round and what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to place your deployable shield right back here near the shower stall and then throughout the round you're just going to play behind it and use it as a way to pick up kills on people trying to push into bunks once they get the wall open they're going to have a hard time pushing into bunks since your shield is here. So they're going to want to clear it. Now to help defend that shield upstairs, I recommend bringing a Jaeger. And what you're going to want to do is immediately run upstairs. Put your camera right here on reptile stairs facing down. You're then going to place one ADS. Well, two ADSs under the showers window here. After you place those two ADSs down, you're then going to place your last ADS over here on the terrace door. And then you as Jaeger, you're gonna play on the reptile stairs. While Legion is holding down the backside and Warden's holding down showers from the deployable shield, you're gonna be roaming over here on reptile. So that way, if anyone tries to vault the uh, bunk window, you can easily swing them. Or if they start rushing through the breach, you can kill them as well. This position also allows you to stop anyone from coming in through the bottom reptile stairs door so holding this power position is definitely what you're going to be wanting to do with jaeger while your other two teammates are helping you hold upstairs now for the third best bomb site on this map we have piano and laundry and what you're going to want to do is bring kaid and you're going to run over to the bull wall and reinforce it off and then you're going to throw an electric claw down right here on the door after that you're then going to run over here to the outside uh, dorms wall here and you're going to reinforce it then you're going to throw your electric claw down here 
And after Kaigen gets this wall, he's pretty much free to play wherever he wants in the bomb site. I recommend having him play in here in piano so that way he can take advantage of his two times to swing out onto anyone pushing in from shark stairs or in the terrace. But playing him anywhere honestly will work. Now, for the next operator on bomb site, I recommend picking Finrear. And what you're going to want to do is immediately run over here on showers, reinforce this right wall here. You're then going to reinforce the two walls going into terrace. So you're going to throw one F knot on the game's door along with some barbed wire. You're going to throw one F knot above the terrace door here. Then you're going to throw one on the dorm's window. Put barb on reptile stairs with an F knot. And then your left F knot can go kind of wherever. I like to throw it right here near the breach. That way when they walk in, they get blinded as soon as they come in. And so that way your guy on the shield can just swing out and get a free kill. After you've set all that up, you're then just going to make the site rotate. And after that, Fenrir is pretty much free to play wherever. I like to place him on the reptile stairs over here. So that way he can play off three of his F-knots. And if you notice that they're not pushing over there, you can just move the activation codes to somewhere else. Now for the next operator on this bomb, so you're going to want to pick Warden for the deployable shield. And you're going to put it in the same spot I showed you to put it on for the green red bathroom, which is going to be right here. And you're then going to run over here to the piano wall here. And you're going to reinforce this wall. And you're then going to run over here next to the rotate. And you're going to reinforce this wall. After that, you're going to reinforce the right wall here. And then throughout the entire round, you're just going to set up in showers behind this uh, deployable shield. You're just going to swing up on people trying to push into dorms. They can get this wall from the showers window, but it doesn't really matter that much because it all it's going to be able to see is deep into laundry. But if you're just playing behind the bomb, this wall is really not going to affect you that much. Now for the fourth operator on this bomb site, you're going to want to pick Jaeger. And what you're going to want to do at the start of the round is run over here to the piano door, put one ADS down. Are you then going to place your bulletproof cam at the back of Terrace here? After that, you're then going to run over to showers. You're going to put two ADSs in the same spot you did on green and red right here under the window. And after you place these two ADSs as Jaeger, you're then going to run over here into games and you're going to play in games and try to delay any sort of push from bull into games. You need to hold this area down because if they get control of this room, they're going to be able to absolutely dis demolish anyone inside the bomb site. So you need to hold this with Jaeger as best as you can. Now for the final operator on this bomb site, I'm going to recommend a mute. What you're going to want to do at the start of the round is run over here, place a mute jam right here on the wall to prevent this drone hole from being used. You're going to plop down one mute jammer right near the shower's door here to protect from Flores drones getting to the shield. You're then going to throw one mute jam down on the game's door here. Then you're going to plop your last one down on the terrace door right here. After you set this up, you're then just going to find a place in the bomb site for mute to play. And you're just going to set up inside of the bomb site. Get ready for the attackers to push into dorms or bunks or wherever you end up wanting to put mute. mute you can have him play anywhere. Same thing with uh, with your Jaeger. You can either have your Jaeger go roam off bomb site and you can just, you know, rotate over here and play games in place of him. Or you can do like realistically whatever. Just find a place for Jaeger and Mute to play and just set Mute up somewhere near the bomb site. I would recommend since he's a three armor. Now for the final and worst bomb site on this map, we have Mechanic Shop. And what you're gonna wanna do for this bomb site is bring a castle. And at the start of the round, you're immediately gonna make your way over to garage. You're gonna castle both these double doors off. You're then going to run over here into diesel. You're then going to run over and make the site rotate. And after you put the site rotate down, you're then going to want to... And after putting the site rotate down, you're then going to want to castle this double door here. And put the rotate behind the counter here. And then you're going to throw a beeper right here. If you set that up, I then recommend castling this double door here. And throwing a beeper above it. After you set all of that up, you're then going to have castle play in here on restaurant. And you're going to have him play near this uh, this castle barricade and this rotate to try to shut down any attackers coming from shark stairs. You do have to be wary of this doorway here, which is why you're going to have a player. You have to be wary about this uh, doorway here, which is why I recommend barricading it. And then just playing in a restaurant for as long as you can, trying to hold off the attackers from pushing into here. There's a lot of good angles that you can have in here, especially when you castle this off. And so holding this can be beneficial for your team. Now for the next operator on this bomb site, I recommend bringing a Kaid. And what you're going to want to do is reinforce this kitchen wall here at the start of the round. And you're going to throw an electric pod down. Then you're going to run all the way over to garage, which you would have a site uh, rotate normally. So that would make this uh, all quicker. But you're going to run over to garage. You're going to go up the garage stairs here. And you then throw an electric claw right here on this wall, on this outside wall here. Then you're going to run all the way back downstairs and you're going to get ready to play inside of the bomb site. I recommend having your Kaiyu play behind the counter and mechanic shop here and just holding these long angles because once they breach these castles, 
these gunfights are very long range and so having Kaid with a two times is going to be the best for this so part of the bomb site here now to help you hold down this bomb site i recommend also bringing a jaeger and what you're going to want to do is immediately at the start of the round place a 180s under the window right here going into bike then putting 180s on the bike door then your last ads is going to go inside of the a bomb site and it's going to go right in here on the doorway if you set up these ADSs, you're then going to run into Shark and you're going to place a bulletproof cam right here. And this is just so you can give call outs to Castle throughout the round who's playing behind the counter of when they're breaching the uh, Castle Barricade or when they're going to move up on the rotate. After you set that up, I then recommend having your Jaeger play somewhere near the bomb site as well. I like to have Jaeger play over here near waiting and have him reinforce this wall here. And then just have him play right here in your waiting window and just have him swing out on people pushing in and waiting. Now, the next operator you're going to want to bring is someone with a deployable shield. And for me, that's going to be Warden. And you're going to want to run upstairs and immediately go and reinforce the outside wall. And you're then going to plop down your deployable shield and garage right here in the corner. Then after that, you're going to just roam upstairs and try to hold off any sort of push from the backside upstairs while your teammate Wamai is going to be playing on the shield up here and kind of holding off the attackers from pushing top garage. What you're going to want to do with Warden is just sit over here near party and just try to stop them from pushing top shark, pushing games. Any of this area, you need to be holding down yourself. I know this is going to be overwhelming, but this roam needs to happen because if they take upper garage, they're going to be able to pinch bike shop a lot easier. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the last hopper you're going to want to pick is with my, and then at the start of the round, you're just going to immediately make your way to upper garage and you're going to help your warden player set up upstairs. And the way you're going to do that is by impacting the rotate here. Then you're going to come and make a rotate into party. Then after you do that, you're then going to make your way into bull, throw one with my magnet on the door, and then you're going to reinforce the hatch. For doing all that, you're then going to go back to your deployable shield here and you're going to start throwing magnets in preparation to protect your shield. And you're just going to play on the shield at top garage. And the reason why this is so important is because if they don't push you top garage, you can just swing them if they get this wall open and or if they come through this door and they won't be able to get the castle barricades and bike. And if they can't push bike, they're not going to have that many angles into the B bomb site which is going to be a huge advantage for your team. So you want to have Wamai playing on the top floor right here, holding down the garage. But this bomb site is pretty bad anyway. So if you're expecting to win this, you're going to be sorely disappointed. But if you're just wanting to pick a off bomb site, uh, this strategy can actually be pretty decent for throwing off some teams. But keep in mind, this is just a bad bomb site overall. Now for our next map, we have Skyscraper and the best bomb site on this map arguably is Karaoke and Tea Room. And what you're going to want to do at the start of the round is pick smoke is your first operator and you're gonna immediately make the karaoke rotate here you're then gonna put barbed wire on black stairs here you're then going to come over to the geisha wall here and you're gonna make the rotate after making the geisha wall rotate you're then gonna run over to drum the full holes down and you're gonna reinforce this single wall and this single wall and you're gonna put head holes across this wall here now, after you set all this up, you're then going to put your last set of barbed wire on the restaurant stairs here. And then you're going to set up your smoke on the top of black stairs behind the deployable shield that one of your teammates will place down. And you're just going to play here. Wait for the attackers are going to come through black door. You'll smoke them off if they start pressuring you too hard. And you'll also be able to smoke off the black stairs. And if they start taking Geisha and they kill your teammate, you can just run over, smoke off the uh, Geisha rotate. Just slow them down from pushing this. Now for the second operator on this bomb site, I recommend bringing a frost. And what you're going to want to do is run over here at the start of the round and immediately reinforce this black wall here. And you're then going to plop your shield down right up against it. Then you're going to run into Geisha. You're going to place one frost mat there under the double window. Then you're going to run over to through the karaoke rotate that would be here. And you're going to place one down under the main site window. And then your last frost mat is going to go down on the black uh, top window here, right here. Then after you do that, you'll run over here, get the mez wall. And then for Frost, I'd recommend having her play right here inside of Drum with her 1.5 on her SMG and just sit here and defend off from anyone pushing Terrace and also to swing anyone that tries to vault through the uh, Geisha window. Now, I like to bring two deployable shields on this bomb site, And for the second deployable shield operator, I like to pick Warden. And what you're going to want to do is immediately run over here into Shrine right here. And you're going to want to place your shield down on this corner to the pillar. After you place the shield down, you're then going to run over here into Shrine. And you're going to reinforce the three walls in here. After reinforcing these three walls, I then recommend having your warden play behind this deployable shield throughout the round and just try to shut down them pushing shrine. And while Frost is holding down drum, you'll be able to completely shut down the side of the map with proper uh, with proper uh, teamwork. Now for the next operator on this bomb site, you're going to want to bring a bandit. And then at the start of the round, you're going to run over here and you're going to reinforce the outside geisha single wall. And you're going to place a bandit battery down. 
You're then going to run over to the karaoke rotate here and you're going to reinforce this wall. After that, you're then going to make your way into shrine and you're going to bandit these two walls off here and you're going to bandit off this single wall right here. After you do that, then bandit is going to be free to roam and I recommend having him roam downstairs on the first floor to shut down any attackers trying to sneak up either black stairs or sneak up restaurant stairs. Now for the next and final operator, you're going to want to pick Jaeger and you're at the start of the round. You're going to run over here to the black door here. Put one ADS down to protect the deployable shield on black. Then you're going to place another ADS behind the shield right here to protect them from getting naded from um, the black stairs. And then your last ADS is going to go in here on the shrine deployable shield. And you're going to place it right here on the side of the doorway. After you place this down, you're then going to place a bulletproof camera here in Dragon as well. And then you're going to make your way back into the bomb site, and you're just going to hold down the T room bomb site and just play in here and give comms to your teammates by hopping on the cameras. And that's going to be pretty much it. You're just going to play as Jaeger in the bomb site, hold it down, hunker down, and uh, you know you can rotate over to Geisha if your team needs someone in Geisha. And you're just going to play whatever position your team needs realistically. Now for the second best bomb site on Skyscraper, we have offices and exhibition. And what you're going to want to do is immediately go to the office wall here, reinforce it with Kaid. You're going to throw your electric claw right here on this wall. Then you're going to make your way over to the VIP single wall here and you're going to electric claw this wall off as well. After you've done that, you're then just going to set up inside of the bomb site, make the vert holes above the wall here so that you can throw your nitro cell over. You're going to reinforce the middle wall here and then you're just going to get ready for the impending push into the bomb site. You're just going to play Kaid inside of exhibition and just hold it down. Now for the next operator, you're going to want to bring someone with a shield. I recommend that being frost. And then at the start of the round, you're going to run over here to display, place a cross mat on it then you're gonna run over and place your deployable shield right here next to the mini bar and you're going to reinforce this wall and you're also going to reinforce this wall as well after you've done that you're then going to just place your last two frost mats kind of wherever i'm going to put one on terrace window here then my last one is going to go on the shrine window over here a blacktop window then throughout the round, I recommend just having Frost play on her deployable shield right there behind the mini bar. And if the attackers get the wall open, they won't be able to shoot her because of this reinforcement. So you'll just play here, hold down this power vision and try to kill anyone that tries to push uh, through Terrace. Now after Frost, you're going to want to pick up a Jaeger for this bomb site, and you're then going to want to walk over here to the display window, put one ADS down here. Then you're going to want to put one or two ADSs on this wall here and lounge if I can get up on the... Yeah, I don't know why I'm falling off of this because I'm normally pretty consistent with this. Okay, there you go. There's one. There's two. The reason why you want them on this wall is to protect the deployable shield that's going to be right here. This will stop any nades from flying through this doorway and killing the person behind the shield and also getting rid of the shield. Then you're going to want to put your bulletproof camera right here in Terrace. And then with Jaeger, you're going to roam on the other side of the map in Drum or even all the way over here in uh, Tea Room. And you're just going to hold off any potential push from this side of the map and kind of slow them down. If you start getting pressured, don't uh, feel free to just fall back to the to the bomb site from below. Now, the fourth operator I recommend you bringing on this bomb site is Finner. And what you're going to want to do is immediately vault the house stairs, place barbed wire down here, and also place an F knot on the stairs. Then you're going to want to reinforce these two walls here. And you're going to want to put barbed wire on the shrine stairs here, along with an F knot up in the corner right here. Then after that, you're going to want to throw another F knot on the drum door here. And then you're going to want to put one above the main wall. And then your final one can kind of go wherever. I like to throw mine over here on like the no kidding drum door to help support Jaeger. And then you're just going to activate whatever ones you please, depending on where the attackers are pushing from. And you're just going to play off of them. Also with your shotgun, you're going to want to make head holes across this wall. And the reason for this is because your deployable shield that is right there with Frost is going to give you an angle all the way into Shrine. And so if they walk into Shrine, Frost can just peek up from the deployable shield and shoot them. And it also is going to give this bulletproof cam you put here with Jaeger an angle all the way into Shrine. So it's going to be able to watch uh, uh, terrace and shrine all at the same time and after you've set all that up you're then going to roam off site with jaeger and you and jaeger are just going to hold down this side of the map and then just fall back into your f not mines as the attackers start pushing in now for the final operator on this bomb site i'm going to recommend solace and what you're going to want to do is immediately reinforce this xc wall here and then immediately afterwards you're going to jump down house stairs and you're going to go below and roam with your gadget and the reason for this is because the most of the floor in the bomb site is soft and so Solace can see that the fuse are getting planted through the floor and she can impact and then immediately kill the planter. But she can also be an effective roamer down here, which is why you're going to want to pick her because you can see drones through walls. And if the attackers are pushing you, she'll know about it. 
and she can also use her P90 to win a lot of her gunfights. So overall, you're gonna wanna pick Solace, have her roam downstairs. If you notice that there's no one pushing down here, then you can either stay down here and wait for the plant later in the round, or you can go rotate and help your Jaeger and Finrear play on the other side of the map. Now for the third best bomb site on this map, I'm gonna recommend BBQ and Kitchen. And the first operator you're gonna wanna bring on this map is Bandit. And at the start of the round, you're immediately gonna run upstairs to Geisha, and you're going to reinforce both of these walls here. After you reinforce both of these walls, you're going to bend them off. And then after your teammate assu uh, would uh, assumedly open the hatch, you're then going to drop down into the bomb site. But since that hatch isn't open right now, I'm going to just go down the stairs. And after you drop down into the bomb site, you go ahead and reinforce this wall here and you'd bandit it off as well. Now, after you set this up, I'd recommend having Bandit play behind the bar right here and just hold off anyone pushing in through reception through the mini bar window there or through uh, or through stage over there. And you're just going to sit behind this bar and hold your position for as long as possible. You will have an ADS here to protect you, which I'll show you where to set up in a second. But this is just a really strong power position that you're going to want to hold. And having Bandit here is a good idea. Now, the next operator you're going to want to bring is Castle. And at the start of the round, you're going to run over here into the pantry room here. You're going to Castle Barricade this door off. Off, and you're gonna throw a beeper above it and then you're also gonna run over here to reception door you're gonna castle this off after you castle both of those things you're then gonna run upstairs you're gonna castle off the drum door here and you're also gonna castle off the T door over here as you castle this stuff off you're then gonna run into geisha you're going to open the hatch and you're gonna drop down into the bomb site and get ready to play in the bomb site. You're just gonna hunker down inside of the bomb site with uh, your other teammates and you're gonna try to hold off any sort of push into stage or just through some of the windows, like the kitchen window into the bomb site. Now the next operator you're gonna to wanna to bring after castle is Jaeger. And like I said earlier in the uh, video, you're gonna to wanna to walk over here to the bar and put an ADS behind the bar to protect your uh, castle player here. You're then going to run upstairs and put one ADS on the Geisha window here. And you're then going to run into T, reinforce the two T walls here. Then after that, you're gonna put one ADS on the black door here. Then just slap down one bulletproof camera right here at the back of black. And then after that, you're just going to set up with Jaeger inside of T room and you're just going to try to hold off any sort of push over here while your uh, one of your teammates is playing in Geisha and while one of your teammates is playing top black. Now for the final bomb site on the worst bomb site on this map, we have bathroom and master. And what you want to do is at the start of the round, run over here to bathroom, reinforce this double wall here and you're going to electric lot. You're then going to run over to the VIP wall here and you're going to reinforce this. By that time, your teammate should have reinforced the wall over here in office and you're just gonna electric lot it off as well. Then after that, you're just gonna make your way back down into the bathroom bomb site. And I recommend having Kaid play downstairs and just hold off the actual bomb site itself. He's gonna act as the anchor in the bomb site while most of his team is gonna be playing upstairs. Now for the second operator on this bomb site, I recommend bringing Bandit. What you're gonna to wanna to do is immediately reinforce the closet wall here. And you're going to electrify this wall off. After that, you're then gonna make your way upstairs and you're going to electrify the VIP wall. Then after that, you're just gonna set up upstairs with the rest of your team and you're just gonna try to hold off the vertical play take. This bomb site is very hard to hold, but if you're gonna hold it at all, you need to stop them from getting vertical play control because once they get vertical play control, you're pretty much just gonna lose the round. Now for the third operator on this bomb site, I recommend bringing Frost and what you're gonna wanna do at the start is walk in to walk in, place a Frost mat down here. Then you're gonna reinforce these two walls in front of walk in. You're gonna make the main site rotate. And then you're gonna put a frost mat under the bathroom window here. Now your last frost mat is gonna go upstairs along with your deployable shield. You're gonna put your frost mat under the display window here. And then you're gonna put your shield on the mini bar over here, along with reinforcing the single wall. Now after that, frost is just gonna play behind her shield right here. Hold off anyone for pushing Terrace or anyone pushing the uh, house stairs over there. Now for the fourth operator on this bomb site, you're gonna wanna bring Jaeger. And at the start of the round, you're gonna run over here to walk in, put one ADS on the walk-in window. Then you're gonna leave your last two ADSs in pocket and you're gonna run upstairs and use them to defend your utility that's gonna be up here. On top of that, you also wanna put your bulletproof camera in VIP. After you plop that bulletproof cam down, then run over here to lounge again. You're going to run up on this uh, cabinet here and place down two ADSs right here. This is going to once again protect the deployable shield right here. And it's going to help your frost player last a lot longer because especially they take over exhibition and they try to go for a nade on this win on this door here playing tucked close or tucked right here. They're going to have a hard time doing it without getting shot by frost. 
especially with those ADSs there. And on top of that, with Jaeger, you're just going to play upstairs along with the Frost and Bennett player. And you're just going to hold upstairs as best you can. I recommend positioning Jaeger on VIP just so they can't rush Shrine and also so they can't open this wall and rush through here. Now, the final operator you're going to pick on this bomb site is Mute. And what you're going to want to do at the start of the round is you're going to immediately make your way upstairs, place a Mute Jam on House Stairs. Then you're going to place a Mute Jam on the VIP door here. Then you're going to run over, get the triple wall or the double wall, sorry, on office. Then you're going to slam down a mute jammer on the terrace door here. And then your last mute jammer can go downstairs. I recommend putting it right here on this door. After that, they're going to have mute play inside a master bedroom. And the reason for that is because a lot of these gunfights in here are going to be pretty close range, especially if you focus in on the walk-in closet. Mute is going to have a much easier time swinging people on walk-in than he would upstairs. But this is a pretty long range area, but his SMG 11 can get the job done. Now for the next map, we find ourselves on Stadium Bravo. And the first bomb site you're going to want to go is Armory Archives. And the first operator you're going to want to pick on this bomb site is Mira. At the start of the round, you're going to run over here and immediately get the outside armory wall. Then you're going to place a mirror window right here on this wall. Then you're going to open this barricade and prep for later in the round. And you're going to use this mirror window to swing out onto attackers that you see on the mirror window. Now, the second mirror window is going to go right here on this single wall. This will allow you to once again see anyone coming through the door and swing out and kill them. These two mirror windows here are going to make an armory take pretty impossible to do or to pull off. So that's kind of the importance of these. And you're just going to have Mira play on these two mirror windows throughout the entire round. She's just going to sit here, get active on the uh, wall. And then if she wants, she's going to fall back to the uh, box here, to the armory desk here. And she's going to swing out through this mirror window as well. Uh, that's it. But I would play on that mirror window until the wall gets breached and then fall back to here. Now for the next operator on this bomb site, I recommend picking Kaid. And what you're going to want to do at the start the round is run over here go an electric claw on this wall to get the outside armory wall and then you're going to run all the way over into offices and you're going to reinforce these walls here and after you reinforce these three walls you're then going to electrify these as well then after you electrify this wall you're then just going to play in offices with Kaid. take advantage of your two times to swing out onto people pushing from hookah and also take gunfights on people pushing in from vip now for the next operator on this bomb site i recommend bringing a jaeger and we're going to want to do at the start it's right over here put one ads on the armory door one ads on the half wall here and then your last ads is going to go in here on the office's door and then you're going to want to put a bulletproof cam right here in the hallway after that you're going to help your team by reinforcing these walls here now after you reinforce these three walls i recommend having your jaeger player go and play on the top of metal over here playing in penthouse and just kind of preventing the attackers from running into penthouse hall of fame if he starts getting pushed, he'll fall back into the top main hall. Now, the next operator you're going to want to bring is anyone with a shield. And you're going to walk up behind the half wall here. And you're going to place your deployable shield down. And that ADS, the Jaeger place, is going to protect your shield. And you're just going to play behind this. And the main reason why you want this shield here is just to make the half wall an actually playable position. Because if you don't have a shield placed on the half wall, it literally gives you no cover at all. So you're going to want to put a uh, deployable shield here just to allow someone to play behind it. Then after you place that deployable shield down, you're then going to make your way over to the penthouse wall here and you're gonna reinforce the single wall. If you reinforce that, then Warden is just gonna go back to the half wall and he's gonna play right here throughout the entirety of the round. Once the mirror gets cleared off the wall or the wall gets opened, you're gonna position your Warden right here so that way he can hold off the breach puss even further. And his glasses are gonna help him with that since he can stop himself from getting flash, since he can stop himself from getting flashbang, and that paired with this mirror window here is going to make it very hard for the attackers to push into the bomb site, even if they get this wall open. Now, for the final operator on this bomb site, I'm going to recommend Finner, and the first F not trap you're going to want to throw is above the armory door right here. You're then going to make your way over to metal. You're going to put barbed wire on metal and an F not there as well. You're then going to throw one F not on the Hall of Fame door. And you're going to throw one F knot on the hallway right here in your offices. And then you're going to throw your last F knot right here on the office's door. And you're going to put some barbed wire on it as well. Now, what you're going to do is fin rares. You're going to position yourself on the office's side of the map throughout the round. You're just going to move your activation codes based on where the attackers are pushing from and what your teammates give you. If your Jaeger says they're pushing Hall of Fame, make sure you activate that one. If he says they're not pushing over here, you can move it over to the metal stairs or you can move it over to the breach depending on what your uh, teammates are giving you info on. 
and throughout the round you're just going to play off of your f not gadgets in offices and you're going to try to help your kaid hold this down for as long as possible now the next bomb site i recommend going is penthouse vip but you can also go kitchen as well as your second bomb site it kind of depends on what you're feeling but me personally i like penthouse vip more and we're going to want to do at the start of the round is castle barricade the penthouse window then you're going to castle barricade the uh, penthouse bathroom door you make foot holes across this wall here then you're gonna walk over to top metal, throw a beeper on it, and you're gonna reinforce these two fountain walls here. And additionally, you're gonna castle this doorway off. And now your cat final castle barricade can kind of just get placed wherever you feel is necessary. I like to throw mine down on this VIP window just so you could, don't have to worry about getting shot from this window while you're rotating around in the hallway. And after you've set all of that up, then as castle, you're just gonna play on top metal kind of position yourself where you can play off of this prox alarm and you're just going to sit right here and kind of hold the 90 hall as well and now the second operator i recommend picking on this bomb site is azami and at the start of the round you're going to run over here make a rotate between the two bomb sites you go throw akiba right here to protect that rotate then after that you're going to run over here and reinforce these two vip walls here then you're going to place another Kiba right here on the armory door just to kind of give your teammates an advantage on taking a gunfight on any attacker that tries to come through here. And then you're going to throw another Kiba on this doorway. After that, you're then going to immediately go back into the bomb site and you're going to reinforce the wall in the middle right here. And after all that is said and done, you're basically just going to play in the bomb site. Use your Kibas to your advantage to kind of like throw them down based on where the attackers are pushing from. And you're just going to try to anchor down in the bomb site for as long as possible. Now, the next operator I recommend for this bomb site is Kaid. And immediately at the start of the round, you're going to run out of the bomb site and you're going to go reinforce the two hookah walls here. After you reinforce these two walls, you're then going to make your way into offices and reinforce these three walls. And after that, you're going to throw one electric claw here on the offices triple wall here. And then you're going to throw one electric claw on the fountain wall here. And after that, as Kaid, you're basically just going to play inside of offices once again. And you're going to use your TCSG to kind of take gunfights on anyone that pushes in from Armory or that tries to push in from the hookah hallway here. Now, the next operator you're going to want to bring for this bomb site is Jaeger. And what you're going to want to do at the start is run over here to the penthouse window and put two ADSs on this window. Then you're going to run over here to bathroom, place a bulletproof camera on the hallway here. And then you're immediately going to run over to offices and place down your last ADS on this doorway here. After that, you're then going to have your Jaeger player play somewhere inside of VIP in the bomb site. Just kind of hold out the attackers from going to the jump in and also push in the hallway. Now, for the final operator on this bomb site, I recommend bringing in Malusi. And what you're going to want to do is set up your first Wub Wub right here on the Hall of Fame door. Then you're going to place another one in the office's hall right here. Then you're going to run over here onto the office's door and you're going to slap one down on this doorway right here. Then after you set up those three web webs, you're then going to set up inside of the archives room. And you're just going to hold a head glitch under that Kiba, and you're just going to try to hold off anyone pushing behind Kaid while Kaid's holding down the bomb site. Now, for the third best bomb site on this map, we have Kitchen Service. And what you're going to want to do at the start is run over here and place the default mirror that you would on Kitchen on Coastline. You're then going to make the rotate between the two bomb sites. Then you're going to run over here to bathroom. You're gonna reinforce this wall and you're gonna plop a mirror window down right here. Now, after you have these mirror windows set up, you're then going to reinforce the three service walls here. And after you do that, Mira's just basically gonna sit inside the bomb site and hold her mirror windows to the best of her ability. If she wants to rotate over the bathroom, she can. And she could just play on this mirror as well. Swing on anyone coming in through service. And because of there not being a drone hole here on stadium, you're gonna have a much easier time holding down this bathroom mirror because if they push lobby, you're gonna have teammates looking at this. So they're not gonna be able to just rush you lobby side and you can just play on this mirror pretty safely. Now, the next operator you're gonna want on this bomb site is a Jaeger. And what you're gonna wanna do is put one ADS on the kitchen window here. You're then going to vault up here and put your bulletproof camera in kitchen. So that way you can watch the window. Then you're gonna put two ADSs right here near the B bomb. After you set this up, you're then gonna make your way over to the quad wall here and reinforce the left two walls. After you reinforce these two walls, you're then going to have your Jaeger player just kind of set up inside of the bomb site with Mira. So that way he can help her hold down the bomb site. Your other three operators will be roaming upstairs or somewhere off site. 
but Jaeger and Mira are going to play inside the bomb site. Now, the next operator you're going to want to pick on this bomb site is going to be Warden, and you're going to want to make your way over to where the kitchen rotate is, and you're going to plop down a shield right here. This is going to make it to where you can actually rotate between the two bomb sites without getting shot from service door. Since there's not the bomb chassis here anymore, the rotate isn't safe. So you want to put a, uh, an actual deployable shield down so that way you can move between the two bomb sites. After that, you're then going to run into the hallway and you're going to reinforce the two sunrise walls here. After that, I recommend barricading these two windows. And then with Warden, I would recommend having him play in sunrise bar. So that way the attackers can't push into here for free. This is a much smaller room than what normal sunrise bar is. And there's a lot more angles to worry about. So don't expect to hold this for very long with Warden. Just have him play in here. Delay a little bit of time, scare the attackers, and then once you're starting to feel the pressure, just fall back either up cool vibes or fall back into the bomb site. Now, the final two operators I recommend running are going to be two people that can hold upstairs effectively. And for me, those are going to be Solace and Legion. For Solace, at the start of the round, you're immediately just going to activate your gadget and just start hunting down as many drones as you can, shooting them and just denying intel. I literally say this with every time I pick Solace in one of these site setups, but it's true. You're going to want to be hunting down these drones with Solace because that's her, by far her strongest aspect. And during the prep phase, if you don't do that, you're missing out. Then after you shoot a couple of their drones, you're then gonna run upstairs and immediately position yourself in penthouse or VIP. They're just gonna start roaming up here to kind of slow down their take on the vertical play. I also recommend making a rotate between penthouse and VIP. So that way you and the teammates that's gonna be roaming up here with you can easily rotate between the two uh, rooms. Now for the final operator on this bomb site to help Solace roam, I recommend picking Legion. I like to pick Legion a lot, and it's simply for the fact that his goos can really help a roam and to give you intel on, you know, where the attackers are pushing from. So you're gonna immediately run upstairs and just start placing your goos up here to help you and Solace figure out where the attackers are, you know, pushing the upstairs from. Uh, you wanna put goos like Armory side, uh, near hookah area and also near the office's door here just so you and solace know exactly where the attackers are trying to take upstairs from so you don't get caught off guard now for the next bomb site server bathroom this is going to be by far the most difficult bomb site to defend on stadium and it's really honestly a bad bomb site but if you find yourself on this bomb site Here's what you can do to perform well on it. First operator you're going to want to pick is Mira. You're then going to make your way over to this wall in bathroom and you're going to reinforce the middle wall here. You're then going to plop your mirror down on this wall along with a rotate on the side. After you do that, you're then going to reinforce this wall. Now, if you've done that, your teammate should have reinforced the middle wall here. But if he hasn't, you can go ahead and place that down as well. And then you're going to place a mirror window on this wall. It's going to give you a good line of sight into the front door. And it's also going to give you a line of sight onto the window into the bomb site. And it's also going to give you a line of sight onto the window into uh, Vince over there. And this, these two mirrors are going to be necessary for playing this bomb site because if you don't have them, they're going to have a very easy time just looking at this window, giving callouts and vaulting into the site window or just rushing you in from uh, the Vince side of the map. So having these two mirrors there is definitely uh, what you're going to want to have. Now, the next operator you're going to want to pick on this bomb site is Jaeger, and you're going to want to run over here to the server door, place a bulletproof cam down. You're then going to place one ADS on the vent window here. You're going to place one ADS on the vent door, and then you're going to want to place one ADS behind the mirror window here. Then after you do that, you're then going to make your way over into the bathroom bomb site, and you're going to reinforce these two walls here. After you reinforce these, I then recommend having your Jaeger player place somewhere near the sunrise side of the map to kind of hold off any take into um, tellers over here. So you're going to want to play right here, swing out on anyone who tries to walk into the sunrise hall here and also to swing out on anyone who pushes in from the pool entrance. Now, the next opera I recommend picking is Solace, and immediately at the start of the round, you're going to activate your gadget, hunt for drones. And while you're hunting for drones, you're going to make your way upstairs to get the server hatch right here. After you get this hatch, you're then going to activate your gadget, continue drone hunting until eventually the prep phase is over. And then after the prep phase is over, you're going to make your way back upstairs, and you're going to roam upstairs and try to hold down the armory lockers, offices, and archives area to shut down any potential vertical play on the bomb site. Now, the other operator you're going to have roaming upstairs to support Solace is Fenrir. But at the start of the round, you're just going to be worried about setting up your F not mines, which one is going to go here on the main lobby door. You're also going to place barbed wire in this hallway. You're then going to place barbed wire on metal as well. Then you're going to make your way over into Sunrise and you're going to throw one for your uh, Jaeger player in here, which is going to go right here. Then you're going to go over here 
to the teller's entrance door. You're going to throw a dread mine there as well. Then you're going to put a dread mine on the site window. And then the very last dread mine is going to go all the way over here on the lobby double door. After you throw all of those dread mines, you're then going to run upstairs and roam with Solace. And you're going to use the info that your teammates is calling out to then swap the activation codes around while you're roaming. Now for the final operator on this bomb site, I recommend bringing smoke. And what you're gonna wanna do with smoke is just help Mira with her site setup uh, requirements. So help her reinforce those three walls, help her get her windows set up, like the, the walls where her windows are set up, help her reinforce those. And then also make a rotate into vents, a crouchable one. Then you're also gonna wanna throw down some barbed wire on the vents door. And then your last set of barbed wire is just gonna go in the bomb site near the window right here and then after you set that up then as smoke you're just gonna play on mira's window and vents you're gonna make some head holes above the walls right here and you're just gonna wait for people to push in and if and if they start pushing you heavily you're just gonna smoke them out if they start pushing the window you're just gonna smoke them out and you're just gonna sit here and take advantage of this close range corridor to take gunfights with your shotgun and your smg 11. And that about wraps up Stadium. We're now going to be moving on to the next map. Now moving on to our next map, we have Theme Park. And to start out the bomb sites, we're going to be going with Armory Throne because it is the statistically best bomb site in Siege. And what you're going to want to do at the start of the round is you're going to run over here to the throne walls. And you're going to reinforce both of them with Kaid. Shotgun holes across the top of them as well, by the way. And you're going to electrify both of them. Now, after you've set that up, then Kaid only has to make footholds across this wall, which those were a little big. But after he makes those footholds, he's then free to just play in the bomb site, which is what I recommend doing with Kaid. And what I like to do with Kaid is I like to wait to hear the attackers vault through the maintenance window. And then I like to throw a nitro right over the maintenance uh, wall there. And it will land right at the maintenance window. So if you wait for audio for them vaulting through this window and you throw a nitro over, you can get a free kill on anyone in maintenance near the window, which that's a pretty strong lineup, I'm not gonna lie. But outside of that, you're basically just gonna be playing in the bomb site like a normal anchor throughout the round, just hopping on cams periodically to give calls to your team and just taking gunfights when necessary. Now the next operator you're gonna wanna bring to the table is Bandit. And at the start of the round, you're gonna run over here to the yellow wall and you're gonna reinforce this off. Now if you reinforce this off, you're then gonna wanna put one Bandit battery on this wall and then one on this one. And then you're immediately going to go upstairs and get ready for a roam. I recommend roaming with Bayonet just because he's a three speed with a good gun. And you're gonna wanna roam with at least one or two people upstairs to kind of slow off this take. Cause the attackers are gonna wanna take this to stop themselves from getting flanked while trying to uh, breach maintenance wall. And so you're gonna wanna hold upstairs. You can also use Bayonet's Nitro Cell to make a hole above the throne wall here and to kill anyone who tries to go put uh, a thermite charge on the wall or you can also just shoot ace charges or ex kairos to get thrown onto the wall as well now for the next operator on the spawn site i recommend picking warden for his deployable shield what you're gonna want to do at the start is run over here to the b-bomb vault up on this table place your shield right here then you're gonna run into bottom dragon and you're gonna reinforce these two walls after that you're immediately gonna run your way upstairs and go for the split hatch after you reinforce the split hatch you're then just going to roam upstairs alongside bandit uh upstairs in like the cash side of the map and then i recommend having bandit play on the initial side of the map either one's fine just have both of them roam upstairs and kind of waste as much time as they can from the attackers because like i said they're gonna want to roam clear this part of the map so they don't get flanked so you want to slow that down a little bit. Now, the next operator I recommend you pick on this bomb site is Wamai. And at the start of the round, you're going to run over here, throw a magnet on this reinforced wall when they reinforce it. And you're then going to make your way outside a split and reinforce this single wall on the split door here. Then throughout the round, you're basically just going to be throwing your magnets near the reinforced walls here to kind of stop the attackers from nading over and getting your electric claw or getting your bandit battery. So you're going to want to throw them pretty high up on the wall, but not too low on the but not too high up on the wall to where they can be shot and you're just going to keep throwing magnets near the walls and also on like the doorways into the bomb site and everything just to kind of stop the attackers from throwing util into the bomb site now for the final operator on this bomb site i recommend bringing a mute just to kind of counter the twitch brava and flores mains out there what you're going to want to do is place one mute jammer on the outside drone hole right here you're then going to place one mute jammer over here on the armory drone hole then after you put the mute chamber down there, you're then going to make your way over to the other armory drone hole right here and place the mute jam down. And then your final mute jam is going to go on the drone door right here. 
Now, with the way you have this set up, the only way drones can come into the bomb site is through split. So as long as you're watching split throughout the round, you can basically shut down any Twitch, Bravo, or Flores getting to any of your important gadgets. Then, obviously, since Mute is a three armor, he's going to play in the bomb site along with Kaid and Wamai. Now, for the next bomb site, Bunk Daycare, you're going to want to pick Jaeger as your first operator. And at the start of the round, you're going to make your way over to Cafe. You're going to reinforce the two middle walls right here. And then you're going to run over to Cafe and put one ADS on the Cafe door right here. And one ADS right here on the double door, along with a bulletproof camera. After you place that, you're then going to put your last ADS right here on the arcade window. And then throughout the round, I recommend having Jaeger play on top yellow to kind of stop any attackers from sneaking up the staircase and also stop them from dropping the hatch right there on headshot box. Now, the next operator you're going to want to pick on this bomb site is Kaid. And at the start of the round, you're going to run over here, make a rotate between the two bomb sites, and you're then going to run over here and get the bunks wall. And then you're going to reinforce this right wall here. Make head holes across. You're going to throw an electric claw right there. And then you're going to make a rotate from break into top arcade. After you've done that, you can then run over to yellow and you're going to throw down an electric claw right here on this wall that your teammate has hopefully reinforced. Then after that, you're just going to have Kaid play inside a break room on these head holes. So that way he can swing out on anyone who pushes into the hallway and get some pretty easy kills with his two times on a CCSG. Now, the next operator you're going to want to bring is you're going to want to bring Frost to shut down any sort of Amaru rush into break room. So at the start of the round, you're going to run over here into break room. You're going to throw one Frost mat on this window. Then you're going to put one Frost mat on this window. Then your last Frost mat is going to go on the top arcade window over here. After you place those Frost mats down, you're then going to move over here to the double door and you're going to place a deployable shield down right here, right behind the ADS. And then you're going to play behind this deployable shield and swing up on anyone who tries to push into cafe. And Frost is going to play here pretty much the entire round. If this hatch gets opened, you will have to worry about getting naded. And if you notice that an attacker is like cooking a nade or you notice that they uh, an operator that has nades opens this hatch, you might want to rotate off. But until that happens, you're just going to want to sit right here behind the two ADSs and your deployable shield and just pay it, completely shut down the attackers from pushing cafe. But after you place the deployable shield, you still have other things to do on uh, in the during the prep phase, which the first thing is reinforcing this yellow wall here. And then right before the prep phase is over, you're going to want to run into cafe and reinforce this single wall. After you've reinforced that wall, you're then just going to sit behind the deployable shield, like I mentioned, and just play out the round. Now, your next operator on this bomb site I recommend is Warden. And what you're going to want to do is reinforce the middle wall in between the rotate right here. You're then going to walk into the hallway and place a deployable shield near the break room rotate. And then you're going to run all the way over to waiting and you're going to go into vault and reinforce the vault wall after you reinforce this vault wall you're then just going to roam on the office and this side of the map and just kind of delay them taking this wall as long as you can with wardens 1.5 just play time don't try to get too aggressive and get yourself killed you just want to force them to waste time droning you and dealing with you and then you can just fall back to the bomb site if you start getting pressured heavily now for the final operator on this bomb site i'm going to recommend wamai and the reason for this is because you're going to want someone to be able to protect the deployable shield on the break rotate and that is going to have to be our mind for this so what you're going to want to do is throw one magnet right here on the uh like little spaceship thing that'll shut down any nades from bottom arcade throwing being thrown up here and hitting your shield right here and then Outside of that, you're basically just going to spend the entire prep phase just helping your team reinforce some of the walls that they're uh, reinforcing. And then after you help reinforce some of the other operators' walls, you're then just going to throw your last couple of magnets in the general arcade area to stop them from nading the shield over here. And then you're going to make your way over into waiting and you're going to roam with Warden and use your magnets to help you and Warden stay alive and to stop you guys from getting naded. And then you and Warden are just going to play over here with your 1.5s delay time and then once you guys get droned out you're just going to fall back to the bomb site as soon as you start getting pushed like and pinched heavily now moving on to the next best bomb site we have office and anish and the first operator you're going to want to pick here is castle and at the start of the round you're going to run over here to the dragon stairs here go shotgun to rotate throw one prox alarm on the cash door then you're going to castle barricade this doorway you're going to castle barricade the top dragon window you're then going to run into control and castle the control window and you're going to throw a prox alarm under the hatch here then your final castle barricade is going to go all the way on the bathroom window right here now if you've castle barricaded this stuff off you can then make the main site rotate here and reinforce the left wall right here 
after you've done all of that, I recommend just having Castle play somewhere in the bomb site. That can either be an office or in a niche. Doesn't really matter. Just have him play somewhere in the bomb site. So that way he can, uh, you know, swing off the head holes with his 1.5 and just kind of hold down the bomb site. Now, for the second operator on this bomb site, I recommend bringing a smoke. And what you're going to want to do is immediately run into the waiting double door, place barbed wire. You're then going to make head holes across this wall and across this wall here. And you're then going to reinforce this left wall right here. And you're gonna place barbed wire in this hallway door right here. After that, you're then gonna run all the way over to the control area right here. You're gonna reinforce this left wall, make head holes across this. You can also put a vaultable rotate here, whichever one you prefer. I like putting a vaultable rotate, but I know some people just like head holes here. It doesn't really matter, just put one of the two. Then after that, you're gonna play with smoke on the cache head holes here. And the reason that is, is because you're gonna be swinging out onto people pushing through the cache door. And if you notice that your top dragon player dies, you can smoke off the rotate and stop them from pushing through the rotate. Or if they breach this castle barricade, you can smoke that off as well. You're just gonna wanna hold this angle with the SMG 11 and try to shut off any of the attackers from pushing into cash. Now for the person playing top dragon, I recommend that being Jaeger. But before you can do that, you need to set up some of the bomb sites. So first things first, you're gonna reinforce the Anish wall here. You're then gonna place a bulletproof cam right here in waiting. And you're gonna put one EDS down right here. Then after you've done that, you're gonna make your way over to cash. Put one ADS on the cache door right here. And then you're gonna put your last ADS on this half wall right here, top dragon. And then you're just gonna play behind this wall with your Jaeger ADS protecting you. And you're just gonna swing off any of the attackers that try to push you on the cache valve. And if they drop control, you're just gonna hold this angle and hopefully your Anish teammate will also help you out if anyone drops control. But yeah, you're just gonna hold this for as long as possible. If you start getting pinched or pressured, you're just gonna jump down dragon and then rotate back to the bomb site. Now for the next operator on this bomb site, you're gonna wanna pick Kaid, and then you're gonna run over to the office's double wall here going in the yellow. You're gonna reinforce this. You're then gonna reinforce the vault wall. After you reinforce these walls, you're then gonna electrify this one and you're going to run into a niche and electrify this wall here that's already been reinforced. After you've done that, then you're just gonna play on the head holes that your teammate makes in control and you're just gonna play right here on the control wall, swing out on anyone who drops down the control hatch or that tries to swing through the control window and you're just gonna try to hold this down to the best of your ability. Now for the final operator on this bomb site, you're gonna pick someone that can roam effectively. And for me, that's Solace. And at the start of the round, you're gonna do what you do with Solace on every bomb site. And you're just gonna hunt down drones during the prep phase, looking for as many drones as possible and shooting them as soon as they start making their way towards the bomb site. Then after you shoot enough drones and the prep phase is over, you're then just gonna roam over here, cafe and arcade side. And just kind of try to slow down their take onto the initial wall because a lot of times attackers will try to get this wall open and they're going to try to push arcade so you're going to want to want one person over here just in case they start pushing this and if they start pushing this heavily you can also have teammates rotate out of the bomb site to assist you but at the start of the round you're going to be the only operator that's set up on this side of the map now for the final and worst bomb site on theme park we have drug storage and what you're going to want to do is bring mira as your first operator and the first the mirror window you're going to want to place is right here on the lab wall single wall this will allow you to see the window jumping into the bomb site and pretty much anyone walking into the bomb site then the second mirror window you're going to want to place is going to go on this side of the wall as well also crouch height this one will like you see in the bathroom and just swing up on anyone walking in from bathroom. If you set up those two mirror windows, you're then going to want to reinforce the back walls right here. Then after you reinforce that these four walls, Mira is pretty much done with her prep phase setup and she's just going to play on one of her two mirror windows and try to, you know, just stop the attackers from getting into the B-bomb site entirely. Now the next operator I recommend bringing on this bomb site is Frost and at the start of the round, you're immediately going to make your way over to the bathroom window right here and you're going to plop down a Frost map. Then you're going to immediately make your way over to the barrels wall right here and you're going to reinforce both of them. You're then going to run upstairs, plop down one frost mat on the arcade window here. And then you're going to plop down your deployable shield right here on the arcade doorway, same place that we showed you on the last bomb site. And then your last frost mat, I recommend putting on yellow stairs. Then after you set this mat up, you're just going to play on the 
top of arcade on behind this deployable shield and just waste as much time as humanly possible from them getting control of arcade because once they get arcade control they're gonna be able to blow holes into this floor and easily play, apply vertical pressure onto the bomb site and if they do that they're gonna be able to get rid of your mirror windows and pretty much destroy your entire bomb site setup so you need to hold this position for as long as possible and trust me i'm going to be having you pick jaeger to help support the uh shield right here and i'll also be having you reinforce some other walls up here to help support your uh player behind the shield now the next operator you're going to want to bring on this bomb site is jaeger and the first place you're going to want to run into is storage and you're going to throw two ads's under the site window and then you're also going to set up a bulletproof cam right here on the shelf and after you do that you're then going to make your way upstairs and you're going to place one ads next to the double door right here where the shield is being placed and after you place that ads down you're then going to reinforce the two yellow walls right here after you've done that you're basically just going to play with jaeger over here on the bunk side of the map making for sure that no one tries to repel in from bunk windows like with an amaru or anything and you're also just going to hold down this side of the map so that way they can't sneak up on frost through the waiting door or anything like that now the next operator you're going to want to bring on this bomb site is warden and the first thing you're going to want to do is run over here to this double wall on lab and reinforce it after you reinforce these two walls you're then immediately going to go play on arcade stairs and you're literally just going to sit here for the entire round you're going to shoot anyone that tries to come through the upper arcade window and you're also going to try to support your players on barrels so that way no attackers can just rush in the barrels and get the wall or also pressure anyone in uh, lower arcade because if you hold this staircase the attackers aren't going to be able to take lower arcade and pressure through this double uh, wall into the bomb site and it's also just going to help your anchors feel more secure so having one person play here is always a smart idea. Now for the final operator on this bomb site and this map, I'm going to recommend picking Smoke, mainly for the fact that he can shotgun holes above this mirror right here. And when he sees someone pushing into the bomb site trying to go for a plant, he can just smoke them off. Same thing for this mirror window as well. And so his main strength is just going to be denying the plant once the attackers actually make it into the B bomb site. And as for his barbed wire, you're going to want to put one on the storage door right here. And then I recommend putting his last set of barbed wire right here on the arcade stairs, just in case if your warden's playing upstairs at the time when they go to push up the arcade stairs. Then after that, Smoke is literally just gonna set up the bomb site with Mara, help her get the uh, walls reinforced and all of that. And then he's just gonna play behind the Mara windows with Mara and try to hold down the bomb site as best as he can with his smoke grenades and his uh, shotgun SMG 11. And that about wraps it up for theme park. And we're now gonna be moving on to the final map of the video. Now for the final map, we have Villa. And for the first bomb site on this map, you're going to want to go gaming and aviator. And you're mainly going to be setting up this bomb site with the study take in mind because study is a very common take on this bomb site. And so the way you're going to want to counter that is by setting up your smoke on top main. But before you can do that, the first thing you're going to want to do with smoke is you're going to reinforce this right wall here. You're going to shotgun full holes across this wall. You're then going to reinforce this left wall here. And once again, shotgun full holes. Then after that, you're going to make the main rotate between the two bomb sites. Then you're going to make head holes across this right wall, not this left wall, right here on this wall. And you're going to reinforce the left wall here. After you've done that, Smoke is then going to run and get in position on the deployable shield top main. And he's going to place two sets of barbed wire on the main stairs, one right here and then one farther up on the landing itself. Then Smoke is just going to play on the deployable shield that a different operator is going to place right here. And he's just going to swing up on people that try to push into study. And he's also going to take advantage of his smoke canister to just smoke them off entirely. And he can also smoke off main stairs if he needs to. Now, the next operator you're going to want to pick on this bomb site is Kaid. And at the start of the round, you're going to run over here and get the vault wall. And you're going to electrify it. Then you're going to go over to bar. And you're going to reinforce these two walls here. And you're also going to electrify these. After that, you're then going to jump up and make vert holes across this wall, like very high up. This is so if you vault up on the bar here, you can have an angle onto the red door right there. Then additionally, you're also going to make holes in the floor right here to look at the bottom of main stairs. So that way any anchor in the bomb site can just help your teammate on main stairs cover the bottom of the stairs. Then after you set that up, Kai is then just gonna set up behind the deployable shield that's gonna be placed in vault right here. And he's gonna just swing up on the, the, vert, on the uh, head holes there and kill anyone that tries to push into study. Now, for the first deployable shield, I recommend going Thorn. And what you're going to want to do is at the start of the round, run over to this AV uh, little table here. And you're going to start making holes in the floor right here to place a Thorn gadget. I messed it up a little bit. I made it a little bit uh, too destroyed. But you're basically going to want to leave the floorboards alive. So that way you can actually throw it inside of this hole. 
and it'll actually stick which i like i just said i messed it up but you want it to be something like that so that way then they when they walk in to go plant on this table they get hit by the thorn gadget you're going to, want to do the same thing on the vault door right here and then your last thorn gadget is going to go kind of wherever i like to throw it somewhere near 90 to help your 90 player so i'd throw it like right here on this door and then you're going to place your deployable shield on the top of main stairs right here then after you set this up thorn is then going to go roam below in like near the art piano area and she's just going to try to like slow down the attackers from pushing downstairs and that's about it now for your second deployable shield operator i recommend picking warden and where you're going to want to do is run over here and place your deployable shield on the vault door just far enough back enough to where you can run in between the vault door and the deployable shield but not too far back to where they can get a large angle on the side of the shield then after you set the shield up you're then going to run over to the top of red stairs and you're going to reinforce the boar walls here after you reinforce this wall you're then going to run over to a red stairs here and you're going to roam right here with warden kind of to provide some additional support to your thorn that's roaming downstairs but also to help your 90 player pinch anyone that tries to come through boar or to deal with anyone that comes through statue now for the final operator on this bomb site i recommend picking jaeger and where you want to do is run to the top of main stairs at the start of the round and you're going to place two ads's on this doorway to protect your deployable shield on top main then you're going to run over to 90 and you're going to throw your bulletproof camera down right here and then you're going to move your last ads all the way into vault which you're going to run all the way back into the bomb site here and plop down an ads right here to protect that shield after you do that you're then going to run back to 90 and Jaeger's just going to play on 90 for the entirety of the round pretty much if people start pushing in the bookshelf because your main stairs player dies you're going to worry about that also if your warden starts getting pressured from red you're going to help him deal with that as well but Jaeger's just going to sit in 90 and kind of hold this down to the best of his ability now for the next bomb site you're going to want to go trophy statue and you're going to want to pick Jaeger with a shotgun as your first operator. This is a strategy that me and my ranked stack like to run. And trust me, it's a lot of fun, but it, I'm sure it looks weird at the start. But if you watch the whole strat all the way through, it'll make a lot more sense to you. At the start of the round, you're going to want to run over to bathroom. You're going to immediately shotgun this out here. You're then going to reinforce that these two walls. You're then going to shotgun the head holes across this wall out. You're going to plop down 180S here. You're going to plop down two ADSs. I, I, I take that back. Don't put two ADSs here. You're going to put one here and then one back here near the window. And then what we're going to want to do is throughout the round, you're basically just going to sit here with a deployable shield in front of you. And you're just going to swing out on anyone that tries to come through the window with your shotgun. And if they try to vault the bathroom window, you're also going to swing them with your shotgun. And this deployable shield is going to keep you pretty safe from those two windows there. But we're also going to be bringing a zombie alongside it to make this an even easier thing to hold down which speaking of a zombie she's going to be the next operator i recommend you picking on this bomb site and the first thing she's going to do is run over here and get the main wall and after you have her do that she's then going to run over and make the astro rotate and reinforce the middle wall here as well after you've done that you're then going to run over into master and you're going to throw the most important kiba for this setup which is this kiba right here this Kiba will block all line of sight from the fireplace window on your shield. And the only line of sight that they're going to have is through this window right here. And so the only way they're going to be able to clear this shield from that window is if they want to waste utility on this Kiba and then waste utility on your shield. And so the more efficient way is to go through this window. But since you're also going to have a player on the uh, head holes here, they're going to be able to swing out and kill uh, anyone on the window that tries to swing the deployable shield. Um, now, if they try to vault the fireplace window, they, you obviously won't be able to see them on the uh, the deployable shield. But if you have someone in the bomb site, they're going to be able to easily swing this person and get a kill on them. Now, your other Kibas can kind of just go wherever you deem necessary. I like to throw one on the desk in Astro to make it actually bulletproof and like a good position to hold. Because now you actually have a decent power position. And then I also like to throw two on these little um, like half walls here to give them a little more cover. And then after I throw those, you can pretty much just save the last key before whatever you want. But this is pretty much all Azami has to do on this bomb site to be effective. And you're basically just going to set up inside of the bomb site somewhere and just try to hold it down while your uh, Jaeger is playing inside of the closet. Now, the next operator I recommend you picking for this bomb site is Kaid. And what you're going to want to do at the start of the round is immediately run over to the boar wall here and reinforce it. Then after you get the boar wall, you're then going to run over into bathroom. And through the rotate that jaeger would have made by this point and you're gonna walk into the closet and just throw an electric claw like right here 
and try to get both of the walls if you can. This is going to help protect Jaeger's wall here. And if they want to get this wall, they're going to have to swing out and shoot this guy you charge, which if they do that, it'll give uh, Jaeger plenty of time to swing them and get a kill with a shotgun. Um, after you throw that Kaid Electric Claw down, you're then going to run back into the bomb site, and you're just going to set up yourself in Astro, so that way you can take advantage of your 2x site on the TCSG to, you know, deal with any attackers that try to vault bathroom or that try to push up the Astro stairs. Now, for the next operator on this bomb site, I'm going to be recommending Frost, and what you're going to want to do is immediately run over here to the master door, place your deployable shield down in the door frame like this. You're then going to put one Frost mat on the fireplace window here. Then you're going to run over and put one frost mat on the uh, bathroom door here or a window sorry then you're going to plop down your, your last frost mat on the top of astro on the window then after you do all of that you're then going to shotgun this wall out here and you're going to make your way to 90 and you're going to reinforce the 90 wall after you reinforce this 90 wall you're then just going to play in 90 and try to stop any attackers from pushing on red or pushing into the bookshelves hall. And if they don't end up pushing you here, you can just run over to red stairs to have a little bit of a better position to hold down closer to the bomb site. Now for the final operator on this bomb site, I'm gonna recommend a Rooney. And with her, you're gonna want to run into master immediately at the start of the round, throw one gate right here on the fireplace window, throw one gate down on this window here, and then throw your last gate down on the Astro door. Then you're gonna put one set of barbed wire on the Astro stairs here. And you're going to throw your last set of barb over on the red stairs. After you do that, you're then going to either have a Rooney play on red stairs while your other teammate plays on 90. Or if you don't want to have your Rooney play on red stairs, you're going to have her play inside a trophy behind the Azami Kibas. So that way she can swing out on anyone pushing master with her DMR uh, and uh, with a magnification site. And this will actually give her a pretty decent advantage in any gunfight she gets involved in. Now for the third best bomb site on this map, we have dining kitchen, and you're gonna wanna pick Kayid as your first operator. At the start of the round, you're immediately gonna run over here and reinforce the pantry wall. You're then going to throw an electric claw on it. And after that, you're going to make the rotate between the two bomb sites. And then after that, you're going to run upstairs and get the triple wall in master. After you reinforce this triple wall, you're gonna throw an electric claw on it, and then you're just gonna play inside of trophy with your TCSG two times. And trust me, you're not gonna be the only one up here. You're gonna have another teammate here. But the reason why this is so strong is because not only can you shotgun out the top of Mimo wall here, so that way you can have an angle into Mimo and deep into it as well, but it also allows you to swing people at master and have an advantage in the gunfight because you're gonna have a magnification site. Now for the next operator on this bomb site, I recommend picking Warden. And what you're gonna wanna do at the start of the round is you're gonna run over here, reinforce the wall in the middle of the rotate here. You're then going to run over here and reinforce both walls on the side of the door. And then you're going to plop down your deployable shield right here in the laundry door. And then after you plop that down, you're going to run upstairs and you're going to hold upstairs along with Kaid. And you two are just going to roam upstairs together with your magnification sights. And you're just going to try to hold off the attackers from pushing in the bathroom, pushing trophy or pushing into the statue area. They, they will be able to get master pretty easily for free, but if they don't clear you out upstairs, they're gonna have to constantly be wary of you flanking them through one of those two doorways. Now for the next operator on this bomb site, I'm going to be picking Jaeger. And what you're gonna to wanna to do is run over here to pantry, place one ADS here. You're then going to run over to this door right here in China. You're gonna put one ADS down here. Then you're gonna put your last ADS right here on the laundry door to protect that deployable shield. After you set that up, I then recommend putting a bulletproof camera inside of... After you set that up, I then recommend you run over here into Memo and reinforce these two walls. After you get these two walls, I then want you to run into the red hallway here and plop down a bulletproof camera. After you've done that, then you're just going to play with Jaeger inside the actual bomb site. Um, you can set him up near Jenga. You can set him up on the deployable shield that Warden play, placed. It doesn't matter. Just have him play somewhere inside of the bomb site to kind of just hold it down. Now, for the next operator on this bomb site, I recommend picking Smoke. And what you're going to want to do is immediately, as soon as you spawn in, you're going to run over to Pantry. You're going to plop down one set of barbed wire here. You're then going to run over to Laundry. You're going to shotgun the floor of this wall out. And then you're going to reinforce the right one here. Then after that, you're going to put some barb on the Mimo door here. Then after you set that up, you're literally just going to set up with smoke inside the bomb site wherever you'd like. You can set him up behind the shield because this is actually a good spot for him since it's so close quarters. 
or you can set him up near the pantry door here so that way if anyone comes in you can just swing out with a shotgun and take the easy gunfight doesn't really matter just set smoke somewhere up in the bomb site so that way he can use his canisters later in the round to deny the plant now the last operator you're going to bring to the table is lesion and what you're going to want to do with lesion throughout the round is you're just going to want to roam anywhere on the first floor realistically near the bomb site like in living room wouldn't be a bad idea and you're just going to set up your goose and kind of just hold off site but kind of close to site so that way if the attackers start pushing something you can go back and help your anchors quickly but you don't want to have that many people stacked up in the bomb site so putting lesion off site is probably a smart decision and like i said you're just going to waste time for the attackers pushing in on the uh, first floor near the bomb site so like throwing a goo mine on the red hall is another good idea they're just going to swing out on people, use the info that your goos give to, you know, take gunfights and just hold the first floor near the bomb site for as long as possible. Now for the final bomb site and the worst one by far, we have living room and library. And the first operator you're going to want to pick on this bomb site is Mira. At the start of the round, you're going to run over here into the toilet room. You're going to make footholds across this wall and you're going to reinforce this right wall. After you do that, you're then going to run over into vault. You're going to reinforce these two walls here then you're going to reinforce this single wall and you're going to put a mirror window on it now this mirror is going to allow you to see the both the entrances into the living room bomb site and you're going to be able to swing off that intel and kill them before they can even get into the bomb site now your last mirror window is kind of i'm going to be honest not needed so you don't want to really place it down because it could end up screwing your team over more than it can help you this is the only mirror window that you need to place down and i'd just leave the other one in pocket to be honest now the next operator you're going to want to pick on this bomb site is kaid and at the start of the round you're going to run over to this library double wall here and you're going to reinforce it and after you reinforce this wall you're then going to throw a kaid electric claw on the bottom of it then you're going to make your way into vault electric claw this wall then after you do that you're going to run into living room and you're going to reinforce these walls here then after you set that up you're just going to play then after you set that up, I recommend having your Kaid play somewhere inside of living room. So that way you can kind of hold them off. I know there's a mirror window there, but you're also going to want to at least have one person actually in the room to hold it off as well. Now for the final operator that's actually going to be playing in the bomb site throughout the round, you have smoke. And what you're going to want to do with him is at the start of the round, you're going to run over here to main stairs, throw some barbed wire down on this staircase. Then you're going to run back into the bomb site and you're going to plop some barbed wire down on this doorway here in the mud. Then you're going to shotgun the bottom of this wall out and you're going to reinforce this wall. And after you do that, Smoke is just going to fall back into the bomb site, and he's going to set up inside of library behind this half wall here. And he's just going to play here, throw his smoke grenades onto the bottom of main stairs if they start pushing him heavily. He's just going to hold this off while Mira and Kaid deal with the other bomb site. Now for the next operator on this bomb site, I'm going to recommend Warden because of his deployable shield. And at the start of the round, you're going to run over into the living room right here, into this cubby. You're going to place down your deployable shield right here. This is going to allow you to actually have a safe position to play and jump up and kill anyone that's trying to push into the living door. And, it, and as long as you stand right here, it's going to cover you from the mud door as well. So that could be to shoot you from mud door and you're just going to be able to play out behind the shield and use it to your advantage to kind of just sit here. But obviously... Warden isn't going to be the one playing here. It's going to be Kaid. After you place that shield down, you're then going to run upstairs and you're going to get ready to roam upstairs with your Jaeger player. And you two are just going to play up in kind of like the gaming aviator area. So that way you can shut down any vertical play that they try to do on the bomb site. Uh, you probably want to have one of you play in 90 and one of you play in like the aviator area. But either way, you and Jaeger are going to need to figure out a spot to roam upstairs and you're just going to have to roam there and commit to it. Now for the op now for the final operator on this bomb site and of this entire video, I recommend you picking Jaeger. And what you're going to want to do is run over here to living room in the cubby and put two ADSs in front of the deployable shield. This will present these two ADSs will prevent your shield player from getting naded. And then after you do that, I recommend placing one bulletproof camera on this window here in the toilets. And then I want you to place your last ADS in here on the library door, vault up right here and place it right there. Then after you place that ADS, you're going to go roam upstairs with the warden and you two are just going to prevent the attackers from playing vertically like I just mentioned. Doesn't matter where you two position yourself, just position yourselves both in areas where you can play off of each other. So that way, if one of you dies, you can pick up the refrag and also so you can maximize the amount of time you waste. 
Anyways, that wraps up today's video. This video is by far my biggest and most comprehensive project yet. So if you could support me in any way, that would be greatly appreciated. If you enjoyed today's video, I make Siege content just like this twice a week. So go subscribe to the channel and follow me on Twitter if you want me to make more huge projects like this one. If you want to watch another video just like this one, a video will be popping up on your screen right now where I teach you how to play every operator in Rainbow Six Siege. I'll see you next time, friends, and peace.